Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on your YouTube, join our cult. Hello and welcome to the throbbing, scrummy, scrummy. You're allowed to call it that, I don't know. Yeah, ah, let's yeah, just call yeah, it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Scrummy, scrummy, running towards another company episode of the Cultaholic Ooh. Wrestling Podcast. I to clarify, no one is no leaving those. Cultaholic. No, 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 scrummy, scrummy. Big regal, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Because as last week, we left on a cliffhanger. We got news during the episode, which Max makes a lovely, nice change, mm. that William Regal was possibly, probably, allegedly leaving AEW to go elsewhere. Who knows where he'll end up? And we took a, a bet. Like, go on, should we leave this on? Should we leave that? This is a big question in case it happens. And would you believe it? Phew. We actually gambled and won. Yeah. Yes. Hup the Sean Ross Sap, I think we should say. Hup the Sean Ross Sap. Hup the Sean Ross Sap. Hup the Satan. Was it his story? <laughs> I think Sean so, Rossap. yeah. Uh, and Hup the Zodiac Killer, who confirmed it. <laughs> Dave Meltzer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're listening or watching. Thanks to clarify that Dave Meltzer is not the Zodiac. As far as we know, Dave Meltzer is There is a chance that he yeah. might be. He was 10 years old. But, oh, yeah, there's a chance. If you were one of these dirty people, wouldn't you spread rumours about the other dirty? Yeah, yeah. say allegedly. Because that's how it does works for the wrestling. I think they probably do. How many burner accounts do you think they've all got? Lots. Sap's got lots. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, uh, we got all our news <laughs> going off his Twitter activity. <laughs> I know. No, not Zodiac, as you said. Can you guys stop talking about me? No, sorry, Dave. You're listening and watching Reluctantly to Call It Resident Podcast. You're listening to the dulcet tones of Matthew. Joined as always by the fantastic Jack. Hello. And uh, Rock, 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 never stop, stop, stop. Ross on Rustler. <laughs> Say that five times. <laughs> He's doing the Jericho. Yes. <laughs> Milano. Four. Yeah. Seen our new logo. I was about to say, look at wow. the fabulous new logo Sorry, we have. Sorry, podcast listeners. Beautiful. Thanks, Luke, there, for the design. If you can't see it, because you listen to the podcast, on, as a podcast should be listened to on MP3 when you're doing cardio, it is Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast, all in the lovely Cultaholic purple. Oh, it's pink. one of those oh, old... Yeah, electric fuchsia. fuchsia. Yeah. Oh, no, we're having a debate, are we? <laughs> oh. and no, it it's is, navy blue, not green. It's... <laughs> What do you call those things? An, uh, a radio tower? Like a really yeah, old like school? Yeah, like an antenna, a radio antenna. tower. Yeah, there something we like, go. I don't know, yeah. Yeah. And the little circles to denote that people are listening. And there's a little rest ring in the middle. It that is, is similar part of the it. actual Cult of Heart logo. Yes. Synergy. Yeah. Lovely. Oh, I didn't yeah. even know he'd done that. Luke, you <laughs> devil. You well genius. Done, somewhat designed by Jack, who forgot what he did. <laughs> I just said, let's have a big antenna or radio tower. And then Luke did all the rest. So <laughs> it's more his logo than mine. Well, I see it on the weekend. It's a lovely nod to the podcast as well, because one side of it looks like a cheese grater, which would be used oh. for a what? A cheese pizza. Yay! <laughs> and one's <laughs> one's a ladder as well. And if we're doing bits from the podcast, how you doing, pal? I'm our read pal. It's been a fantastic week for all concerned. Because we've all got presents, and mine's on the TV right now. Oh. Steven oh. Skodes. Bring it home the bacon for the big buys of Cultaholic and Triple Jump recently. <laughs> he got me a Chase U uniform, which is up there because I'm too fat for it right at this moment. Oh, come now. That's true. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's the only reason I'm not wearing this, but I will do. Oh, fair enough. Aspirate it to go for 2023. To fit, to fit that. in that. That's fit lovely. Be comfortable. Not okay. have it be like a, 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 a whale skin. You know yeah. what I mean? A scuba suit. What am I trying to say here? You know what I mean there? Is it a long toys. sleeve? It's a long sleeve, oh, yeah. Very nice. Ah, well, I won't like that because it'd be less of you for us to love, <laughs> but whatever makes you happy, Ross. <laughs> uh, Steven Scudders, yes, delivering oh, the goods. We should, you, like. <laughs> <laughs> we should call him Amazon Prime for the amount of goods he's been delivering. Bless you, Steven yeah. Scudders, friend of the podcast. And I really appreciate my One Piece t-shirt. Knock it out because I wash my clothes before I put them on because I only just discovered later in life that's what you're supposed to do when you go out and buy clothes oh, from a you, shop you don't wear it straight away yeah because yeah. it smells of packaging that's one thing but I was what's just the other reasons well I guess because people have gone around touching them with the dirty oh, dirty I, covid filled oh, hands God, and stuff I, you know the other yeah. stuff they do with their clothes before they buy them so I'm like wherever he's got that from I, and he makes sure it's washed with the finest on, of daz on the way to work I got a croissant from uh, the shop and Lovely. I think about that as well I think has a kid touched my baked good as I've got it from the thing. Ooh. It was quite high up, though. It was one of the higher ones, so hopefully no children. Oh, so those dirty tall kids would be touching <laughs> Yeah. Them. You don't like that, do you? No. Uh, what did Stephen get you? A printout of the Cultaholic FC logo. Well, no, it wasn't just a printout. He customised it slightly as well. And a lovely letter. Thank you, Stephen. Oh, thank you very much, Stephen Scholars, from all of us at Cultaholic and Triple Jump. And I think the postman who does the, the run to the office <laughs> and the, the Tesco delivery people also had the, the uh, lovely things since, from you. Thank you very much. Since Triple Jump did post some tat, 
Um, I've become quite familiar with the different postmen who all come to the office. God, yeah, I'm... they got a lot of stuff. They're working hard. This is their WrestleMania weekend. They 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 did a whole day's shoot opening the, all of the tasks that they got. The one with the brown hair doesn't like me. Because really? I, had, I had a rush of blood one day in the office and I answered the phone with a, hello! Because <laughs> it was like the third time I'd been down the bastard stairs for one of their bloody par- oh. parcels. So I was getting a bit annoyed because I was trying to crack on my work, you know? So I went, hello! And he's like, delivery for triple jump? And I was like, I'll be down in a second. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I remember when, um, when, it was, when we only had the one building, so it was a smaller office. So Pachi was in the same building as us. He would be nearest the phone, and he'd answer it sometimes by going "hello," as if like he knew them, as if they were his little buddy. Mm. That was the sense I got. Um, I'm just like, oh, yeah. remind me of Noel Evans with a banker, that sort of vibe when Adam would pick up Hello, the phone. hello, overly familiar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which was awkward if then someone else had to go down and you would they thought you were the one. Who... How have you been, Matthew? I've been great. <laughs> uh, listening to you guys talk about the parcel related. It's just the, the, how what the office has been like for the past few days, you know? Of course, very busy, very busy. Yeah, of course. And you know why it's busy? Because there's lots of wrestling to get through. Bloody hell. Uh, but how are you, Matthew? Yeah. Generally yourself. good. I've started doing DDP yoga. It's called Yoga for Regular Guys. So obviously I have to take the intermediate class. Good <laughs> God. I'm still feeling it. Did it on Monday. <laughs> oh. And of course, it's, it's like yoga, but instead of the yoga practitioner being all nice and welcoming, you look at your screen sweating your bollocks off going, God, I'm knackered here. And you look at DDP going, <laughs> with this magnificent, that... looks like a piano, that... That, all that fancy teeth he's got in his mouth, and just going, going, hey, it's easy for me, bozo. And you're like, all right, all right, all right. He got that bit the class where he poses on his forearms, but arches his body up in the air, so his feet are up here, yeah. but he's on his forearms. What? Aye. He can do that? <laughs> he can do that at 63 or whatever he was I've when he filmed that. Saw... Yeah. Just from his matches, I never really saw DDP as a particularly flexible man as well. That's but why he started doing it after yeah. his wrestling. Yeah. Uh, no, no, Jerry no, he was doing it. Yeah, because yeah. as he said, like people would laugh at him backstage in the nineties, early two thousand, going, oh, 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 "Yoga men doing yoga. Right. Oh, oh, oh. We drink beer and smoke cigars." And <laughs> now, of course, everyone does bloody yoga. Yeah, yeah, he'd strap himself over like packs of peas and stuff, and then do yeah. his yoga. <laughs> right. People like P and DDP. And now he's a millionaire m- many times over, I imagine, through yeah. his yoga. I watched a bit of the Seamus and Rhea Ripley warrior, Kelly Warrior workout, mm-hmm. uh, because at one point, right near the start, he, he points off camera and the camera swivels around and it's just Drew there doing some stretching as well. Oh, he's just watching. Just watching them. <laughs> right. Eat a big pack of crisps. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I love Mr. Tate. Did Seamus give it a pervy title like you did for Liv Morgan's? I don't know. I didn't watch all of it. Liv Morgan's realized... butt stuff, Matthew? <laughs> oh, God. Oh. I realized that, <laughs> no, I realized that when I started watching it, I was like, you know what? This uh, It's just not for me. It's not the content that I want to... It makes me feel bad about my own body. So I just don't want to watch it. They're both, I thought, I thought the they're idea both was you... tremendous, tremendous well, shit. Well, yeah, because I, I thought the idea was you go, all right, I'll do that next time I'm in the gym or make some notes down. I couldn't down, do and what they're do. doing. Oh. Oh, my, no. No. Oh, man, no, oh, man, no. <laughs> <laughs> What a great reaction. Oh, man, no. <laughs> uh, So, yeah, in the big news this week, all signs point to William Regal going back to WWE. Uh, I think I'll just summarize, I think, what everyone knows by now, surely. Uh, yes, even though he was under contract for a multi-year deal with AEW, uh, he's not anymore. And so the update, Alvarez said, again, I want to make this clear. I have not been told outright that he is oh, gone, fantastic. but based on several things, I believe he's gone. Uh, so good. Yeah, so it looks like that's just And there's the, the conference call yesterday with Tony Khan where he just basically confirmed. Yeah, and then, to the end, then Tony Khan. Regal's going to go back and train his son, but he's not allowed to go on TV, which makes you, it makes you, it makes you wonder what's going to happen at War Girl season. It also makes me wonder, did Tony say that as if we're men who admire him for this? Because I, I think know. that's a mean thing. He's depriving us of more. Was it a clause that AEW put in, like insisted that he have? He didn't outright say who did it. He just said that was a thing. Well, that... Yeah, he, uh, Tony Khan famously <sighs> giving all the answers we request us, the ongoing backstage stuff in AEW. So, Some, yeah, weird. he's left. Say, so, yeah, but, like, was he under con- Did he say he could do it? Did he ask you? Have you, have you got something? Is there a trade deal going on? Mm. Uh, just wants to live out his golden years. <laughs> Training his son. <laughs> Oof, my crops. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, very abrupt end there to... William Regal's little tenure yeah. in AEW, but did get a lot done for the little time that was there. Mm. Maybe was not the best story presented there by AEW, but in fairness, if he was there for a while, are we going to get anything more constructive we, given the state of the, AEW? Honestly, the, the, they used a trope this week, which we'll talk about, that I've never seen in wrestling before. The should something bad to me happen video, which is amazing. <laughs> we'll get more on that later on. Uh, Kevin Dunn missed 
WWE Survivor Series War Games, and this is considered backstage a big deal. Oh. Uh, Kevin Dunn is usually ever present uh, at these pay per views, believe it or not, but he was not there. Dave Meltzer of the not the Zodiac Killer newsletter noted that <laughs> Dunn was absent from the show because he was on vacation, but him not being there is crazy because he's been there since 1984. He doesn't miss a That's lot of That's first things. holiday since 1984. Apparently. Why would you be that rich and then not take advantage of it and go on holiday? Because you're a power greedy, <laughs> mindless little weasel. <laughs> Oh, Kevin Dunn. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's more of a Vince guy and he just doesn't feel that same loyalty to Triple H. Hope he does. Right? Yeah. Just so he goes away. If it means the production on... Yeah. Not the production, let's just say. The editing, the live editing, whatever, slows down. Yeah, I'm all for it. Uh, the non-news is a reason CM Punk has yet to be released by AW Revealed. Uh, so he is still under contract to AEW. Oh, you're telling me there's a chance? Yeah. Uh, no. Punk said he's ready... <laughs> Uh, and willing to move to his ne- next project with AEW. But Mayor Melter again says that he is still in the contract. He's still being paid by the promotion and has not been released because of a holdup in the buyout on AEW's side. So AEW have still not bought out his contract, so he's still there. Make that Andrade money. <laughs> oh, hi. Uh, Dustin Rhodes announces 2023 is his last year in wrestling. They call him the natural. We'll finish up a legendary career next year. Uh, made his debut in '88. Bloody hell. He feels like he's been around a lot longer than that, but that's still very impressive innings. And he's moving better than he ever has. It's nice, again, it's, it's, a, it's, a sh- it's a shame on one hand, because obviously he's still fantastic at what he does. But it's also good because we haven't seen that, woo, mm. like we see with most older wrestlers. Going, oh, you've stayed around a little bit too long. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's nice he's going out his own terms. Yeah. And he shows up. He's 53 right now, which again is a big difference to being 53 in the 80s. Yeah. Which is just basically dead. But <laughs> nowadays, like I said, with the yoga and everything else, the advances made in medical stuff like that and not running the crazy schedules that they used to work in the 80s. Yeah, he is still able to step a, up a now new, and again. A new massive dog. Oh. Mastiff Aww. called Brute, was it? I think. Fitting name for a dog like that. Absolutely. Oh. Huge. Oh. That'll take up his time. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, good yeah, for look, him. Yeah, look, look. I can Trent. wrestle. Oh, I can have a big dog. I have got the energy <laughs> for both. Oh. Uh, Serpentico becomes the first AW talent to lose 100 matches. Congratulations. <laughs> well done, Serpentico. <laughs> From all of us here at Coldaholic. I thought it would have been Fuego. I'm surprised. It was <laughs> neck and neck. Yeah. Damn it. Uh, Jim Ross <laughs> says John Laurinaitis deserves the misery he's living in. <laughs> Quote, I had a hard time as time went on trusting Laurinaitis. That's sad to say. I hired him. I gave him a job when he needed it. I don't think he treated me quite right. He just wanted to show Vince that he was a better manager than JR and all these things. So now his ass is without a job and he deserves the goddamn misery that he's living in. Wow. That I perceive that he's living in and I don't like how he treated me. I love fired up Jim Ross. Bloody hell. Like, never mind Dustin Rhodes spending his last year of his life having well, last matches, I guess, the best of his abilities. We need, like, Jim Ross living as if he was Bill Watts just for one year. <laughs> What what happened between them? <laughs> I don't know. No. Well, I mean, obviously, then just Jim Ross having a, a generally miserable time in WWE. Yeah, but there's loads of people that Jim Ross presumably doesn't like. Cause he's quite yeah. grumpy. But this is different. This is like, this is past the level of like Bret Hart shooting on someone. I read this. I wondered like, what would happen if, if Jim Ross came around to your house and he was like Clint Eastwood and Dirty Harry and started shooting your kneecaps off? Would he call it? Like he went, oh, by God, <laughs> as God's my witness, he's broken in half. He's like, no, JR, no. I was going to say, judging off JR's Twitter activity alone, I would have thought John Laurinaitis' as highest in the Divas ranks especially would have been right up his street. <laughs> uh, but Jim. it must be nice when you get in your late 60s. I think Jim Ross is nearly 70 now, isn't he? Yeah. So it must be nice just to go, you know what? Let's just say what it is now. Yeah. Don't care about people's feelings. <laughs> She's the only Anderson part of his life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be like my cookie history on my <laughs> blog. What do you mean? Deleted. <laughs> anyway, uh, WWE personality fired after unplanned house show spot. And it's a, uh, an update on something that happened a few months ago, but WWE personality, oh, I'm very sorry in advance, uh, Quetzali Bulnus, the host of WWE, a horror in El Brunch de WWE. Oh, yeah, what would this story, what's this? Yeah, He's been really fired worried. by the company following her involvement, I remember the story, in an unplanned spot at a recent house show in Mexico. She confirmed her tiring via TikTok, which seems a weird way of doing it, but what do I know? Uh, I'd not work in the place. I used to do hosting work for four years. I want to say that was been a tough trip in which I stopped myself from drinking, going out, or preventing myself from feeling all the emotions. I have to accept that I feel sad and I'm a little lost. Uh, the unplanned spot, which seemingly 
took to her firing took place at W's House show in Mexico City on Sunday, October 30th. The incident saw Bulners encourage her friend, wrestling YouTuber Falback, to jump the barricade. The moment left Brian Saxton mang- uh, angry, and he initially called for security until Bulners urged him not to. Falback then tried to enter the ring, but Bulners ordered him back to his seat. Uh, Falback reportedly wanted to declare his love for Bulners to the ring and steal a kiss. What's and obviously, we were really, man? really happy with this. Uh, credit this, to Fightful, I've, I've who are not this, any serial I've killers that we know. I've seen this story everywhere, and I don't know anyone in... I know Saxton, but yeah. I don't know... I don't. Do, am I an old, miserable bloke now? I don't know, think we're that up to date with... Uh, YouTubers and not. Well, we're not up to date on uh, Mexico and their... Well, I you, guess, yeah, true. TikTokers and uh, even the Dari uh, personalities yeah. in the, in the um, different language places. But it was just interesting to say, like, hey, can I have my friend do a spot? I'll be all right. I won't ask permission. It's like, it's a oh, no, 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 no. Strange one. Yeah. Strange. Update on post-launch plans for AEW Fight Forever. Apparently, according to... Post Malone's plans? Post-launch. <laughs> oh. It's like, what? <laughs> I may have said Post Malone. <laughs> Sorry if you heard that. Post Malone says he's going to play the game and have a bloody good time doing it. Sorry about that. Um, friend of Mafu Evil Uno said that uh, the reason it's called Fight Forever is they don't plan on releasing annual update games like WE obviously has okay. that caused... The company made them to go crazy and go, no, leave us alone. Uh, instead, they're just going to have it regularly updated every year or so. It's going to be that, that game, then you buy DLC or whatever, or season passes, and it'll update with an actual 50 or so people Tony Khan will have hired <laughs> since the last update. <laughs> so, and I think that's a actual progression for games. Uh, no, FIFA, I, I think I'm right. FIFA, the last one, did that? No, it's every year still, yeah. There was talk somewhere. that it was going to slow down. Oh, they didn't actually do it then. I'm not no. sure. You can tell I buy them every year, right? I mean, it's that, this year is the last year of FIFA. Maybe it'll change oh, that's with the it. new... Uh, what's it called? going to be called, the new FIFA? Club 6. Yeah, Club I don't know what e- 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 F- e- FC uh, or something, isn't it? Yeah. Wait, why is that? Six? Are they not paying for... <laughs> they're not paying for anymore. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, uh, maybe maybe it'll change. That might be a disaster for them, but we'll see. That'll be a game of two halves. Oh. I do like that, though, the fact that they're not going to release a game every year. And your little pun there. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Kurt Angle reveals Brock Lesnar was asked to join TNA. It's a long story short because obviously Kurt Angle's his podcast all saying all types of crazy things, but he said like, yeah, hey, basically TNA, can we hire Brock? And he went, how much does he want? <laughs> he, wanted the no. same, he wanted the same as Kurt. And Kurt, the story I, well, as I read it was that Kurt was kind of making it well known in the story that he was on a lot of money in TNA. He was going like, yeah, they couldn't sign another guy to a seven-figure deal. Yeah. So, yeah. so as Jeff Jarrett in his podcast has said many times, it's like, yeah, we'd love to hire more people, give them more money, but this is the amount of budget we have. So that's why we couldn't have Goldberg or Brock because they wanted mm. this much. So that's it. Uh, good story. Simon Dean, a.k.a. Nova, retires from pro wrestling. Ross wasn't in the day that this happened. And I was, I was on the news with Tom instead of Ross. And I was sad because I think that Ross would have been the person for this news story because as we all know, Ross loves Simon Dean. The Simon Simon's system. Yeah. The patented Simon system. Oh, patented TM, trademark. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. Aye. I don't know much about Nova, but I know lots about Simon Dean. Where do you want to start? <laughs> I could reel off half an hour's worth of content for you on Simon Dean. Bless you. From segways to bottles of slush. That's right. Uh, Mate and Bobby Lashley eat 50 burgers. Yes. Purple jumpsuits. Yep. Uh, who was the person he had to show off the Simon system? Who was the person he had to show off? Yeah, he had a wrestler. Oh, probably someone fat. Viscera, I don't know. Maven. Maven. Was it Maven? Yeah. Now, I've repressed that memory. Interesting stuff. Maybe it's part of Simon's system that I've read. What was, his, what was Simon Deem's tag team? I don't know, Matthew. The Jim and I. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Oh, yeah, his yeah, tag yeah, oh, right. yeah. Who was he in yeah, a tag, who was team, in the tag team with? Yeah, right. There's a trick question there, Matthew. That was oh, sorry. a trick question. Sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah, a Simon His Dean tag expert. team. <laughs> <laughs> Just had them. Yeah. So, Weren't they the Johnsons in uh, TNA? Yeah. The Dicks. Well, the Johnson, the Dicks. The, jo- the Johnson. How bad is the state the of the mid two thousand wrestling world? No, no, the Johnson, yeah. the Dicks are two different tag teams. <laughs> yeah. Don't get yeah. those two mixed. And up. you had the other two lads, the blonde lads from around the same period of time. Um, what were they called? In TNA, in WWE, SmackDown. Uh, don't know. No, they're all saying it at home. Okay, big strapping boys, rich <laughs> blonde hair, <laughs> the style, very no. young. <laughs> um, like big lads, big, yeah, big lads. Yeah, big lads. Billy and Chuck. Yeah, we'll go a billion times. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Blonde, um, big lads. <laughs> Young, well. Um, <laughs> Marvel scrapped Becky Lynch scene in The Eternals. And again, Aidan Gibbons had to tell him, like, mate, I really love how you've been writing up these news stories recently because they've been bloody lovely to read. Stop okay. caring, hasn't he? He's what? He stopped caring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Jim, like Jim Ross. <laughs> <laughs> that one WrestleMania Honky Tonk Man did guest commentary in his match he went I'm just trying to get fired he, was, he didn't let anybody else speak and instead Vince went that's the energy we need we want to hire you he's like oh no 
Peggy Lynch was almost set to cross over into the Marvel Cinematic Music uh, Universe. Jesus. According to Fightful Select, Lynch was cast in 2021's Eternals movie, but her scenes were cut from the final product due to being, quote, too depressing. It just says here, Lynch will appear in a post credit scene alongside Harry Styles. How is that going to be depressing? What? what? Have a little sing-song. What? Wait, what? Hey, that was it. That sounds mad, that. We well, like so, Becky, but this... Mm, po- what? Post-credit scene. Oh, sorry. Again, I love that. I'll explain this. <laughs> so in the Marvel films, they always do like da 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 at the end, and then you watch the credits, and then there's either one or two, one mid-credits, post-credits Oh, scene, no, let me go home. I've seen the film now. <laughs> bloody hell. Popcorn, popcorn ran out at the start of the, the, the bloody adverts, didn't they? Big debate yesterday <laughs> in the office over who the coolest One Direction member is. Fraser's a big Harry Styles fan, as we know. Um, we're, me and Jai Atkins were certainly vouching for Zayn as the coolest one because he didn't mm. want to be there. And that's cool. That's the energy you want. I know you bring it every week. What do you mean? You don't want to be here. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant Fraser. That almost landed. Fraser if landed. If you understood yeah, it, that would have been yeah, really yeah. good. Sorry, yeah. sorry, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right, Zayn. Oh. My money's on uh, the lad, uh, Liam, because he, he, he bashes lots of cocaine. <laughs> And that's really cool. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> but if you he saw was that. the one who at the Oscars <laughs> yeah. was on the red carpet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Jada and the Will Smith. Why was he like <laughs> Dutch? Like, it was weird. <laughs> that's only the second worst accent I've heard this week after Scylla Black's um, <laughs> reggae. I've not seen it. <laughs> seen a performance what? of All Night Long. Oh, right. What's yeah, the song yeah, All no, Night Long yeah. about, Matthew? By Lionel. Uh, I assume oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you I assume it's about sex no yeah. it's a, what I thought it was about partying all night long have in I the been bed- no, that's, have that's I been no in the bedroom though, all isn't it? night no, long we're gonna have a party oh, no. oh. it's a picture of the scene a party in the bedroom <laughs> No, I just thought Lionel just wanted to have a party. Right. <laughs> he, he was, was like playing, playing, playing oh. fortresses with the pillows. He was stuff. Bret Hart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, just the little, uh, no, picture, no. <laughs> picture All the right, so now it's Scylla Black singing it. Scylla Black's uh, Christmas 1983, we'll call it. I don't know what. It was in the 80s, at least. Round oh, Scylla's place, no. Christmas trees up. There's at least 12 children there, and she's oh. singing all night long. There's a little lad in green trousers going mental at the front. Body popping in the 80s. You've never seen the like of it before. And then at the end of the song, you know, Christmas, goodwill to all men and all that sort of stuff. She kicks them out. All the kids just on the street oh, in, a, in a deeper night. If she's singing about all night long that well in the 80s on TV, no one's got 12 kids. <laughs> God. I think that Lionel's been done dirty there. Everyone <laughs> assumes it's a song about sex. Go on. But I try to think of a euphemism I can. But. All night long, he's playing StarCraft 2. <laughs> unless it's like. A big, unless there's loads of participants. Well, my friends, the time has come to raise the roof and have some fun. Go Throw on. away the work to be done. Let the music play on, play on, play on, play on. Everybody sing, everybody dance. There's multiple people. What, kind of, you... what kind of party is this? <laughs> yeah. mm, it's a distraction. <laughs> mm. Bring your wives, bring your friends. <laughs> Just going to go show them a new roof. Tamboli de se de moya. Hey, jambo, jambo. That is Spanish for I like to shag a lot. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Oh, 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 yeah. We've got demonetized in Spain, <laughs> Mexico. Alan Shearer's favorite song. Oh, he can sing it. You ever seen him singing it with a breadstick? <laughs> yeah. No, you <laughs> He's speaking in tongue. Go no, on, no, no, no. He's him and the pundits of whatever tournament they're at have all uh, uh, obviously had a drink and they sat around the table and he's uh, singing into a breadstick. Gary Lineker tries to make it about himself, which I'm not too keen on in that video. It's all about Shearer. He's got a good voice, to be fair to him. When you say singing, it, it, he's singing into it as if it's the microphone. It, it, no, he's drunk, stick. like he's off. <laughs> <laughs> they all are, but he's got a good voice, which I would never have thought. I'm Alan glad Shira. that he's singing that, and not like, "Hey, Shira." You know, he's, he's, got, he's got a voice oh. like Paul Young. <laughs> Google Paul Young, kids. One of the standouts of the '80s. It's a soulful voice. <laughs> Boy, were he keeping the hit with the silver black <laughs> and Paul Young references, and finally. Let's see if we could possibly follow that. Fuego del Sol mourns the loss of Fuego 2. Ah, oh, bless him. It's been 11 months since we last saw Fuego Dos in an AW ring, with no sign of the mysterious luchador since December 2021. <laughs> uh, well, as, as one half of Too Fast Too Fuego, many assumed Fuego 2 was Cody Rhodes under a mask. Obviously a stupid theory. Again, Aiden Gibbons having a good time here. Whoever was behind the hood, Fuego Dos Sol misses them, paying tribute to his fallen brother during an interview with AJ Awesome, who's definitely not a serial killer. <laughs> Ripped to Fuego 2. Oh, Fuego German, said yeah. he roughly, went, To be fair, though, he's not roughly the same age as the Zodiac killer would have been back in the oh, back in the day i hope he's not getting influenced by the the bad journalist 
Stick with the good ones. Um, other people wanted to point out that it was around the same time Cody Rhodes left AEW. I don't think those two things are related whatsoever. And I don't know why people like to bring it up. I miss Cody too. However, my son, son of Fuego, Fuego 2, went missing. And now I believe oh. he's presumed dead. If you're out there, please come home, son. That was his I miss son. you. Your family misses you. We need you back. But if he's no longer with us, rip. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be many more Fuegos along the way, like Scylla Black's kids. <laughs> that was his son. Yes. Oh. Yes, he definitely just has just, I has they just made like, that up. I thought they were brothers or something. He's speaking like he's murdered that child <laughs> and he's trying to cover it up. AJ Awesome's next question was where are the body hidden? <laughs> If Vince, Where were you the night of November 2021? Triple H would probably catch wind of it, but if it was still Vince in charge, <sighs> could Cody feasibly have just gone back and been Fuego at the same time as working in WWE if he wanted to? And Vince would just never have. I don't think Vince would have known. <laughs> I don't think it was that obvious. Has <laughs> there ever been an issue like that? They've got two territories going, what do you mean? That guy's under a mask. Probably. <laughs> I can't in, like, be in. in like the 60s or something. Well, yeah. He basically <laughs> did it himself at WrestleMania 1, didn't he? Well, what's his face? The executioner. Was no. WrestleMania 1 with the red mask? What's he, Buddy? Yeah, the ex was that the executioner? Blonde hair. Whatever he was called. Nature Boy. Is it Nature Boy? Buddy? No, it wasn't was Buddy the Rogers. It was, um, oh man, who was it again? You know. It was Tito Santana in the opening match. Yes, Mr. X was the first guy. What? Is it Mr. X? It's Buddy Rose. Playboy Buddy Rose. Playboy Buddy Rose. Playboy Buddy Rose was Mr. X. He's not WrestleMania 1. The opening yeah. match of WrestleMania 1. Yeah, it's, it's, it relates to what we're talking about now, I swear. WrestleMania 1. It was Simon Dean. <laughs> <laughs> I think was... we've gone off on one. No, 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 no way. It was Buddy Rose, the executioner. Hey. Yeah. Oh, the ex all right. Whatever. Now, apparently, I've heard that it was because he they may have wanted to push him later on as a heel. Yeah. So they just thought, well, if he's losing in the opening match, we'll just put him in a mask so no one knows. I'm up to speed with you now. So he made it sound like, I can't be here and for the NWA. Oh, right. We'll right. put you under a mask, buddy. Okay. Buddy. Thanks, thanks, chaps. Wow. On that amazingly stupid bit. <laughs> Thank you very Let's much. That was the news WrestleMania bit. WrestleMania 1 watch along or something? No. Okay. <laughs> There's only enough Lord, Lord Alf Alfred you can take in an afternoon. <laughs> and that's too much. Do you know? If the rumors are true, that's right. <laughs> oh. oh, dear God. <laughs> Ah, tub man in Japan. Play. Richard <laughs> is in Okinawa this month and believes it will be a welcome change from a December in Newcastle due to the weather. Mm. He won on what he calls, quote, the hottest ride for a long time, <laughs> although it's unclear if he means in a sexy or sweaty sense at the time of putting the mail back together. It could be either or. Well. Oh. 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 Richard also released footage from day three of his ride from Sendai to Tokyo. And here we have a live little look at him going, eh. He's so smooth, man. Look at him oh, just nonchalantly holding his leg, his leg. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the bit on the beach? No. Oh, he's sat me. on some rocks, and then it cuts, and then he's lounging on the rocks. It's really good. Can I see the lounge on the rocks, please? Can we skip ahead to whatever point <laughs> so he's lounging on the rocks? I'm, I'm in Japan, right? I'm my bike. Joel knows exactly the point. Oh. <laughs> there he is. He's sat on the rocks. But when does it then cut? Because it's brilliant. We have... Oh, there it is. Was is it that? that? So we have... There, I we saw have... a leg. Oh, Oh. Bit, bit further on, about oh. 10, 20 seconds on, maybe. Oh. Here we go. Oh, no. Oh. Here are some bikes. Oh. Oh. Keep going, because I saw it in the little picture in picture. There it oh, is. Yes. Oh, yes. Ding a, dong. It's a good vlog. I'm enjoying his trip. Hey, I've come all the way to Japan, different country, uh, to come to Redka. <laughs> that could be Whitley Bay. Yeah. Jewish he, Bay. He, say, he says. There's I'm less from... bodies on the beach, like in Redka. But... He says I'm from the beach, so it's nice to come to a beach. Basically, words to that effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He also gives his thoughts on um, the cycling system in Japan and the road rule, the rules of the road. It's very good. I imagine the hierarchy over there is different to here. Yeah. Whereby when pedestrians. You, are when now... you turn right at a like a like a four way like crossroads, you can't merge into the right hand lane and turn right. You've got to go to the left hand junction, and then you've basically got to cross the road twice. You've got to wait twice, oh. which seems like a pain. Ooh. But he says you've just got to do it, otherwise. The car will clatter into the... Yeah. You get narrow ones everywhere. But I mean, wide paths, it's gone. It's a river path. He loves a river path. He does. Yeah. He does love a river path. He explains why. Why? Not only does it offer great views and stuff, but also it helps uh, It helps link together. Like when you're cycling around in the city, things can take ages because there's loads of traffic lights unless you find a river path and then mm. you can get out pretty fast. That's great. Wow. I like wearing these because it makes me feel like Macho Man Randy Savage in 88. He's definitely got a pair of socks down there, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I've divert thighs, gaze. Is that enough of Tubman in Japan? Tubman in Japan, <laughs> Tubman in Japan <laughs> having a lovely time. Thank you very check much for telling us all about the bikes. YouTube, check out the YouTube channel, Tubs. Search just Tubs, 
cycling or tubs Tokyo or whatever. Up the tubs. Up the tubs. <laughs> Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. Ah, hmm. The Hall of Fame segment. Everyone's favourite segment. Apart from mine, this bloody week. Uh, and third place, in condescending order, of course, God of War Ragnarok, 21%. Take uh, that, nerds. Yeah. Uh, I had nothing else to talk about that last week. I so called Owen a nerd on the Twitch stream last night, and then the chat really jumped in to defend him. I felt bad. Why do you call him a nerd? He was like, what are you up to tonight after this? And I went, I've not really got any plans. And then he was like, I'm going to play... Oh, what's the game that everyone's playing? It's going to be hard. Elden Ring. Elden Ring. He went, I've been playing Elden Ring recently. I beat a boss last night. I had to summon and I went, no! And then... <laughs> yeah. the, the, the Probably, I think it's the best-selling game of the year as the well. The channel were like, how are you? What are you doing? I yeah. Felt, I felt <laughs> oh, awful. yeah, because they were playing it. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that. Whereas me and Jack, instead of doing that, we watched AEW. <laughs> yeah, we're not nerds. <laughs> we're cool. Oh, <laughs> damn it, you jocks. <laughs> Hanging around on Northumberland Street. Watching. <laughs> Do you know what? The discourse this week's been really infuriating on Twitter because the discourse has been is wrestling art or is wrestling storytelling? Or something? Oh, yes. I saw a bit of that and then I put it down and went back to playing God of War Ragnarok. So <laughs> cheers, pal. Uh, the late Christy. Sorry, Christine, I should say, McVie of Fleetwood Mac, 22%. Bottom. No, second bottom. Okay. That's right, second bottom. But first place, of course. What else could it have been? But Triple H being a fan of the humble Greg sausage bean and uh, cheese melt, 58%. The only British snack that he liked compared mm. to their Yanks filth. So, <laughs> fantastic. Good to see you guys also being a fan of that. So, fantastic. And the Scottish filth. Scotch eggs. Oh, no, they're oh, all like right. Salad, like the yeah, nice yeah. ones are, but, you know, like, uh, Greg's pasties aren't exactly the highest quality, but they are still lovely. But mm. a crap scotch egg is a crap scotch egg. Shocking discovery this week. Doing the weekly shop at Asda. Mm. Asda sell their own in-the-oven festive bakes. Tweddle's bought a couple. Review incoming. Have you had a festive bake yet? I've, no, I've had a Greg's festive bake, but Asda's got their own version. Oh, I thought it was like selling the Greg's ones. No, no, I no. Do that. Yeah, I oh. do that, yeah. But Asda, Asda's gone into business for themselves. I don't know how they got past the patents and the trademarks. The it's a shoot. Yeah, it's mm. going to be the, the, the caterpillar situation over again yeah. with the pasty. Honestly, if it's not tied down eh? there, yeah. I can't wait to see that review. Shocking. Shocking. All Almost right. as shocking as your pick for the Hall of Fame as the winner from last week. The life and times of AEW's eccentric Englishman, William Regal, I'll oh. go for. Just because <laughs> the run's come to an end. We know this for a fact now. And as I was saying at the end of last week's podcast, it was better than I think we all could have thought when he initially signed. I think what we got in terms of what we expected was a lot more, and I just think it's fantastic. Where it was the serious stuff with the BCC, putting over his opponents on commentary, or just fancying Excalibur, I thought he was fan-bloody-tastic. Yeah. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed <laughs> his work. Yeah, completely agree. Yeah, can go from, knows about all aspects of the theatre of wrestling, be it the, as you said, the comedy or the tragedy, he do all so bloody well. Explaining why moves hurt and why wrestlers do moves in certain ways. Look yeah. at how we moved on next there to protect them. We would never know that without him. And then 20 seconds later, Excalibur, you scrummy, <laughs> custard cream, you want to dip you in a hot bowl and oh, it's all gone. It's better when it comes in out a, of his mouth, isn't it? Yeah. In a Greg's sausage, bean and cheese melt. There we go, I'm almost saved it. So yeah, that's a very good pick. Right when he goes back, Paul, you know, our friend Paul will be like, hey, Willie. I've seen this new confectionery. Uh, uh, it's a sausage bean and cheese melter. Uh, here's one. Uh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Sorry, it's hot. Uh. <laughs> yeah, here's hoping. Yeah. Here's open. Uh, yeah, wait, he ate this and then he signed Regal. I'm just saying, <laughs> just saying. Ooh, this reminds me of something. Mm, English. So... That is his pick. It's likely you're going to win, Jack, but have you got anything to fill it? I've not got anything good. Um, oh. So, I think... Oh, see, I was going to I was gonna nominate one of the England team, but that could go really badly next week. It could jinx it, and I don't want to do that. Yeah, you're right. If we, we play don't fans do on it, Saturday, people are going to look for anything to blame. You don't need that heat, brother. What if I nominate Mbappe, and then he that might jinx him? Stop saying names, Jack. I'm trying <laughs> to help you. If Paul Pog was watching the podcast... Could you ask your brother? <laughs> could you ask your brother? Is it Mateus? I don't know. Oh, what's, what's Paul Pogba's brother called? Joel? You'll know. No. Paul Pogba's Joel's brother. On Hello, Joel. Hello, Joel. Hello, Joel. Can you curse Mbappe again? Because apparently he got like voodoo witches or something to curse Mbappe for a Champions League game, and there was a highlights package came out, and he couldn't he couldn't touch the ball. It was oh, fantastic. Yeah. Stop it. Do the same thing again, please, Paul Pogba's brother. I like that when they call me Paul Popper. Sorry, go on. <laughs> 
That was a bit <laughs> sorry. Jack, what's your pick for Hall of Fame? I don't know, man. But I'll go with mine then. Go on, yeah, yeah give, give, me, give me time to think, yeah. Save me after that. So I have in the past put in various different animals oh, and f- wacky things <laughs> and stuff like this. And the, I'd say positive and negative thing of that every week is that people, whenever they see something come up in the news or what's happening in the world of Hollywood, immediately jump to Twitter to tell me about it. Cocaine Bear oh my God. is an upcoming American black comedy thriller directed and co Produced by Elizabeth Banks from a screenplay by Jimmy Warden. Is inspired by the true, st- true story of Cocaine Bear, who has his own Wikipedia page. <laughs> An American black bear who ingested a duffel bag full of cocaine in 1985. A duffel bag? Wow. A duffel bag. Well, the reason was, if I get to his Wikipedia page, the film's inspired by the real story of a 175-pound American black bear that died after ingesting oh, a duffel bag full of cocaine in December 1985. <laughs> It died. They, well, I hope there's going to be more to it than that. It's going to be a very short-lived film. Wait, it was 175 pounds? That's a light bear, that That's it? just the size of a person. Yeah. The cocaine had been dropped out a of an airplane piloted it, yeah. by some guy, a former narcotics officer and convicted drug smuggler, because his plane was carrying too heavy a load. The bloke who was smuggling the drugs was a former narcotics officer? Yep. Yeah. That Thor- is mad. Thornton then jumped off the plane <laughs> with a thoughty parachute and died. <coughs> the bear was found three months later in the north of the state of Georgia, sweet Georgia, alongside 40 open plastic containers of cocaine. (laughs) The bear is currently on display at the Kentucky for Kentucky Fun Mall in Lexington, Kentucky. Why is the name Kentucky in that three bloody (laughs) name? Whatever. Who named the bear Cocaine Bear in 2015. And we have a little picture of him. I've already showed it. I'll be too busy reading the description. And here's the happy chap himself. So this is the actual bear? Yeah, they stuffed it. That's And they're making a film of it somehow. And And if you look in the background, there's more Kentucky stuff. They're so proud. I was going to say, I thought his hat was in reference to ketamine. <laughs> no, he, that's he probably needed a bit of that to balance <laughs> things out. <laughs> so, Cocaine Bear, inspired by true events, it says, and there's a bear filled with cocaine on the front. Uh, this has been sent to me many a times. Uh, big cast. I don't know what the hell they're all going to do, considering it only appears there's a bear <coughs> and, I don't know, three people involved that can film it. Stuff. Mm. But even more funny, Ray Liotta is going to be in the film. He died months ago. Oh. So it's one of these things where obviously his stuff gets filmed months and months in advance. So Ray Loader, who's currently dead, it's going to be in the film, Cocaine Bear. That might be his last release thing. Oh. He does posthumously. So yeah, Cocaine Bear. I think I've said that name enough times that it's hopefully funny. Uh, I know it's a, it's, a, <coughs> it's a big hurdle to leap over, Jack, but what have you got? Um, Ketamine Fox. Yeah. <laughs> his sidekick. It's hard wait, this one. I'll go for... Um, what's Akimi's first name? Oh. The Morocco player who chipped yeah. the penalty. There we go. So Ross told me, and I've, and since Ross told me, I've seen it on various headlines as well because it's it's the it's the story of the match. Morocco played Spain in the World Cup yeah. round of sixteen, nil nil. Went to pens. Final penalty is taken by a player called Akimi who plays for PSG. Can't remember his first name off the top of my head. He dinks it, stabs it, dinks it down the middle. Keepers, oh. Doesn't know what's going on. He's born in Madrid. <laughs> born in Madrid, plays for Morocco, knocks Spain out of the World Cup. <laughs> Isn't it there still, though, does he? Well, he plays for PSG, so he probably lives in France. Right. I reckon he's got a residence there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> is he going to be going there anytime that's soon? That's the thing. What is he going to, when he goes home, because he was raised in Madrid, what's that going to be like? That's like if Jack Grealish mm. had played for Ireland instead of England, which he might have done. Mm. And he scored a pen and knocked us out of the thing and then came back to Birmingham more like, oh, no, it's everybody. Well, this is the thing that happened to bloody... 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 Uh, him, I. Oh, the my South God. No, 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 no. no. Oh. Like, greatest footballer of all time. That isn't Pelé. It's... Maradona? Yes. Messi? Maradona was in that position where he had to play... I forget the names of the teams. Not The idea of it. Yeah, but or then... Barcelona. They were, yeah, but in like his hometown. So they all turned on him because you have to score against when them. Buenos Aires? Yeah. Okay. He wouldn't have gone against Bocca, would he? Yeah, he loves Bocca. He's yeah. a Bocca boy. boy. I get it. I'm getting the names and stories. All I remember. <laughs> I'm more of a River newses. Plate fan myself. And oh, I, don't, I, I don't know. Um, do you ever, like, in weird football derbies that have nothing to do with you or your team, do you pick a, do you favour one side over the other for no reason? Celtic. Really? Yeah, yeah right. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah. don't know why. Yeah. I, I, I prefer um, Inter to AC Milan, and I don't know why. Uh, Man City to Man United, because I hate Man United. That's because you're a child of the 90s. 
That's right. Nowadays, <laughs> I reckon there'll be a whole new generation of people who feel sorry for Man United and prefer I, them. Whatever I'm feeling. I realise I'm happier seeing Man United lose than I am seeing Newcastle United win. Really? Bloody hell. That's a strong claim. Wow. Well, Newcastle have drawn it again. Yeah, wow. whatever. Well, like, how are Man United doing? They lost. Oh, what a day. <laughs> That's not even that rare. Actually, they're, they're, they're getting all right again. It's like, it's like a like, legend like orchestra in the background. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Sun is shining. <laughs> anyway, so... I'll go for Hakimi. What is Hakimi's first name? I'm going to Google it now so we can write it down. Jeremy. We we, we can't put what his first name is in uh, Spain right now. But. No, because they hate him. Uh, yeah, thanks, um, <laughs> sorry, yeah, I don't know what... It's funnier if it's explained. <laughs> um, it's brought up Hakimo, which is a software company in California. Get off, lads. <laughs> lads, I'm panicking. Atraf, A-C-H-R-A-F. Atraf Hakimi. Atraf Hakimi's chip is Jack's pick. Cocaine Bear is mine, <laughs> but might as well skip ahead. William Regal's AEW run is Ross's pick. I wonder what's going to win. <laughs> Who's going to win? <laughs> Cocaine Bear, obviously. Aye. Of course. Oh. So that film is literally just, you know, man gets job, sees drugs, goes playing, falls, bear drugs, die. I imagine <laughs> it, it makes it sound like the bear, it's the, the what happens with the bear no, is high yeah. cocaine. It's like, so, well, let's go nature traveling, honey. A, okay, what else, what else can happen in Cairns? There's okay. a blurb. And then it's like just giant bear filled with cocaine. Ah! There's a blurb, and it may have it may deviate from the real story slightly. Oh. After a failed drug smuggling operation, a black bear ingests a large amount of cocaine and goes on a drug-fueled rampage. It'd be great if you just cut the it scenes of him cutting promos and on... <laughs> End of a Saturday yeah, night or whatever. Brother, yeah. It's just him and Liam Payne having a good night. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. 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 <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, I went to the cinema to watch 127 Hours, which is basically man gets arms stuck. Oh, that one. That was a true story, though. Yeah, it was a true story. Yeah. 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 It ends with him around the pool. Whoops. <laughs> I remember the press <laughs> conference. Oh, Whoops. Oh. <laughs> I remember the press conference where he talked about it, and he was remarkably happy. And like, I think it was just oh, he had that. Whew, well, I'm alive. I mean, yeah. you cut your arm off. He goes, yeah, but you know, I'm not that bloody he must boulder. Have made a fair bit of money just by that film being made. You think yeah. so? Well, he put himself through it though to get there. But it was just like, and now we welcome the man who's going to answer all your questions. He's like, yeah, all right. I was like, bloody hell, all right. <laughs> anyway, um, you could be almost as happy as that man from 127 hours if you go to patreon.com forward slash called the holic <laughs> and put your vote. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Worst segue since Simon Dean. Um, your vote there in the Hall of Fame. Ooh, 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 scrummy. This is this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ha! Ah, this week in wrestling. Smackdown, the Marine 7, Return of the Evans. Ugh. Yeah, that, oh, yeah, That's yeah, good, yeah, but it's yeah, just like, yeah, oh, my yeah, God, yeah, yeah, great. The Bloodline opened the show, and Sammy starts to credit the Usos for their victory at War Games. But Jimmy cuts him off and says, tonight is all about Sammy. Don't you dare touch me again. He didn't say that. <laughs> Jay admits he didn't like Sammy at first, but now he's earned his respect. They all do a special three-way handshake and get ready for a big old hug. Uh, with Solo watching, because he's solo. He's by himself. But then the brawling brutes interrupt to set up a match between Sheamus and Sammy. Sammy beat Sheamus at the interference from the Usos. And they're all very happy, but... It is funny the situation where the Bron Brutes are supposed to be face and they are against the bloodline, but right now Sami Zayn is easily the most popular good guy on SmackDown. It was a weird booking to make though, because it made Sheamus have to wrestle like a massive heel yeah. and Sami wrestle like a little baby face. Um, so that was a bit strange for me. But even though it did make sense for the story after what they did to Sheamus' arm a few weeks ago, I don't know right. why I had to do that, right. but I did. A couple of notes I made was Jimmy Uso definitely had money on him getting over five my dogs in his promo mm -hmm. right at the start. And also the little camera shot on Jey Uso while the crowd was chatting Sammy Uso. Mm. Very interesting. What it's still not all right. He oh. had a face like thunder, so he did. Is that um, not just uh, that he's not as good an actor? <laughs> no, no, he is a good actor. We know that he is a good actor. Trying really hard not to laugh, but looking miserable while doing <laughs> so. Yeah. No, he is good. We've seen his range before. We've seen that in the feud with Roman initially. And yeah. 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 It was weird because then again, Sammy at the end of the match, that was, you know, typically a heel thing to do when the Usos got involved for the win. Yeah. Because it's him. He's a baby face. Right. But Sheamus is a baby face, but a heel today. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a big win for Sammy. It is. In Absolutely the in cave fame, you wouldn't expect him to be able to beat Sheamus. But but he did. Sammy Zayn couldn't. But Sammy but, Uso couldn't. Yeah, that's right. Different guy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The other guy went to an orphanage in Argentina. Mm-hmm. We're trying to keep it up and beat, man. Like, 
We miss him. <laughs> what, El Generico? Oh, yeah. He's gone the same way as Fuego 2. Oh, right, yeah. He's yeah. in Mexico. Yeah, right. Yeah. Isn't he? But, That's uh, what we're talking Sammy Zayn went to Argentina. Okay. That, that, there we go. <laughs> Backstage, Kofi Kingston reveals that he will be in the Royal Rumble. Don't like it. Just Kofi says that. And no one else yet has <laughs> said. Yeah. Uh, he picks Ricochet to win the World Cup you don't on like Fox. It. Oh, you got to win a match. Get the Tom Bowler out. What's happened to all this? No, no, no that, that's the numbers. They're saying I'm going to be in it. Uh, well, no, no, still you do, we'll do the Tom Bowler later on. You've got to win a match then. No, we've got a few weeks of this. That's all they're going to be doing. No, we need to win ma- qualifying matches. That's what we want. We did this last year, remember? I yeah, know, we do every Ricochet year. Ricochet had to win a match to qualify, and someone just says I'm going to be in it. And Ricochet on Twitter went, what? <laughs> 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 Dina, which, uh, before... He's into that. The lovely, lovely lads in Imperium interrupt him. He challenges any of them to a match later, and Gunther accepts. Oh, not him. He's the big oh, one. Oh, no. It was good, like, when he was doing the Who's at uh, Ludwig and uh, Fabian. And then Gunther walks in, and the Who changed. We speak about range there with Jey Uso. The range of Kofi's Who's there. Mm. On point. No cap. Yeah, because you went, Who? Who? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Just like that. Just like that. Like when Indiana Jones has to fight the big one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, come on. He's like, uh. John Moxley <laughs> reminds me of Indiana Jones a bit in fights. The you jacket, I mean? isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> when we get uh, got, got a gun out and shot Hangman Page rather than yeah. 20 spots in a row. <laughs> Bray Wyatt cuts a backstage promo and says that humans have forgotten that we're all just wild animals. Sick of him now. <laughs> he says that some must die so that others may live, like Cocaine Bear <laughs> in cinemas 2023. He denies attacking LA Knight because if it had been Bray, there'd be nothing left of him. Uh, later, Uncle Howdy interrupts the show and suggests that Bray really is a monster. I'll say, you're a monster of a promo, you boring get. He's, his performance is good. It's just the booking of it. It's gone on for too long. We're doing the point. same promo every week now, yeah. aren't we? But not, not exactly the same, but the message is the same. Mm. I'm not a monster. Oh, but he is. That's the, yeah. I didn't do it, but if I did, I would have killed him. Yeah. Do we think that he actually <laughs> didn't do it? Is that the twist? I and don't Uncle know. Howdy is someone different. I'm past the point of caring. <laughs> I am as well. Um, yeah, I am as well. Yeah. I reckon I've been waiting two weeks now for something like physical to happen. And yeah. two weeks have passed and it's just been the same sort of stuff. So now I'm th- tonight's the night, lads. Smackdown. Yeah, if nothing happens tonight. Physicality will happen with yeah. Bray Wyatt and LA Knight. Although I will cheer if Bray Wyatt's battering LA Knight backstage and goes, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Not to the camera. Like, I didn't do it. <laughs> Uh, Madcap Moss encourages Emma ahead of her match with Shayna Baszler mm. that's not very nice Madcap Moss Shayna wins <laughs> duh, and beats Emma down afterwards Shotzi runs out to make the save oh that'll help but Shayna takes her out as well before finally backing off when Raquel Rodriguez arrives even though she is still injured yeah but I guess <laughs> injured Raquel Rodriguez is still more powerful than Shotzi yeah, right. the, the woman with one arm was saving the people who almost had one arm she yeah. stopped them from getting one arm themselves even though she's got one arm I think. Yeah. it's all about her isn't it what about Raquel? Yeah. Is she going to be the one to take the bell from Ronda? I think so. <laughs> That's the way it's going, isn't it? There's no one yeah. else. Yeah. I thought it was interesting with little Madcap, little Madcap, Madcap and Emma's little promo where he was like, you've forgotten who you are. I was like, yeah, she has. She really has. <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, Sassy Emma from back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Triple H is signing so many people now. It's the same criticism of AEW almost when they sign people and we're supposed to go, oh, her. It's like, you remember Emma? You were part of the women's revolution. It couldn't have happened without you. And I'd like, bloody hell, I'd forgotten about that because... Like, oh, remember you had that match in NXT? And obviously, Colin Barrett doing a great job of going, yeah, she did this, she did that. She was in the finals of this mm. match. I was like, oh, yeah. So I appreciate Colin Barrett, who've really been stepping up on commentary these last yeah. few weeks doing mm. stuff like this. Because otherwise, they're just the book, and it's just, well, it's Emma. It's an interesting problem they've got on SmackDown now. Because Pat, I think, is a uh, American football show ends in the, like, the, the early months of next year. Yep. What happens then? Oh, Wade bar, can save NXT. Yeah, Wade uh, needs to go back to NXT. No, he doesn't. Book is oh. not doing it for me. <laughs> Even one of those big long canes they had in the board <laughs> days. All right, bugger. When it, the tipping point for me was the, it's Dijak. Ooh. <laughs> wow, doesn't, doesn't Manny Rose look great tonight? Hey, what do you think of that, bugger? She's a great wrestler. <laughs> we want Horny hey, Wade Barrett. Thanks, bugger. Appreciate <laughs> it. He's been on fire the past two weeks, bugger. No, that okay. would have been funny. <laughs> Lacey Evans is a oh. Marine again. Hey, remember when she did that thing a while ago when she was a face and she was like, my my pet, my papa, my mama. 
my dog and all this stuff. And you're like, oh, that's really emotional. That God, it really makes you into it. And she came back and she's immediately a heel. Yeah. Matthew, Matthew writes country music. My yeah. papa, my, my mama, mama, my dog. dog. And now, thankfully, <laughs> they've settled that down by having to come back as a Marine. And it's like, I gave my life for this country. Yay, thank you. We appreciate your help. Because people like you can't do it. Oh, she's kind of a Oh, heel. she's not in that. Oh. No, she's not No, she that. was like, because other people have to can't do it. Oh. I had that sense of her. I think oh. it was just so great. Over Facey the... Healy, Lacey Evans. She's back, baby. Mm. It was all about back to basics. And it was like, I'm getting trained by the most elite and powerful fighting force in the world, the US Marine Corps. Mm. It was making them just look big and big and clever, wouldn't it? Yeah. Big and clever. I don't know. It's just, it'd be nice if just remember who she is for like several weeks in a row rather than yeah. like two, then change, then a month, mm. then change. And also, we've seen her as a heel and it was much better. She was yeah. a better heel. Not when she was the confused face heel. Earlier Lacey Evans when she was just a heel. Mm. She was much more of a natural heel, I think. Yeah. So weird. Gunther beats Kofi after a hard-fought match. Midway through, though, Braun Strowman runs in and beats up Gunther's lads because he's a get. Um, Kofi, though, when well, he's waiting for Gunther to come out, does the tribute to Alex Wright. Oh, yes. Oh, the little... The dance. Yeah. The dance. It's... I thought it was unfair putting Kofi in this match. Like, he's already without chest. Oh. <laughs> he put him in a match with Gunther. Staggering. Another thing w- which is sobering is that January will be Kofi's 15th Royal Rumble. Whoa. They talked about this and said only Kane has more appearances. Two more. In the Rumbles. And... We're nearly dead. <laughs> <laughs> was he in the 2008 one? That would have been 50. Oh, One, two, three. No, it can't be his 15. 15, maybe. Chat at 23. Oh, they kind of the greatest Royal Rumble. Oh, it must be. Ah, uh, right. But has, yeah. he been, has he been in every one? Like, or nearly every single one? Maybe. I don't remember. He has had time off for injury, but I think he's what? always managed to do the Rumble. I have wow. to check. But I did like, again, because Barrett and Cole has been, again, so good. There might be a shoe in for the most improved of the year for the mm. Culties, which is coming soon. There we go. Shrill foreboding. So they did mention. Uh, Kofi wants to make up for his last appearance at the Rumble where <coughs> it didn't go his way. And the, I love the fact that the, the, they're not... Previously, it would have been like, ha-ha, I remember Kofi's stupid butterfingers. Kofi messed up his spot. Now it's like, well, yeah, Kofi, obviously, he's had such a good run, has to do a big up every time. So last year, didn't work as... I don't remember planned. anything about last year's Rumble. <laughs> do you not? Was it on the corner? No, he, finally, he, 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 went, he jumped off. He was, I think he was pushed off the top rope or off the apron and then whoop, went to jump, I think John Morrison style, but he, I don't know, he just couldn't get the height right, but his feet were on the floor and then he grabbed it. And it was an ambitious one, I remember. Yeah, 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 it was a tough one and the referee was like, we've all seen it, mate. Your feet yeah. have touched the floor. And he, he was like, ah. Um, mm. But the fact that they're turning that into, cool, yeah, well, Kofi's got a reason to be in the match. There's a reason to get invested in being in the match rather than just, ah, it's the Rumble, do something cool, Kofi. And he's got, I think it's a really good way of, Doing it. It's doing yeah. like they're human beings and they've got an actual reason to be in the room. He'll eliminate Cody Rhodes and he'll use Cody's knocked out body just to stop him from hitting the floor and get back in. That's what I'm predicting. Do you remember when I noticed that with Mandy? <laughs> he wipes his... Wipes yeah, his just that was, that, that yeah. was brilliant. Wipes that. his dirty shoes over his tattoo. <laughs> I did enjoy Michael Cole calling Gunter the human defibrillator, though, just to get back. That was Whoa, good. What a call. God. I do like Gunter's new finisher as well. The Last Symphony. It was, right. a, it was a ding dong battle, so it was. And then he just. That's what they do in the symphony. Ding ah, dong. Ding dong. Uh, he did the old corner drop kick and then the power yep. bomb. Then the last sympathy. It was yep. the last sympathy. The last symphony. Simpy. Don't show that to the camera, the bottom of that mug. <laughs> Are you seeing it? <laughs> oh, for f- I thought you would have known. <laughs> Is it the joke one? You've been pranked. Or as Rio Ferdinand said before the 2006 World Cup, you've been murked. Murked, bruv. It's just Rio Ferdinand jumping out of a <laughs> car you. going, Way, Bex! Imagine Rio Ferdinand as Jeremy Beadle. Yeah. That's what? exactly That's what, what it was. That's what it was, no, yeah. a, I, I'm, I'm It wasn't not, very good. I'm too sober <laughs> to think of that. God. Anyway, what were we going to say? Sobby? I did like, Sobby? Is that my new nickname, is it? My new pet name? I want those bloody Sobby. sour sweets. It's made me throw a bit thick. Sorry. I was just going to say that uh, Braun's interference was good as well because mm. Gunter beating a former champion by himself, a former WWE champion, mm. is good for Gunter. Yes. He didn't need yeah. his pals there. <clears throat> I mean, you'd think so. be... they're doing a bunch of stuff here with Braun. Be like, Rah! has anyone seen that bag I dropped out of the airplane? And uh, <laughs> Sorry. What are you insinuating there, Nothing, Matthew? nothing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's a mixed note with Gunther and also the little few in New Day. So, yeah, I'm liking this so far. Mm. The Usos talk about Sammy being a full member of the Bloodline now. They're ambushed by Sheamus, who beats him down with a shillelagh. 
and says that he and Drew will be waiting for them on next week. And the crowd goes, boo! <laughs> Although, boo, you guys stink! It turns out that won't happen because Drew's not cleared. That's right. Yeah. They, they announced two... Booch! I thought you were stopping the podcast. I was like, what well, if I said yeah, something? That's usually like, what, what we do when we've made like, a mistake. I was like, oh, yeah, no. but like, has Drew you died? Can't. Like, what's happened? <laughs> they can't say that name, yeah. Drew McIntyre. Drew right. hasn't died or done anything diddlerish. Okay. Not it's in the Cultaholic the, Wrestling podcast. It's just the, it's just the, you think Butch is going to, Butch is going to, is, no, is, 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 yeah. Oh, he's confirmed. Oh, yeah. right, Arthur. <laughs> the, the one time Drew listened to the podcast, like, what's, what's all this about? <laughs> yeah, the, the two tag matches they announced was going to be uh, Riddle and Elias on Raw. And then Drew and Sheamus on SmackDown. And neither of those things happened. Yeah. For different reasons. One Drew's, was storyline. Yeah, one was storyline on Raw, and then Drew's was been it? injured for this one here. Mm. Wait, apparently so. The Raw one was going to be storyline. Elias is an idiot, though. We'll get out that later. <laughs> why would you get out the boost? Yeah, yeah. Why, why did he do why that? Why would you get out the boost? Keep that noise down. Hi. It's nice that Jay's at peace, though, finally. Because they were like, mm-hmm. what's this with Sammy? It's like, Roman looked in his eyes. He knew. Jay's at peace. That's mm, nice yeah. to see. Growth. <laughs> Damage Guitar could a heel promo in the ring until they're interrupted by Liv Morgan. She attacks, but the numbers game catches up with her. Until a returning, Tegan Knox makes the save. The first ever WCPW Women's Champion. That's right. Yeah. And the crowd are like, oh. What, what, what? Nah, not it. The, the, cra- the commentators you. are like, yeah, it's them. There was not a lot of... Look, I don't think there was what much reaction. Beef I don't think with... there was much reaction for Damage Guitar or Liv or Tegan Knox's segment. What was your beef with Tegan Knox? And that's how suddenly got... You know, tinnitus during well, the segment. There wasn't a lot of love from the crowd for anybody here, which is a bit sad. I was sad that it didn't. More wasn't made of her. I mean, Dakota Kai looked scared, but what, why wasn't it made more obvious they hate each other? She Cole mentioned it. it. Like, did he? He did mention ah, it, but it wasn't sorry. like because they did have. What was the match they had? Where they just murdered each other at the, the pay per view? Yeah, it, wasn't yeah. it when Raquel came out? That was the and yeah, under the jokes, near um, a table. <laughs> and it, hurt, it looked like yeah. it hurt. Yeah. That was like 2019, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, maybe 2020, something yeah. like that. But, so. uh, it's nice to see her back. I hope they give her a character this time, or just some form of like gimmick other than human who wrestles. Mm. Uh, that's all she was. Uh, the her first gimmick's time. always mm. been like sound, nice lass. Yeah. Friends with Shotzi, likes Kane. That that's <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Shiniest wizard. That's right. That um, that and three fiddy will get your Tesco meal deal. So I really enjoyed Bailey saying Buffalo though. Oh. Her 80s heel shtick. Is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Just go and buffalo. Boo. Buffalo. Yeah, it's very good. Thank you, Ross. <laughs> Cheers. You're welcome, lads. All the best to you. <laughs> no, I agree. It's good. It's good buffalo. Yeah. And in a video package, Karrion Cross and Scarlet choose their next victim. Ray Mysterio. <laughs> Why? That Can't young up and comer. What's Ray done to them? <laughs> and for what I know he was be... on the card or whatever. Like, oh, we've, yeah. it's been chosen, but. For the 16th time in a row, they get the hourglass and go, Tick tock, <laughs> and everyone on Twitter goes, "That's not what that makes." No, yeah, yeah, that's what she goes. Hey Ray, what? <laughs> <laughs> like the global gym and purple goes, cobras ah, in dodgeball. Yes, that was great. You guys both did that. Oh, it's a classic. This is playing hell on the people at the end of this. The, the, the claps. A bit awkward way. when Lance Armstrong gives an inspiring speech about it. <laughs> oh, we didn't know. No, we it's didn't just, know at the time. even though. funny enough. That would have been yeah. peak live strong, wouldn't it? Like those, oh, those my guys. God, yeah. Well, didn't they already have to edit that when it, before it came out? Because well, like, he'd already won another one since the, the filming of that. And oh. then when it came out, so oh. they had to edit. I couldn't have won five. <laughs> <laughs> Tour de France. Is. There you oh, go. Dear. Uh, Ricochet then beats Santos Escobar to win the World Cup on Fox. Yeah, I was surprised. Uh, and as I said, I'm a Gunther. I thought Santos should have won it. He needs it more. Right. I was very surprised Weird. as well. Uh, but again, I know that they... the winner gets a title shot and Gunther's a heel, and it. but uh, mm. I don't know. I don't know. There was lots to like from Escobar, though. There was his little head movement at the start of the match where he's like, to the lads at ringside, then they went that way. Yeah. I've never seen that done before that, like, sneakily, but also explicitly. Explicitly. Easy yeah, for me yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, the little bump he took off the was it the he did the hurricane runner off the barricade. Yeah, barricade. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Then he did the tope on Trevor, and Trevor went up and over the announce table, yep. but it actually looked like it hurt. Mm. It's the first tope I've seen in a long while where it looked like it hurt the guy taking it more than the guy giving it. That's Santos, a good point, actually. That's yeah. the first thing that I ever noticed about him because I didn't know about his Mexico stuff. The first I saw of him was in Lucha Underground, and I was mm. like, his dive is incredible. Mm. He's like an arrow. He's mm. got the best. I'll say it. He's got. The best, he's got the best suicide dive in the business. <gasps> I concur. Mm. And Alicia Fox has the best Northern Light suplex. I concur. Oh, yeah. And oh, 
Um, There's a podcast on Matthew. I've got to think of one, have I? No, uh, no, it's all right. Can... Kane has the best sell of a, any move on his knees. Do you concur? <laughs> yeah, I concur. Yeah. Thank you. There we go. That's yeah, so lovely little match here. Very surprising, but nice to see Ricochet in the main event of a SmackDown and winning a match. And the crowd were invested. Yeah. They certainly Just were. Never let him talk again. <laughs> <laughs> when he yeah. does the moves, he's amazing. He's yeah. amazing. Mm. He's really good. <laughs> he's a he's a butter mouth. Right, I know what you I know what you mean. Yeah. A butter mouth. Yeah, yeah, you know how it's a nasty term for someone who's got an amazing body but but butter fit but then. Oh, but right. Um he's a but but his but his mouth. He's a he's a, a body like Baywatch, a face like Crime Watch. Oh, yeah. but he actually, tribute no, to it doesn't make sense with him. No, God. But he is handsome as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but a personality. Oh. <laughs> I did like the story of the match though, because they redid the spot towards the end. But Trevor landed on his feet the second time because he learned from the first yeah. one. He can tell a story so he can. Trevor's an yeah. odd one because I've never Just had... that sentence there. <laughs> I've never had like much interaction with him, but back at the old promotion, I always found him a bit of an intimidating presence because he was so cool. Mm -hmm. Why can't he be like that on camera, you know? It's weird. Isn't that another thing, though? If you, make, if you get good at making others look good, then that's all I'll have you do. Oh, okay. It should be sandbagging. Chad Gable, eh? Mm. That's right. Yep. He, Case of the Chads. He deserves the world. Case of the Chads. <laughs> but yeah, this was, we've got three big matches here on the SmackDown. We've got the World Cup on Fox settled. Got Bailey saying Buffalo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything. Yeah. Hey. yeah. It was a good SmackDown. The action was good across the board as well. Absolutely was. Well done, Hunter. Apart oh. from Bray Wyatt. Oh, oh yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah. For, God, yeah, yeah. for Godness sakes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a Ben Potterism that I ran with Ben. <laughs> My mouth isn't moving with my brain today. Mm. It's one of those days. It's all about the heat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take it to the fridge. AW <laughs> Rampage. <laughs> Forgotten by Keith. Because oh. normally it's Keith who is. Yeah, yeah. Darby Allen beats up Nick Comorotto before having a match with Cole Carter. Yeah, what, he what, like took him out. What is Nick these days? Big he, bear. He walked in there. Yeah. I don't know he's been dressing like sort of like Tony D'Angelo if you want. Sort of that vibe. Yeah. But he did the full on Scott Hall this week with a toothpick. Did he? What is he? Hmm. And he's just reminding Tony Carney's there. <laughs> if anyone's been watching him, if he's been on like maybe Dark or Dark Elevation, can you explain this? Oh yeah. 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 Maybe he's had a change, a character change. What initiated yeah. the change from caveman to Suave. Suave uh, fellow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Suave fellow. <laughs> Final match with Cole Carter, which he wins. Later, he challenges Samoa Joe to a TNT title match on Dynamite. Boom. And Which turned out to be a terrifying match. Oh, I God. Was that was his reward for this, <laughs> Yeah. It? Um, yeah, it, little Carter's that lad. He's <laughs> almost like Carter. the... Little <laughs> He looks AEW, like he's 12. Yeah, the AEW I version... Swole. He's a small boy. A small 12-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sketch on a sketch I've been watching. Oh, my God. You, you know the... It's on... I think you should leave. It's judge the, judge the biggest toddler contest. And all these little kids walk out in, like, muscle suits. It's really uncomfortable. It's meant to be. Oh. It's on Netflix. It's freely available. It's not a dodgy thing. <laughs> it's just one sketch of many... Carry on, I've, I've said too much. If anyone it's watches it... How is Cole Carter on that comedy show? <laughs> Does he win? But it's called... That's how he got his contract. It's, yeah. called, it's called, I think... Tony Khan said, Khan said, sign that kid. Wow! It's called, I think you should leave, and it's, it is actually really good, but... Sorry, sorry. No, oh. Tony, it's fake bodies. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's that's quite what the sketch is like, actually. Oh, is it? Oh. One of them's like, that's not their real bodies. Like, no, they're wearing a, 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 I can't remember, a goose suit. He's wearing a goose suit. Why are you calling it a goose suit? It's an old circus term. It's really quite wrestling, actually. Okay. It's, I've made it sound weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, bloody hell, that's that I've got too much stuff on me. That's that sketch thing, right? Yeah. Thank you. Is that the, <laughs> yes. prank, the prank show sketch? Yes, from Statler or Waldorf, just if you didn't hear it on the, uh, camera, on the mic, said yes. So. <laughs> no, it is good. Thank you, pal. So anyway, back to... What the hell are we talking about? Uh, Carter. Cole, Cole Carter. Cole Carter. Oh, I think he's, God. he's at that Austin Theory level of guy where the, the commentator's like, wow, he's, he'll be so good, you know, when he gets better and this and that. And I'm looking at him going... Just a guy. Oh, He's... I had a sneaky plan this week. I was going to try oh, and on. compare Ricky Starks to Austin Theory to get under your skin. But <laughs> I just decided not to, so I've just told you now. But when we were going to talk, about his, back, Ross. When we were gonna talk about his promo, I was going to be like, similar, getting Austin Theory vibes from this boy. There's <laughs> <laughs> nanny, even as a joke. <laughs> Any anyway, thoughts on uh, Darby Allen versus a, a buff kid? Uh, Cole <laughs> Carter's got nice... Knee offense, right? He did oh, these knees okay. to Darby's the shiniest wizard, Littismus uh, dorsi, right? Mm. Right, oh, the well Littismus yeah. dorsi, and it looked very good indeed. Jim Ross, 
admitted he knew nothing about Cole Carter. None of us do. That is the lead announcer, though. They're a bit different to us. True. They just sit here and talk bollocks. That's the leader now. That's the storyteller. Incarnate. Mm. What we know, incarnate. <laughs> Car- yeah. Oh. What we <laughs> what we know about Cole Carter is used to be in Tony D'Angelo's gang and dressed as Sting. Yeah. Is that his, part of his gimmick now? No, not in AW. <laughs> but that's what we know about. <laughs> yeah. Dress still dresses as Sting, even if the, the thing. <laughs> Actually, it is part of his gimmick because didn't they say like thought you were sleeping with the fishes? Somebody did. That rings a bell. Yeah, and that, that was it. That was like the first time he showed up. So, yeah. yeah and also him getting no reaction at all when he showed up on Dynamite, apart from mild booze. It's like when T- like, it's him, it's him, and we're like, yeah, it's the like guy was on two point oh. What do we care? T- he's turned to Kennedy's hmm? like. <laughs> I love that bit. Oh, God. So yeah, good for him. Uh, backstage, Keith Lee's confronted by. <laughs> I was trying to think. I actually forgot what happened. The night reminded me. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm lining up a book. Yeah, here we go. In a second. Confronted by former friend. Are you ready? Are you ready? Shane Taylor. Who? I know him. What are you doing? I've here? heard of no, him. No, I've heard of him. Go on, go on. It's, it's his mate who I've never heard of. Oh, he accuses Keith of abandoning him and challenges him to a tag match for final battle. Keith hopes he can trust Swerve Strickland. Have I not said who the partner is? Right, it's J.D. Griffey, right? J.D. Griffey. Wait, was he there? No. no. <laughs> yeah, that's what <laughs> I mean. Went, I don't remember went, him. Me and my pal, who's not here, are going to batter me you. He basically gave that's you... That's the build-up for a pay-per-view. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A pay-per-view tag <laughs> match. He basically read a novel in 30 seconds. Like, a, mm. this massive story of something that happened six years ago between Keith... You abandoned me. ...and Shane Taylor, yeah. Yeah. We used to be friends. And yes, then, remember... <laughs> But yeah, no. Let's have a look at the video. Let's have a look at the video. Oh, never mind. Tony then. forgot the pay per view was this weekend. I'm yeah, sorry. he did. He's gone. Oh, damn it! Yep. The homework at the last. Put second. these dog collars in these presents. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll film the TV show. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's that big match there. All night long. <laughs> oh, I tell you, it's... that's what the songs about. <laughs> yes. I'm starting to think Keith Lee's an idiot though, because he can't. Yeah. He can't be trusting Sneaky Swerve. He can't. I can't trust him, but I have got a tag match, so he's, I'll just hope. It's just the bit where he's like, can I trust you? No! He's <laughs> told this story he's already. Around. He's smiling like that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it goes off, of course, with a face like that. <laughs> Indubitably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I can't wait to watch Ring of Honor. Blah, blah, blah. Are we going to uh, cover it next week? I wasn't going to plan on watching I'm gonna, like, We'll give a brief summary of stuff that Maybe, happens. Yeah, I'll, I'll write like, We're not going to come next week with our highlight of the night. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> What a wonderful idea, it's Ross. It's on after, uh, straight after the England-France match as well, so no one's going to be watching it. It's on. Wait, like, is NXT... Ring of Honor Final Battle starts early in America. It starts at like 9 over here. Yeah, it's 3. Was it 4 p.m. Eastern or something? Yeah, here. something like that. It's an afternoon show over there. Guess who will not be watching it live. Well, maybe if England lose... But if not, I'm out on the town. Come on. No, we should we should watch that. And if England lose, it's like the worst rated show in the history of alcoholic. <laughs> every, every match was a dud and only got a minute into it. Why didn't he bring on Jack Grealish? <laughs> <That's what laughs> Later, Juice Robinson also sets up a match for final battle. <laughs> Judging Samoa Don't Joe. Laugh at and I thought that. this was weird pacing and timing because he's like, Darby Allen's already said, here, you and me, Joe, Dynamite, the TV title. And then Juice Robinson, oh, also, I want you. Small Joe that, for final battle, which is after the Dynamite. Belt. He's double champion. Yeah, but oh, yeah. Oh, well, shut my belt. mouth. I actually, I actually, I yeah. actually forgot. Uh, yeah, you know what? Then I, I, I'm gonna shut up. What were you gonna say, Ross? I was gonna say because on Dynamite this week they just dropped it in the commentary. Going, Juice Robinson has now joined the company. He's now part of the ranks or something. He's yeah. going after one of Samoa Joe's belts. But it just feels like yeah, we've been building up Wardlow and Joe for weeks, and it just feels like they've been yeah, forgotten about. This is Ring this of is Honor. Ring of Honor. <laughs> make it clearer then. Yeah, do, because do make it it's all been about Joe and Wardlow, and all the belts have been included, haven't they? Sorry yeah. for hitting your paper there. Ah. Make it clearer though. I think he's just yeah. Whatever. Think, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, also, oh, isn't Juice Robinson like a bigger deal than to just be like, oh, by the way, like juices? Tell Tony Khan that. But he's a New Japan man, and Tony Khan loves that. Look, if you get, if you get, I don't know, a million toys. Frank, ladies and gentlemen, tonight at the club. Susie ringing to you, unscheduled, unplanned. Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Frank Sinatra That's singing tonight. Dead. Bloody hell! What's he singing? Uh, itty bitty, teeny weeny, <laughs> love the the meaning. Here's what this feels like. To so, if you get the greatest singer in the world, if you're singing a crap song, who cares? Oh wow! Is that a Mr. Miyagi line? <laughs> no, I made it up. Doesn't matter if you sing a. Oh, like that. Yeah, because I used my my good footballers the other week, and that's gone now. <laughs> It's a bit of a mess of a story. Mm. You Which one? 
<sighs> Narrow it down. Well, well, the, this, everything to do with the secondary titles. <laughs> this led Jack Atkins to believe the other day. He was like, I think Joe might lose both his belts this week. And I was like, you know what? That Obviously he didn't, because now we know what happened on Dynamite. But I was I was convinced as well, because I thought, why would they have set up these two matches so close together if that wasn't going to happen? Yeah, but, but, it but think, yeah, but we'll get into that later on. <laughs> uh, the acclaims say that there's only one team they want to defend the tag belts against next. FTR. Wow, and the crowd like, oh my God, they remembered. Yeah. Finally. Then the gun club interrupt and say that they're the best tag team in AEW. And then, of course, <laughs> Nino, Nino, <laughs> Nino. <laughs> Fireman Sam isn't there. So Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal interrupt and say they're the best tag team. They're not. They've had one match and they lost. FDR come out and shake hands, he acclaimed. And then, to prove that they are the best tag team in AW, Jarrett and Lethal beat Private Party. I think right now, at this point, Ross and Jack could beat Private Party pretty easily. Oh, oh yeah, sad, with my eyes it? closed, yeah. yeah. They lose all the time. But can I get something straight? Are we are we using a week's build for FTR, right, versus the acclaimed? Let me just skip ahead. Yes. A week's build, right, to build to... <laughs> The acclaimed versus the ass Bahoys and or Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. I think so. We're sacrificing yeah. Yeah. what should be on the card at Revolution after a proper build for something that shouldn't be. Is that what we've done here? Now, this is one of these things, <laughs> Ross, where people go, yeah, but FTR have been quite vocal whenever they're asked anything about AEW or anything like that. So it's one of these, are they saying that because they're not you yeah. know, being treated like the best They're acting in the world they are. Punk. Or are AEW? <laughs> yes, they make that. Right. CM Punk was all right with us. <laughs> CM Punk never ducked out of the, the rubber match. Just saying. Are they in the, like, the the rest of the foundation position when the screw job happened? Are they the, are they the ones left over? <laughs> it's the Jim yeah. Nine Dart, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so or are they getting this weird push or not being pushed as the best, best, uh, best I think, because they I won't shut they up? They've got a big feature match, obviously, on Dynamite, but... But that was an advert for the pay-per-view. For the final battle, yeah. yeah it wasn't actually yeah. an advert for the tag team match itself. It was the it? penultimate battle. It also <laughs> felt a bit like, and it was like, I love the match, and we'll yeah. talk about it, but it also did feel like, oh, we do need to tie up this loose end, which is that FTR have a title shot that's yeah, happened get for this... months now. Like... Oh, this slight issue about one of the biggest tag teams they have in the company being yeah. the next in line for the mm-hmm. tag title shot. Just not hard. Anyway. Bizarre. As, as a private party, though, I think it's time they went and looked for someone else because they're too good to be in this role that they are now. They could... Have a great time in NXT 2.0. I can't believe I'm saying it. I can't believe it. Yeah, I can see them doing well. Hey, imagine the, the foursome of the Cowie Girls in Private Park. <laughs> Oh. Don't say the word foursome. The awesome, <laughs> the awesome foursome. Awesome foursome, oh, that's right. right. right, right. <laughs> all night long. <laughs> hey, they would be going all night long. Oh, In a God. different way to Lionel, though. Yeah, yeah. More that's like right. Stella Black and her kids. <laughs> there we go. But, mm, Dancing away. Making it worse Narcotics somehow. everywhere. Oh. Um, Jeff Jarrett, though, still looks fantastic. Yeah. I think. The way he was wrestling in that match. Still got the best punch. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then, yeah, Mark Quinn did a couple of things to show how good they are. But then that was it. The stroke and the lethal injection is one move. It, it's a bit <laughs> odd, isn't it? Because you think, wait, the stroke got Jarrett five WWE World titles. And uh, Jay now, now it kills and, people. Yeah, and now Jay Lethal's finisher, well, killed Ring of Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the same, is it? Uh, uh, Soraya is interviewed by Renee Paquette. Soraya. Soraya. I swear, I, in my head, I'm like, I'll say it right this time. I'll say it wrong every time. Remember, she's a ray of sunshine, Matthew. Mm. That's just not true. Soraya sunshine. And <laughs> says... <laughs> I've seen a Twitter and says oh. it was amazing the wrestling in her full gear, but now she has her eye on the AEW women's title. Ooh. Good for you, but win a few matches first, I would say. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> we think you want Jeff Jarrett. Hey, she's one and oh. I do have to say <laughs> I do have to say Soraya was better than I was worried she was going to be in yeah. a return match. She can actually still... Re- I forgot because of all of... Did that sound like I said a swear word? I always worry when I say that word that in my accent it sounds like I've said the F-bomb. Just yeah, to be right. safe, Joel, make a timestamp. Yeah, just in saying. case I say that. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, <Rhea. laughs> um, I think I, I kind of, all the stuff that happened with her and everything, you remember like, oh, no, she's actually really good. Like, she's good in the ring. She's a good wrestler. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it would be a gift from God if she'd had a really, really good match after how many years? So, so five. Five, was a good, five was years really good away. Match. I mean, that's what it I'm saying. Like, oh, it's right, like yeah, people yeah, going, yeah. I wanted five awesome. stars. It's like, why? Yeah. That was like, good enough. It was never going to happen. Athena beats Danny Moe. Moe. 
and absolutely picks <laughs> up. <laughs> what? What was that? The lowest dub. Oh, right. Uh. Absolutely kicks off afterwards and beats her up some more. I like Athena beating up people. She's a nasty woman now. Athena's forearms could break down a wall. Break the wall, sir? Name any wall you want, Matthew. Athena's Ooh. forearms would break the down. wall. It, even from him. Dub C to no. his, don't be silly, Ross. Of course it would. It is massive. Prime. He would. Jimmy yeah, Truth. Athena would break his jaw. Hadrian's yeah. wall. I'd pay to see that. Hmm? Hadrian's wall. It's only about that. Yeah, big. Places, yeah. Because how much force would you need to break Hadrian's wall? Although the moss might bind it together now, mm. like glue. Uh, yeah. Uh, how does moss we're, work? We're thinking ahead. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Moss is keeping together. Sounds <laughs> madcap. That. The biker wall. No, we need that. Oh, I don't think Athena would survive there. No, it's a scary no, place. No, scary place, isn't it? No offence to anyone who lives in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> no, no offence, you scary people. <laughs> At least Aubrey didn't get hit again. Yeah. She, got, she avoided it this week. Well and, done, Aubrey. Because that would have meant if Athena had done that for the second week in a row, whatever it would have been, second time in two weeks, mm. whatever it would have been, she would have got herself suspended again and then more television time than she would have had when she was not suspended. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> hang was, on. Speaking of suspensions, mm. I was going to bring this up later on, but it's reminded me, one trope that I'm a little bit sick of now in AW is when they go backstage and go, no touching between these, no contact now. I don't, I don't care. Just do your promo. <laughs> do you know, does no one else been getting a bit my, sick? No, my, my favorite trope is whenever someone's like, okay, and now we go live, just talk to, to Ross about whatever he's got coming up. Ross, how you doing? And I'm then Ross, like, and then Jack, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, they did a good one. Saraya, second. Saraya did Brent that. Baker, yeah. A second yeah. into it. Brett Baker was like, oh, she'll probably come along in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Every single time. All right, great. Uh, the main event is a lumberjack match for the All-Atlantic title between Orange Cassidy and QT Marshall. So yeah. you get his name right. Uh, and the setup, obviously, big bad Dan Housen is dressed as a lumberjack. Oh, yes. A long lumberjack, what do you, what do you call it? Poncho? Never seen anything like it before in my life. Yeah. yeah. It looked comfy. Yeah, it looked mm. lovely. Mm. Well, comfy, crack, Kingston. Crack, <laughs> comfy Kingston. Comfy <laughs> Kingston. Wow. Like crackling fire. Sat ah. there in your lumberjack poncho. It should have set up, start a fire in the arena, maybe not, but like... Start pushing the heels in yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You know who was at ringside for this match? I was about to say, obviously, match, whatever, who cares? Yes, we do know who's at ringside. Um, Adway Mid South great and independent legend Spider Nate Webb, for one thing. I thought I might get a pop out of Jack. Do you not see him? No. You got name dropped on commentary. Spider Nate Webb. Do you know how, Oh, um, did this we, we this Teenage Dirtbag entrance? No? Oh, for some reason, I thought you might know him. I think this week. I think Big Sap tooted it out, didn't he? Yeah. Big Sean or Sap. Yeah, because he had actual weakness play when he did GC. Anyway, I'm, I'm, really? I'm boring people That's now. Not I'm referencing and that. also, also uh, conspicuous by his inclusion was Big Kevin Thorne. Kevin Thorne, <laughs> the second best WWE vampire. This is probably had. why I didn't know much about that. I was too distracted by Kevin Thorne being there. Kevin Thorne. And the other crappy storylines that were going on at ringside, which completely distracted from the match inside the ring. Oh, you mean <laughs> Ethan Page and Matt Hardy? Yes. A page owns Hardy and the private party. Therefore, they must do what he says. But they don't want to, but they do. Yeah, so great stuff there. Uh, Kip Sabian almost cost Cassie the match. He's back! He's poisoning everyone. Bizarre! Mm. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so they went, all right, William, oh. Re <laughs> William Regal's left. We need another camp nutty homoerotic Brit. Kip Sabian, get out your box. Welcome and to my lair. Yeah. <laughs> He's so, amazing, man. Yes. Great. So he showed up and said, zap. <laughs> I just imagine him driving off on a carriage every time. Yeah. Um, After he's delivered a crushing diss to the hero. Driving away on Brum. Going, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it, it was... It, how crap is Kip Sabian? When no, he no, almost... No. He interferes in the match, hits his opponent, and then Cassie just gets up and does the <laughs> Wins anyway. I mean, yeah, he's booked crap, yes. Yeah. He, he and Kip bro. fight the back while all the Lumber Jacks have a big old brawl. Then the House of Black appear and batter everyone. And they just get cheered if they're battering good guys or bad guys because, yay, Can House Dawn of Black. take that? Yeah, yeah, that was good. It looked like they were going to recruit Ortiz because Malachi Black was like, whoa, whoa, don't hit him. But then Ortiz rolled to the outside and Malachi Black kicked him. So I don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds great. <laughs> there's a lot. There's... He went, no, we need Spider Nate Webb. <laughs> the crowd went, Nate, Nate, Rampage Nate. is like, lots of stuff goes on. It's hard to... It, it, it takes longer to talk about this than a pay-per-view. Yeah. I yeah. don't know what to make of the match, though. It was, it, was, it was all about the outside stuff rather than the actual match itself. Yeah. I was going to say, neither did the audience, uh, the lowest rated uh, AW Rampage episode. Yep. Oh, really? Uh, mm. It's not all been good. Times. Has it ever been good? 
Rampage. Yeah. Well, when they CM when, when he said, back. yeah, I'm going to make this a big deal because CM Punk obviously made his debut on AW Rampage and obviously that... So obviously the easiest solution is to have CM Punk make his debut every week and it'll be all right. Yeah. But then he's realized, hang on, it's really hard doing a wrestling show when you're barely in control of everything. Um, and people have just gone, wait, this, this is just... A ver- Can you even call it a B show? Yes. I mean, it is technically, but it's... <laughs> I mean, at the start, it was a big leap between the A and the B. It was an accoutrement, wasn't it? At the start, mm. like a, the thing that couldn't happen on Dynamite was built to yeah. on Dynamite yeah, yeah, and then yeah. happened there. I don't know what it is. Uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, if they turn it into Ring of Honor Rampage, it'd be great. Yeah. Because then we won't watch it. Yeah. WWE Raw. WWE fascination with the mid 2000s poker boom continues. Oh, you love talking about this, don't you? Oh. That wasn't a, like a pun. I'm just, yeah, why yeah. did they. The poker was big in 2004. Well, I mean, it yeah. still is, but I know, you know but there's that drama. At this... the time when it was telly and right, they had the right, camera right. where you'd see the cards under the table. And... Was it only a few months ago? It was a big hoo ha about the woman she won. Yeah, yeah. You ever see that? Yeah. But they were like, did you do something? So I was like, no, she just called that guy's bluff and the guy just could, literally his brain couldn't take it. So it's like, she cheated, she cheated. Yeah, it's like, it no, weird. she didn't. It sounds like the episode of Golden Balls, what you're describing there. Oh, lovely. Where the lady steals it all from the, the fella. Yeah. Oh, but that's within the rules of the game. Uh, this was. Oh, this was out What well, they were accusing her of was out, but I don't think she cheated. Yeah. Anyway. Before the show, we see the bloodline beat down Elias backstage, leaving Riddle without a friend. I think he's used to that, isn't he? Yeah. Huh? Why would he get out the bus? I'll to ask, to, to ask what the noise was. <laughs> he came out and went, what's all this noise? Look out the window. And they batted him. <laughs> <laughs> Look out the window. Yeah. Buses have windows. Yeah. Sammy's a certified usologist. Yep. Yes. So there's a new t-shirt coming. He can decide what is Usi and what is not. Mm. Again, it's one of these weird things. I don't know, like Bischoff would obviously talk and talk and talk and say like how the NWO is responsible for making cool heels, and obviously making actual proper heels uh, almost a dead thing at this point. Like, you have to get pop still. And it's funny seeing Sami Zayn be the most over dude in the uh, the bloodline right now, but he's just been a complete nerd. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's that, That's why people are liking it, but yeah, booing the others. It's Maybe he's, just, he's an uncool the heel, uncool and people are loving it. Yeah, that's the new like, thing. on paper, you're like, what? But it does work so well. You need the nerd world order yeah. to come and be. Right. Yeah. Riddle... Talking about, well, you beat up my, my friend and everything. And yeah, and then Sammy's just doing this baby face promo and getting cheered. You're like, but it is working really well. And then he reveals my partner's going to be Kevin Owens. Makes more sense from a storyline perspective, but Elias has been bodied. <laughs> is that how they say it? <laughs> yeah. No cap. I'm doing a Sammy Zane thing. Well done. Yeah. Um, yeah. How would you, uh, what, I mean, from the Ezekiel mess to this, yeah. it's not, not been a good year for Elias, has it? I Maybe think. he's been the worst booked guy of the year. Maybe. Maybe. And Kevin Owens is always there to follow him around. <laughs> Just realise that. Well, that's a nice bit of synergy as well. Yeah, that's true. Liar! Yeah. Also, I can see why the Bloodline were uh, all amped up and why they beat up Elias when he came around the corner because Matt Riddle nearly ran them over. They went, whoa! Man. He had it coming. The Usos win, and then Solo Sokoa brutally beats down Riddle afterwards. Absolutely were, destroys what, him, Like, man. by Riddle, I'm by Elias. I guess this is setting up, like, a big match between Riddle and Solo. That's the only thing I can think of. I reckon they're waiting until Randy's back. Yeah. Because Riddle's, uh, Riddle's been spinning his bongos, hasn't he, for the longest yeah. time. Yes, he has. Hit yeah. my bong, bro. Uh, I realise, hang on, he's only over with Randy. All right, then. Yeah. Get hey him on Randy. TV until Randy comes back. Hey, Randy. He's a bit like Ricky Starks. I know, no, I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> calm down. Calm down. No, no, I'll get him. I'll I get did him. like the Probably. finish that match with the secret tag from Jimmy Uso. That was very good. Mm. But apart from that, Owens was good. Riddle took a beating. Nice back and forth thing. It was a lot of wrestling this week's role, which I quite enjoyed. Mm. More than normal, I would say. Yeah, Apart from so. what we're going to speak about next. Ah. JBL <laughs> is hosting a poker game backstage. This, was, this tied the whole episode together, this poker Certainly game. did. Which Gargano and Loomis join with the, and he goes, hey, hey, hey. Like, listen up. Was it like, hey, I don't know if they get any TV in Crystal Lake, Jason, but uh, <laughs> you need money to join here and you just join. So. Oh my God, I was going to... Oh was yeah, bloody hell. The money that the was, thing. ow, he hit me. Am I step one? <laughs> for all your people. Jack just punches Matthew for no reason. Um, and he goes, ah, oh, well, obviously JBL paying as much attention to Raw as everybody else is doing because no, that, that money I got from the Miz, that's the big bag of money. And then mm. JBL goes, well, come on in and say he's no, he a trick. come on in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I thought JBL was fantastic all the way through the second. It's probably well, the best thing he's done since he's come back, I which isn't saying much. Exasperated but. JBL when it started going off the rails. Yeah. Yeah. The little quips he was making, like he's like, "Oh, you two there? Oh no, I mean you one and a half." When he's speaking to Johnny and Dexter, stuff like that. Yeah. I, I, it carries on later yeah. on. In the, yeah. More later. Yes. Becky Lynch cuts a promo on Bailey, another one uh, where she's in the crowd, but gives her credit for caring. 
caring, for carrying Sorry, grief carrying. during lockdown. Ah, oh, she cared. Uh, Bailey calls Becky selfish in response. When you Rhea look Ripley, in the mirror, you only see yourself, which is true of everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Rhea Ripley arrives and has a big stare down with Becky before taking part in a triple threat with Bailey and Asuka, which Bailey wins. We have the. We had two triple threats. Obviously, this is one of them. Yes. And then be another one later on. And the winner of those two go and wrestle each other. The number one week. contenders, yeah. yeah. Yes, that's right. I thought Becky sounded pissed as a fart at the start of the show. And I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> she's, come, she's walking down the stairs going, hey, hey, hey. Oh, I thought it was fantastic. I yeah. thought it was fantastic as a one-off. But I am worried that they're making Becky into, oh, I'm a wacky baby face, <laughs> which never works. But, ah. but if anyone can not fall into yeah. that trap, it's cool, cool Becky Lynch. I would disagree because her doing that, it's the crowd see it and they pop even louder. It is. Yeah, she is a big star. Because I think there's that way. Hang on. Belair got a bigger pop than her and she's making a big comeback. Hey, Becky in the crowd. You ready for Talk some the audience. analysis that is worth the click alone, right? Oh, here we go. Becky is CM Punk. Bailey is either Eddie Kingston or Hangman Page or anyone else who called CM Punk a Warning dick Warning us. Yeah. Whoa. You think Becky's going to turn? Maybe. Mm. No, not turn, but you know what I mean. Ba- ba- Bailey's the heel, but she's saying things about the baby face that is heelish. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Mm. Parallels in the wrestling world. Or at least <laughs> at least it's one of those ones where you... Croutons, croutons. You know, you can understand the heel's point of view. Yeah. It's like one of them, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. The stare down, though. Have we got that bit yet? The stare yeah, down? the big yeah, stare down. Big oh, stare. Yeah. That was second in my move of the week. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's not really a move. You've seen the first time they did... I think it's the first time someone's the correct as they can when it was uh, Slaughter and Sheik doing it in like 84 when Iron Sheik just beats some jobber in the ring and he's taking a long time like to pose and go, he ran number one and all the other stuff you do. And then eventually, then Heel Sanzola comes out for his match and then he's like, all right, yeah, whatever. And then Cheeky finally gets the hint. But the aisle way is really close for some reason that the arena are at. So like, he's like, no, you move. No, you move. No, you move. No, you're in the crowd. Like, <laughs> Get him, Slaughter. I mean, we don't like you, but at least you're not the Iron Sheik and all that. And that's how Slaughter turned face. He's like, that's right. I'm not going to put up with that. I'm like, yeah, get him. We love you now. But they can't do that now because obviously these giant arenas, there's actually plenty yeah. of space for them to get around. But still, it's a good visual when they're this close going, you know. Especially when Rhea you, moves as slow. You, you dancing? Yeah. You asking? Yeah. Rhea's pacing is on point, yeah. on fleek. There was another really good stare on this week between you Jordan good. Henderson and Jude Bellingham. That's the first goal against Senegal. They <laughs> looked like they wanted to fight each other. It was weird. They like wanted to do something else to each other. Yeah, yeah, it was intense. It was that romantic. That was weird. Yeah. <laughs> it was strange. It was nice, though, in a way. They're colleagues at work, yeah. essentially. <laughs> yes! And he's ran up to one head first, looking in his eyes like that, looking like he's going to even... Kiss him or nut him. It's like two. if you made a really good joke on the raw, on the review with Tom on the SmackDown Classic review, and he went, "Yes, <laughs> that's a class joke." <laughs> and then you hugged. What do you mean if that happened? When that happened? Thank you. Yeah. Every week. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, I'm joking, man. Um, yeah, the match was pretty decent. Um, yeah. You can see the crowd deflate though when Bailey won, but it was like, uh, I guess so it was tele- to. telegraph yeah. though, wasn't it, with yeah. the promo before? But it's all about Rhea for me. It's how slow she goes, and that's not a criticism. Just sets her apart. Mm. What's that thing in Goodfellas? He goes, yeah. Um, I forget the name of the character, but said he didn't move uh, quick because he didn't need to. Mm. I can't use in cocaine like, bear. Well older. What's that about? Weird. And then, Seth Rollins, <laughs> speaking of which, announces that next week he'll face big Bobby Lashley in a one contenders match for the US title. Lashley interrupts and Seth says he's jealous of Brock Lesnar. Why is that, Bobby? Is he because he's better than you? Is he because he's won more MMA matches? It's because he's bigger than you and all this. <laughs> they brawl, then Lashley accidentally spears Petey Williams. What are you doing here? Who comes back and hits him with the sick Canadian destroyer. Oh, just, I just wanted that to happen. <laughs> Thank you. Adam Pierce shouts at Lashley backstage later on the night. And uh, so if you do it again, I'll have to punish you. It's a nice bit there because uh, Lashley's like, Oh, you're serious? <laughs> yeah. The guy in the ring who got in the action got hit, and now I'm getting told off. He goes, Yeah, he goes, All right. Do you, do you tell the guy who gets in the line pit? He's at fault, oh. but he gets bit. Piers was, was out of nice order there. Like Piers was out of order there. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. It was a clear mistake. Yeah. Mm. You can't control accidents happening, can you? No. Thankfully I for my video so. series, you can't. <laughs> was it Tom who suggested this might get Bron Breger onto the main roster? Because he hit his family friend, Petey Williams, because he was Scott Steiner's sidekick. Wow. And it was several, Bloody several hell. tenuous things. I was going to say, <laughs> what, and then Kevin Bacon shows up as well. <laughs> wow. I thought Seth was a large heel in this segment. Why not? Well, nah, they, he's a been a heel, heel to a guy who's been a heel no, to him. No, Bobby's a face. 
No, Bobby's not a face. Nah, no, like, uh, not since he beat down Brock Lesnar. He gets loud in Saudi cheers. Arabia. I'm using Matthew's logic. Oh, yes. sorry, he gets loud sorry, cheers. right eye. He's a face. Uh, no, Lash has been see, a pain in the back. It doesn't make sense, does it? Lash has been a pain I've in the back. I've been waiting backside. weeks to drop this on you. Weeks. <laughs> I'm going to retain myself this way. <laughs> but Rollins deserved the beating he was going to get before he didn't. Lash has been sticking his beak in, <laughs> messing things up. He's the reason why Rollins is no longer the US champion. Mm. And so he's going to be a dick. Oh, you're going to be a dick to me? I'll, I'll be a dick to you. Like slaughter and cheek. Mm. Twice that's been brought up on one episode of Raw. Let's make it three, shall we? I hope Rollins never styles his hair in the way he did this week, though. It's like Sami Zayn, basically, like smeared down and combed. and Not a good look for me, that, Jeff. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Seth Rollins on the podcast. It was just an extra uh, look for Seth Rollins. Yes, it it needs to be more poofy. Yeah, Yeah. nice and volume, some body. Yes, because he's worth it. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Austin Theory is confronted by Mustafa Ali and grants him one last shot at the US title that later on because at JBL's poker game Baron Corbin accuses Dexter Loomis of cheating so Loomis brandishes an axe to calm him down <laughs> obviously given to him by Kevin Thorne Look yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, everyone cools down and goes okay okay um, Akira Tozawa accuses Don Mysterio of cheating which leads to a match later on Don with a good quote here you you're saying? almost as short as my deadbeat dad <laughs> the way he says it, it's it like, great, he it? Didn't, literally doesn't have to try and he just gets booed mercilessly yeah Dom wins, but the Street Profits chase the Judgment Day away afterwards. That's nice of them. Um, Big win for Dom. Big singles win for Dom. Yeah. Wow. He's so crap, and I love him. He's not crap. No, but he's supposed to be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What am I doing here? Corey, during this match, he fancies Dom, but it's a very good thing. Saying that Dom has the facial structure, meaning he can have a mullet, which other people just don't have, the facial structure to have a mullet. That's a good point, I thought actually. I was very good what, analysis there. What a justification. <laughs> very good analysis there of facial structure. I don't know if he does. Dom's got quite a round face. This is like a plate, isn't it? With a mullet on top. <laughs> Whereas when Eddie had it, more of a chiseled face. Mm. Well, that's why, don't you? If he is a heel, you want to have an unsuitable haircut. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That is true. Look, Greg Valentine. Looks like Seth Rollins. Yeah. yeah. God. <laughs> they make it look so easy. Actually, a lot goes into wrestling. Why did I go for Greg Valentine? I feel bad. I've just Greg shot Valentine. on Greg Valentine. He had lovely hair, him. He but did. it, didn't, it didn't fit his character. He oh, shouldn't have lovely hair. So bouncy. <laughs> Full of life. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Unlike Greg. Is that opposite to him? I mean, that's just his life is in the hair. Yeah, yeah, maybe. It's when you put all your stats into one thing in a game. Hair. <laughs> Hair, 10. Agility, zero. Anyway. Smell, lovely. I remember you said Bind that. Find them in the queue at, uh, what, what was that thing we went to? In WrestleCon. Wrestle, oh, um, Starcade. Starcade. Starcast. Oh, that. Starcast. Oh. Starcast. Starcade 88, I was there. <laughs> I don't know, oh, that little thing we went to. Oh, oh Starcast. Me and, and Sam, Caesar's Palace. Me and Sam got big timed by that bloke who had that one match with Bret Hart. We asked him for an interview and he said no. Which guy? Tom. What? Tom. Tom McGee. Tom McGee. Oh. <laughs> we were like, can we have an interview? And he was like, you, I'm going to have to ask Conrad or whatever. And we were like, we're packing up. Like, everyone's moving the tables. I'm like, come <laughs> on, quick. He said, no. Tom McGee. That one guy. I did, I'm sorry. I feel bad now. So maybe, you're big league in him. Maybe like I'm that. holding a bit of resentment yeah, back. Yeah, bless you. Who did he ever beat there? Brett. Well, not Brett. <laughs> Wait, did Brett? Oh, no, he did no, Brett. Yeah, he beat Brett. Yeah, that was the entire point of the thing. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Theory beats Ali via DQ after being attacked by Dov Sickler. Now, I like this, because this is just a throwaway match for Raw, give Mustafa Ali something to do, but they still have the time to have Mustafa Ali and also um, Corey on commentary help this and go, well, theory, you get shot after shot for the US title because you get handed everything, but I've had to prove myself every time I go out there that I am an American, so I want to win the US title rather than any other title to prove that I do belong here, that was- because all I want to do is fit in here. And I went... Bloody hell, this is a lot for a one, one-off yeah, match on Raw. It was Kev as well, Big Kev Patrick, finally bringing the home the bacon, so to speak. Yes, it was Kev who did it. He was, he was like saying, despite being born in America and putting his body on the line in the police force, people do, still right. don't credit with, with him being as American enough, yep. is what he said. Um, which is, I thought was good storytelling. So what's Dolph Ziggler playing at? Yes, yeah, so then Dolph Ziggler, <laughs> Ali looked like he might, wait, I might actually win this, and Dolph Ziggler shows up. Their, their feud <laughs> ended weeks ago, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. Theory and Ziggler. Yeah. Yeah. He heard us talking about Greg Valentine's hair and goes, I've got that. <laughs> Ali confronts Ziggler afterwards before Theory throws him out the ring and hits Dolph with A-Town down. Uh, yeah, it was a really good match, apart from like that one terrifying spot where Ali was oh. going for a Frankenstein and winning and Theory was going for something else. There was a news update from, I think, Fightful who said yeah. both people were fine and they were nice to each other backstage. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> unlike that Roman of, Reigns yeah. and Kevin yeah. Owens. <laughs> Chris Jericho was there to smooth things yeah. around. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Chris. 
Miz tries to join the poker tournament, but doesn't have enough money for the buy-in. Do you notice his suit as well? Was Noticeably works? cheaper looking mm. than normal. Oh, it's the little things from Mike. Great. I thought Big it was, Mike. I thought it was funny seeing JBL and Miz just hanging out like the veterans and stuff and going, God, it wasn't that long since like Miz had to replace all the Benoit stories <laughs> of him growing up for his storyline with JBL. <laughs> and now it's like, hey, we're, the, we're built from the same cloth, you and me. And, JBL uh, would never say that about me. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. And, so was uh, he just going around saying about the chicken thing? Just putting They JBL said, oh, the one time J- JBL put... <laughs> blah, blah, I, 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 that's it, I yeah. ate chicken over JBL's bag and then <laughs> turned that on the on-screen thing, but obviously changed it around a bit just to, you know... And that was nice. There's like, oh yeah, yeah. Um, you need money. All you need is this much money. I didn't realize you play, you play poker. Yeah, I've only got a, um, um, a not liquid cat. Yeah, you know what the crypto market's like. Uh, you have this Rolex though, and he goes, you know it's fake, right? JBL was good on this. You know what, Ms. Mr. Chance go? You think it's fake? Slap. <laughs> <laughs> it's an open-handed slap. Fake about that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so Ms. is poor. Ha ha. Uh, and then. AJ Styles catches Baron Corbin cheating because all the cards just fall out of his sleeve. He had five crap. aces or something, yeah. <laughs> and they storm off to have a match. And because obviously JBL is, hey, hey, no fighting in the war room. Yes. Stop it. Gargano says this means Loomis wins as the last man in the tournament because everyone else has bloody left. And then just takes all the money. Yeah. And then I don't know if I mentioned <laughs> it. I think I left it off actually, but then they celebrate with Candice later on. And oh, she, yes. She's like in the middle of a serious interview and then she's like, oh, actually. Sorry, we've just won loads of money. Yeah. Nice of Loomis to, to share it with his parents-in-law. Yeah. That's lovely. That's the way. That is the way. Um, so AJ <laughs> teams up. Oh, sorry. Indy Hartwell. Yep. Gargano, Candice. Yep. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky Starks. Nearly there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> AJ teams up the OC to face Corbin and the Alpha Academy, and the good guys win. Mm. Okay, crowd were really hot for this. Yeah. JBL was good on commentary again. Just how he was putting over Otis and Gable. Yeah. A lot was nice to hear. Um, I thought the match chugged along a bit for ages, even though the crowd were into it, but then the bombs, they started dropping, yep. and it was a good move fest. Mm-hmm. Up up the move fest. Up the move fest. It was a shame to see Gable taking the fall again. Alvar Economy deserves it so much more. Yeah, he loses every week. Yeah. Most, most, most weeks. Can we week. wrestle you every week? The other wrestlers chant. Adam. Yes, they do. Yeah. Ooch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa Bliss wins a triple threat main event match against Becky Lynch and Nikki Cross. After damage, Katal interfere and attack Becky. This means Bliss will face Bailey in the number one contenders match for Belair's title next week. Gotta hope something happens, with Alexa Bliss. Well, when she was warming up for this match, yeah, there was a little flicker in the yep. background of Bray Wyatt's mm-hmm. logo. So that's another six weeks of that happening. I reckon. She, no, I reckon she'll win. <laughs> Please let it happen. I reckon she'll win that number one contenders match. And even focus on the fact maybe it's just been whilst I've seen her entrance, but they had the bloody um, doll. Mm, yeah, Lily. Um, yeah. Ooh, yeah, Lily. Lily. Yeah. Lily, what, Lily. The thing we forgot to mention about the uh, the Candice interview was Nikki Cross was stalking her in the background of hers. Oh. It's all about the backgrounds of Triple H, isn't it? Oh. Trippy man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I've said that. Trippy man. <laughs> watch one Hitchcock film. He's a lurker, so he is. Um, Bliss also mimicked uh, going for Sister Abigail in this match, which mm. is very interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting. That's so interesting. I love the nuance. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. How yeah, to say that. It was that just was a, it. lots yeah. of wrestling, cool. very good back and forth. Dakota and Neo getting involved makes sense with Bailey being a chicken poo. Gave and them a good reason to have Bliss win over people she should not really be beating that easily and stuff. I would mm-hmm. say she wants none of that. You know what? Mm. Yeah, jelly. I think it is. I don't think you're ready. No, you're not ready uh, for the jelly. Ready are for you? this jelly, uh, booty delicious body, uh, so booty delicious. Sorry, oozy delicious. Oozy delicious. Yeah. Hey, there's an ending for you. Um, you. But I think it's surely got to be in this match next week where Wyatt does something to Bliss and or maybe helps Bliss win. Yeah. Stop making everything I said to No, no, no. It's it's just, <laughs> it's the hilarity of hopefully next week, Wyatt will do something. <laughs> Who's, she a faced, who it. won the other triple threat? It was in the Bailey. other match of the night, Bailey. Yeah. Oh, I think Bliss has got to win that. Bailey's already had like two shots at Bianca. Yeah. 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 The Fiend is going to help her win and then Royal Rumble will be spooky. Mm. Yes. Auntie Howdy, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. NXT, and instead of a wacky thing, it's just a picture of Apollo, <laughs> Apollo with fish. Yeah, I just put in a little. <laughs> I was enthralled. <laughs> I couldn't think of a thing. I can't wait to get to it. To top that, yeah. Axiom wins a triple threat match against Come boo, Tuesday boo. and Andre Chase. <laughs> he was my third favorite to win this match. Mm-hmm. To enter the Iron Survivor Challenge match. 
He pins Cum after Chase decides to roll straight out of the ring what rather the... than make a cover. <laughs> what the hell was that? What was it? Yeah. Do you see that? He did a big crossbody. He nailed land... it as well. Yeah, yeah. Way. And then landed not even near the halfway in the middle of the ring he landed and then went like did four rolls to get out of the ring. I reckon oh. it's so delightful Hudson can rub it in saying my precision mm. would have meant I would have landed <laughs> that and stayed in the ring at the same time. <laughs> True. Yeah. Because that, that was is, that is what's going to happen. Yeah. Like Taz, like not not for nothing. But <laughs> that wouldn't have happened to me. I digress. Uh, there was a nice structure to the match with the two smaller genius men. <laughs> genius men, obviously <laughs> Chase U leader and genius of mathematics and superhero gotcha. Axiom, going after the bigger man called Cum together, which was good. Andre taking it to Cum was spine tingling. I've written down. <sighs> it was taking it to the big man like there was no tomorrow. Yep. And as you say, it was just about the finish. Why did he roll out the ring? What was he doing? Was it, is there a gimmick now? Is Harry Potter coming to NXT? Is there a man in an invisibility cloak in the ring pushing people out? <laughs> I thought you meant is <laughs> Alan Rickman in the crowd muttering his oh, right, right. counter Can't stop rolling. Uh, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll draw. <laughs> Potter. Alan Rickman, what are you doing against him? He goes, no, I was countering it. Who's doing the other one? Dulls there was one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, this was a lovely hot match. NXT 2.0 does this very well. They start off really, really hot, and it helps that they've got the plants. I mean, the devoted fans here all wearing their Chase U stuff. How dare uh, you? They're well, real things. But look, they're making loads of noise, so I appreciate that. But the only thing is about these matches, they do tend to burn the crowd out the rest of the night. When I watch NXT, I don't watch it for the rest. I want it. I want the storyline and the backstage intrigue. That's what I'm waiting for. Well, you're spoiled for choice for this oh, one. Oh, yeah, true. In the trainer's room, Julius Creed is cleared to compete, but then Ivy Nile says, hey, check his wrist. You thought ribs here. Ribs. Ivy, Ivy what the hell? was his wrist. I thought he said wrist. Oh, his arm up. Oh. No, it's wrist, r- wrist, wrist first. No, oh. ribs second. His ribs are what, what hurt. Did the, what his the wrist was fine. His what wrist did the ribs, fine. but his ribs hurt. That way, yeah. She went, wait a minute. There's a physio that didn't check the ribs. Yeah, because his wrist was... It's crap, isn't it? His, his wrist man. was sore, so then she... CM Punk was right. Yeah. <laughs> Ivy Nile gets a physio to check his ribs and his wrist and all the other bits of him, and he's ruled out of action again. And they're like, Ivy Nile, why did you do that? What the hell, Ivy? Says mm. Brutus. What and, the hell? And she's like, no, I'm protecting you, you idiot. That's what they're there for. Yeah, but... Cracks in the mind. Whose side are we on? Well, again, the the time might ever, like, (laughs) harmonious. They were for about a month. Where's Roddy? (laughs) It's not her fault. She's like, no, you're beat up. I'm a a physical fitness person. Mm. You are are neither physical nor fit right now. Let him get out there, for goodness sake. Let him take down (laughs) Sanger and Veer. Let him do it. You should tell the physio, yeah, but check the size of the dog in him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> love that whenever she showed people on Twitter it's like the x-ray this is the dog I'm sorry uh, Apollo Crews coast fishing with Bron oh, Breaker oh bollocks I will now pass this over to Ross <laughs> the quote from Apollo so we had last week where or was it the week before where Bron was speaking about his variable bait that yeah. was two, two weeks, weeks ago, ago. It was just him, and then, then the diner yeah. Yeah. he needs more active bait because it's winter time and they're less whatever this week we had Apollo who sat in a boat with Bron Breaker and it's, he says the following oh Bron this boat is fantastic it cuts through the water with great precision the acceleration is great with these two engines it's <laughs> <Yeah>. wonderful <laughs> This is the NXT title feud, everybody. <laughs> this is Bron Breaker, who is a Steiner. This is Apollo Crews, who is a Nigerian prince, a stud in the wrestling ring. And they sat there speaking about two engines in a boat. But Bron then says, it like, I'll cut through you with my spear. Tenuous. Like that. That's more tenuous than Tom's link to <laughs> in, whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, Bron. Uh, that was Bron as well. Yeah, Bron's he, debut on the main roster. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A big man. I've got to give it to you with those standing moonsaults that you do. He oh, says, no. out of the blue. Out of the blue. <laughs> Big well, man. When the small talk. <laughs> he goes, yeah, he uh, almost as good as mine, the moonsaults that I also but do. But they, they, they brought it around with the, 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 yeah. the, the gimmick infringement, we should say. I guess they brought it around there. It's just how it starts. Oh, those moonsaults you do, they are great. They're out not the, the only two people to do standing moons. The Logan Paul standing moonsault. <laughs> the Logan Paul. <laughs> but then... <laughs> The pièce de résistance. It, it, Apollo has the advantage. If you know, predicting the future wasn't an advantage already enough. He caught a fish, which means he has the momentum before Saturday's match. Because Bron didn't catch. Bron a fish. didn't catch a fish. Because we all know did. in WWE, if you win the match before the pay per view, you're definitely going to win. Yeah. The fish match that is. Yeah. So they've made it abundantly clear now that Apollo's going to win because not only did he catch a fish, but he saw a vision of himself with the belt. So Bron's going to win. So. It's did, just a question of how. 
I think Apollo's going to get himself DQ'd, you know. Mm. Sit there on the ring with... Because we're going to see that visual of with, Apollo with, sat with, there with the fish. Do we know Rusev from back in the did day? Did you see that one coming out, did you? <laughs> you idiot. I think Dusty Finish. I don't know. It's Fishermania. This <laughs> is a real thing, by the way. I used to watch it on Sky Sports. <laughs> Fishermania. 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 Oh, I'm surprised that Ross. Has been, I'm surprised that Ross has been so against this storyline because it's he is a big fan out. of watching fishing. <laughs> We've got a guy who can predict river, the future. River monsters. He loves it. Oh, the, but I. Yeah. The little tiddly trout they caught. Or, well, yeah, it or a bass. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, let's have a look. I think it's. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's a I fish. can't identify it's fish. No. It's a bass. It's a rom bass. <laughs> um, but no, the fish. Jerry White weird catches. If he was catching one of them, yeah, and then that was what Brom Breaker should own a pond full of deadly fish, yeah, and he should make Apollo swim in it. That would make this segment all the more better. And Apollo, when he gets attacked by these big things, gets a chunk bit out his arm, but he beats down the fish. There's so much many different ways you can go with these segments than what they're doing. <laughs> I've found Apollo really detestable in this segment. <laughs> Bron's about to go out on a lovely fishing trip on his own, and Apollo goes, "Oh, I'll just join you there," and then spends the trip winding him up. Well, that, you know, Bron says it too. He says, you know what I like about getting away from... Sorry, it's not a good sign oh, accent. But whatever. <laughs> like, all my accents are that. You know what I like about getting <laughs> fishing is spending time with myself. Turns around. Oh, hi. I'm Uncle Breaker. <laughs> so Apollo <laughs> catches a dirty, stinking bass. And uh, Bron does not catch a fish. So do we assume that Apollo was doing the tea leaves... And he's like, you will catch a fish. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Runs to catch the, the ferry or whatever the, it is. The, yeah, I know. This match as well, <laughs> if if a heel wins the Iron Survivor challenge, if like Carmelo Hayes wins that, uh -huh. I'm fearing for Apollo Crews because it'll be a, oh, no, they're both faces. What am I on about? There's no standout favorite, oh, is there? There's the Iron yeah, Survivor, no... is there? Mm, Axiom. That's why it looks interesting. No, the Iron Survivor... Axiom's a maths genius. Grayson was the most impressive one at the end of this episode, but mm. that, that's a bad thing because it means he won't win if we're following the old yeah. superstition. Hasn't it? Anyway. Anyway, great segment. A man named Bryson Montana is about to have a match, but he's beaten down by Indus here. Big Body Javi makes his entrance, but sees Indus and fakes a hamstring injury. Ooh, Fantastic. Quickly becoming a favourite of NXT, yeah. mm -hmm. his big body hobby. We hope he gets better soon. Uh, Indus, More on that later on. Innes refuses the Creed Brothers challenge because they're not at 100%, which I liked. He goes, no, 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 We're big and we're bad. We only want to take you 100%. Badass. And polite. Yeah, yeah, yeah and polite, yeah. <laughs> the Creeds arrive and want to fight, but are held back by officials as well as Ivy Nile and Tatum Parksy. I couldn't tell whether Tatum... Ivy was definitely trying to hold yeah. them back. Tatum, I couldn't tell whether she was on their side or on the side of Ivy. I think she was just in the way. I don't know what Tatum is. She likes the gym. Remember that women's <laughs> tournament, the women's breakout tournament? Her yeah. thing was gym. Yeah. That was her thing. But she, Kiana she, James, businesswoman. Yeah. Kane's daughter was there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when she, she's, in the, she's in the diamond mine and then yeah. she was wrestling a few weeks ago and she was wearing saucy stockings and saucy suspenders. Oh. And that's not diamond mine attire. No, well, that's not diamond mine. Why not? Because they're in the gym. They're the gym. Who's you know who wears that sort of... She's gone home and changed. Lingerie they, to the gym. Do you do that, like, Matthew? Wear like well, I won't now. You made me feel <laughs> rather uncomfortable about myself, Ross. She wear like tap-out gear and stuff. Aye. Yeah, in the gym. Yeah, it's like that, but on stockings. <laughs> <laughs> tap-out. <laughs> <sighs> Thea Hale wants a match with Ivy Nile, but delightful Hudson. You hate Thea Hale. She does my head in. Was so she the idea. noise screeching during the opening yeah. triple threat? That was her. I thought mm. there was a weird she noise. She was 50% of the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Chase disagrees and lets Thea have the match. Duke questions his decision, but Andre storms that off. That was tension. Yeah, saying, good. well, why do you do those bloody forward rolls? He pushed him out of the ring, didn't he? <laughs> Dull Hudson, invisibility cloak, new gimmick. Um, yeah, it's all crumbling down now for, for mm. Dull Hudson. Um, mm. Mr. Well, Chase is onto him. That's yeah, all I've got to say. I thought he got, uh, he got annoyed as well, thinking, God, this, this plan is not uh, only taken forever, but there was a bloody poker skit on Raw. Mm. It could have been me. <laughs> Well, pretty deadly tried to entice him into his old heelish ways the other week by saying there's a poker, we want someone for a poker game, mm. and he, he resisted. He's brilliant. I think he's actually a baby face. I think he's a good guy. I like him. No, no. No? Okay. He's trying to swindle Chase you from Andre. Mm. It's not going to work, though. Okay. Mr. Chase is onto him now. Mr. Mm. Chase. <laughs> Chase is a foot. <laughs> Tony D'Angelo wins his return match against Zion Quinn pretty easily. <laughs> really quickly. <laughs> it took like a minute and a half. Yeah. Uh, he calls out Wesley, 
who tells Tony to get in line because he currently has business with Dijak. Oh, man. Dijak appears in the Tron and says that nobody can stop him from disobeying NXT. Stax tries to attack Wesley, who escapes a beatdown. He runs away. <laughs> it's just rubbish everywhere. And then there's Wesley trying to get away from it all. He runs away. It's yeah, I don't want any of this. It was a two on one, yeah, to be fair. But Dijak should never be allowed to speak again because he is a he's a parody of wrestling now, Dijak. He's just saying all the old tropes that you say when you are eight years old. Yeah. Justice will be served. <laughs> <laughs> I will rule you. <laughs> I am the boar. <laughs> There's a snake in my <laughs> um, I always laugh when Zion Quinn loses, though. Why? Because he calls himself the X Factor, but he's rubbish Bow. in kayfabe. He's got all the tools. I bet they're so frustrated. But he loses every match. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, I think that there's more afoot here. Because remember, Tony D had a deal for Dijak that we didn't see the result of. So now Dijak's saying, if you step away, Tony, you have nothing to fear. But I think they're in cahoots, actually. We just watch out. Watch Ooh. out, Wes. Yeah. yeah. What's the, the classic movie trope Dijak could say for when he reveals himself to oh. actually be working oh. with uh, Tony D'Angelo? It was me. Austin. Oh, it was me all along. Ha-ha! Ha-ha-ha! I am your father. <laughs> I am your father. I've misremembered. You know the classic Darth Vader Mandela thing? effect. Yeah. Yes, I have heard it. Go on. No, not, so no, everyone no. thinks Go on it's the Mandela. Luke. Everyone th- yeah, it is the Mandela yeah, effect. The Mandela effect, yeah. yeah, when you misremember Every- something. Everyone thinks it's Luke. I no, am that's father. not it. Is it? It's, pe- it's the... <laughs> I hate the stupid thing. You're doing Mandela effect yeah, you're right man, now. You're gaslighting us. <laughs> you hey, are Mr. Hey, Mandela. Boobies. <laughs> hey, boobies. Yes, I am Nelson Mandela. Yes. <laughs> what a tune you that is, me. by the way. Free Nelson Mandela. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great guy. Oh. He was a great RIP. Free. He's not dead. That's just the Mandela effect. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> um, Go on. Well, we, can remember. you remember what you were talking it's, about? It was, it's, people think it's Luke, I am your father, but it's no, I am your father. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> so we're clinging onto the with one hand. Have you seen that clip where it shows, is it how he gets there? Yeah, right, they're in the throne room and then the glass gets shattered and obviously it's a bit of a vacuum so it gets sucked out. Woo, 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 woo. Yeah. Um, someone, it shows how they did that of Luke going, like that, it's Luke's stunt double, but he does a handspring back elbow out of the thing to get the, the <laughs> thing right. Like like the start of a space flying tiger drop. Yeah, exactly oh. like that. Um, to get the the oh, I guess you can't just you know naturally just turn around and run backwards and do that. I guess well, like I'm being sucked out, so you have to do the handspring like there's a gymnast doing it. He could have been twenty years if he'd started twenty years later. He could have been like in Dragon Gate or something. Yeah, if he wow. started forty years later, he could have been scripts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, yeah. uh, <laughs> he started eight years. Is that he's, now? he's still a bit now? younger than Bobby Fish. <laughs> scripts, scripts now. Scripts. <laughs> Scripty script. His voice is more Reggie now. There's not as much effect on his voice. You can well, tell it's Reggie. Uh, thankfully, because when he made his debut, crowd, Reggie, Reggie, oh. commentator. Wow, crowd don't know what to make of scripts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he recites more rubbish poetry and talks about targeting the chosen ones. That means he's coming back to another territory. Who did he beat in his first match? Was it like a jobber? An enhancement talent? Honestly, you can't remember. So who are the chosen yeah, ones? He's gonna. I just remember the mask and that camera shot where he looks a bit confused. <laughs> that, when he zooms in. Doing that as well. Oh, yeah. That's oh. Okay. It's so bad. <laughs> so <laughs> Poor bad. old Reggie. Yeah. <laughs> from the days when we like, oh wait, I can't wait for them to leave NXT. Uh, say, sorry, stay on NXT, not go with the main roster. Oh. Give it a crap gimmick. Now it's like, get the main roster, get the Triple H. <sighs> just for him. Everyone else is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, apart from Bron Breaker, the Fisherman, I'll never get on board with that gimmick. Last week, we see that Hank, the security guard, picked a fight with Charlie Dempsey and his mutton chops, and even mentioning his famous father. Not by name, but... yeah. yeah. Your famous dad? <laughs> I wish I had a famous dad, but I'm just a humble security guard. Yeah. Paul Blart <laughs> was my dad. <laughs> they have a match this week, which Charlie wins as Drew Goulet looks on. Uh... I Why liked was Drew looking on? Because he's, starting, because he's went... starting the DCC. Yeah. Uh, the Drew Conflict Collective. <laughs> <laughs> With Charlie being the first hire. I hope so. <laughs> I, love, I love Charlie Dempsey's... Uh, he was giving a vignette a few weeks ago, and he was like, all right, I'm not like these other wrestlers. They train to look good and train to do spots. I'm all about the Billy Robertson, the, Nick the Carl and Gotch, and all this stuff. And I was like, wow, okay, that's a nice idea, because not a lot of people wrestling that style, now that they got rid of Timothy Thatcher. So he has a match of Hank the security guard. And what does Hank the security guard do in this match? Well, I got this guy who's a tribute to the old guys. A Lutez press. 
I'm surprised how he just kept on wrestling because of the insult of a security guard <laughs> whose name is the security guard doing a match against Lutez. So what's he going to turn around no, and go? No, uh, going to turn around and go, oh, Lutez, oh, what, Billy Robinson? Oh, that youngster. In, nah. In fairness to the security guard, Stone Cold Steve Austin would do the same move. I was going to say, Austin reinvented the Thez press. It's now a working man's move. You see it up, <laughs> weather spoons up and down the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, me! <laughs> this, all the, secu- <laughs> the security... <laughs> Hey, you got trainers. <laughs> <laughs> Puts him in the corner between the bar and the wall and starts stomping him up. Oh, no. Oh, and Jack has banged his knee. Ex- no, it, it didn't hurt at all. It was the top of my thigh. He smacked oh, Matthew like... again, audio ah! listeners. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. All right, it's a funny bit. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought there was a couple of nice moves, though, from Big Charlie. A little medium Charlie. Uh, big Hank, medium Charlie. Mm. Uh, he did a nice reverse, like the big boot into a knee bar, mm. which was fantastic. And then the stretch-like manoeuvre. For the finish. Mm. Ch- Sorry, Hank doesn't bend that way normally, I reckon. And he where's, made him bend that way. Where's um Hank's pal Scooter Boy? Um, Nothing Scooter than a boy in his scooter. No. That was a segue, yeah. Oh, man. Quincy Elliott. Where's Quincy? Oh. He could have helped him. Yeah, Quincy's not been there for a while. No. Yeah, I don't know what's happened. Mm, okay. I miss him. Twerking, probably. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Dressing annoying, as, annoying dressing Booker as, T. Dressing as a banana. He did that. Oh, that's Halloween. That's though, right. So. Yeah. I reckon he's just with the cowboy girls. Yeah. Taking things too far. <laughs> Taking just hung things. over. <laughs> pretty deadly read a very pretty deadly version <laughs> they of was, the, was the, the Night Before Christmas. They're the best thing about NXT. Is that because one of them said they wish they had some hot, chalky? Yeah, that'll do, that'll yeah. They, oh, they really oh, 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 oh. To, to I, child of mine, yes. <laughs> I think I really do find them... They would enjoy the whole Chalky Muffin discourse yeah. as well. <laughs> and I think they'd fit in well here. Yeah, the two replacements... In the upstairs office, not down here with these. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <Ooh. laughs> dirty men down here, Joe. I don't know if you know this about yourself. <laughs> I love, <laughs> all dirty men. I love all the big major American wrestling companies passing around the memo going, note, the kids love the homoerotic Brits. Yeah. Mental. <laughs> That's what we need more it's of. It's eccentric, oh, Matthew. They, these are the Regal's new stable. Imagine that. None of the viciousness, just all of the ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> be great. How great's that? Uh, it's like, uh, Charlie Dempsey, like, William, my father, I have bat- battered a security guard with a stretch plum. He's like, not now, son. <laughs> <laughs> my my other one. sons are singing Twas the Night Before Christmas. Like Billy Gunn's story with the acclaim. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Scissor me, Daddy Regal. <laughs> God. They have a big Christmas hug, but uh, Did I say that? A big Christmas hug. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> it's exactly what it they says in the a tin. a big Christmas hug. They, they hug and go, Christmas, I guess. <laughs> But are interrupted of all bloody people by the new day. What are you doing? Here? No, this was a big surprise. Yes, they challenged Pretty Deadly to a title match at Deadline. Pretty Deadly go to attack, but the new day turn the tables and clear the ring, and they, they hold up the, the tag belt so they can call there. themselves the new, the brand new NXT tag team champions. They put the boxes on the and they put the boxes over their heads because all the Brits in wrestling in America must have boxes on their heads. Oh, buffoons. Oh, Kip Sabian. That's right, Kip. Um, But they are the champions still and I think they'll get a big win over the New Day and it'll make them look good. But how? Pinning Xavier Woods, not Kofi Kingston. Do you reckon? Is it Kofi who takes the pinfall? I don't know. Xavier's been pushed quite strongly this year. They'll cheat. Mm. They won't win clean. It's rumble season, isn't it? I think they'll win just via I know they've got to but how will they? Imagine if they don't. Oh. They, no, they will. I mean, new, uh, congratulations to Xavier and Kofi for the promotion to NXT. Too, <laughs> oh, God. So, uh, I don't know. They can't add to our love of NXT. They're too good. <laughs> they can't do that. <laughs> they can talk too well. Yeah. It's, uh, looking at AW and going, oh, they've added a match with no build. Yeah, sure, we can do that too do for our show. Pretty Deadly's faces when the New Day's music hit. They were buzzing. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Do you know the pills? I think we need to coin a new pop for the, the pop the New Day got inside the NXT right. Thunderdome. It's almost pop. as big as the Chase U pop. Yeah. Yeah. Suspiciously. <laughs> so the New Day pop. Those famously unpopular New, new Day yeah, pops. Yeah, yeah, true, that is true. Pop. Yeah. <laughs> the PC pop. <laughs> no, we can't have PCP on the podcast. <laughs> uh, backstage, Mackenzie accuses Big Body Javi of faking his yeah, injury. She needs to, to leave him alone. She's so annoying. She's a heel. Yeah, 
She asks a passing bloody hell, Eichmann Giro. What are you doing here? Yeah, I thought I forgot he worked there. I thought he just left with Kashida. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you think of Javi Giro? He's Colson? been on the toilet for months. <laughs> He's Buying been eating jackets. too much ice cream and pizza. <laughs> he should have showed up like skinny as hell, going, "Oh, American food, man. Oh God." Just runs right through uh, us. Uh, Giro calls him big body chicken. That yes. doesn't, that's not even clever. It's not. It's rubbish. <laughs> Crap, isn't it? Aye. Tell you what is good, though. Uh, was it when big body Javi got scared by Mackenzie? Was it by Mackenzie? Or was it yeah, Eichmann? Mackenzie was going, what are you doing? Yeah, and he's like, he's just got an uncro- un- uncontrollable twitch now, along mm-hmm. with his hamstring injury. He's a body full of ailments. Yeah. yeah he still bo- yeah. powers on. What happened... Is he like a big joker off camera? Is he is he hilarious to make them go? Big Body Harvey's going to be the new like comedy character of NXT. Johnny Gargano went. He's funny. Do you think? <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> because they sick. call that the kiss of death. <laughs> because it's not. It doesn't. I mean, I don't know what he's like. As he might be really funny off camera, but as a character, Big Body Harvey's. It doesn't seem that natural a fit. No. When he's trying to do the Bret Hart El Dandy thing, it's not really doing it for me. Me neither. Okay. Fair enough. It's funny. When FDR paid tribute to Bret Hart, it's great. When Big Body Javi does it, it's rubbish. Oh. <laughs> it's almost like FDR are a great tag team and Big Body Javi is... Uh, hey, steady. It's careful, he might man. be good in the ring. We don't know. Every time he gets a paycheck, he's stealing. No, no, no. That's How horrible. can you horrible say such a say. thing? I love that line. Nasty, that. <laughs> it's a Gary Hart one. Oh. Uh, Isla Dawn beats Thea Hale, but Alba Fire does who? <laughs> well, so I... Alba Fire does her rubbish smoke running after the bell. It is crap. There's no smoke without oh, fire. No. They brawl and Dawn no, Joel, accidentally you've miss not the seen it. <laughs> Smoke appears from behind the ring. Not enough to, for it to look cool when she runs through it. Just a, a bit of smoke. And then she runs in. That's how she arrives in the arena, though, Joel. Her mortal vessel is just a cloud of smoke. Yeah. Right, yeah. Up it comes yeah. and she morphs out of it. It's a kind wonderful of, thing. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, if I was Alba Fire, though, I would not be worried in the slightest about this witch. Oh, really? This modern-day witch, this other nickname I've forgotten. What is it? The I can't Enchantress. Remember. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, Thea Hale got a lot of offense in. Yeah, but she's got yeah. missed, though, as we learned. <laughs> the great Muta yes. is back and it's in a witch's body. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to make about this. No. I, I know that she's not a real witch because she was sat... Because she floats. Because she was sat near me at Wembley cheering on Eddie Dennis in his ladder match. So I've <laughs> seen her out of character. <laughs> Hi kids, wrestling's fake. <laughs> She's not a witch at all. For anyway, me though, this is going. Away. This isn't. This is in the Dijak category of the wrong side of naff. Like, because you know we see spooky bollocks all the time in wrestling, and some of it's good, but this is the wrong side of naff for me. After this, this is a second. Which one, of, Alba or Isla? Uh, no, Isla. Oh. Yeah, Alba's not spooky. Yeah, she is. She's fiery. Well, yeah, okay, she's good. She's yeah, she, yeah, she is. <laughs> I, <laughs> And then, like, Isla, I thought it was all right. I think it's, like, it just started, so it's, we'll see where it goes. But I didn't like Isla getting hit, and then she's doing the thing that I think that's what J.D. McDonough and other people do, where she's in the entrance where she's run away bravely, <laughs> and she's going, hey, mm. you hit me good, kid. I'm like, yeah, everybody does that now. So you can't be yeah, a witch and then do what everybody else does. Cause... I saw her doing it in more of a golem way. Like, <laughs> I've not watched all of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Have you not? No, I've seen the first one and then like bits well, of the I'm not other surprised. Two. I'm acting surprised. What's wrong with that? The, you haven't seen it. Everyone goes like, oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. It's long. Too long, man. I... Too much investment there needed. I've seen all the Star Wars, is it? <laughs> no, I haven't. There's new ones in there. Nah, the new, I'm, you're right for that. I've no one cares the, about that. the first six. That's all right. Lia Valkyria is still a nimble forest sprite. There's a big breathe out there. Tells us that she's earned a feather for every battle she's won. She'll debut next week. Quote the raven. Nevermore. Yeah. <laughs> she's won a feather for every battle she's won, and she's got loads of feathers. Mm. So she's hard. When That's she says battle, mean. what does she mean? In the forest. Team Fort was two. No, I just don't know. Just... Kill the fog? Hopefully not when there's a certain bear around. Mm. Battles in the in the mythological sense. I, I saw them as big Game of Thrones battles that she's been in. Slaying dragons and yeah. other nerdy things. Yeah, no. Mm. She's killing nerds, in fact. <laughs> So plenty of them in wrestling. She's so. a hero. JB and BJ take on Malik Blade and Edris and Offy. Interesting match with lots of subtext. <laughs> no, no, it was. It was, yeah. We had the segment before with uh, with Keanu James and her assistant. I was about mm. to say, yeah. Sorry, yes. Jose the assistant. What's her <laughs> Jean? name? Jean? I think it's Jean. Jean the assistant. I don't know if I've made that. I think it's Jean. 
And they, they're talking about, you know, doing deals and whatnot. And then she has an envelope with BJ and JB's logo on because she wants to invite them to a big party or something. Mm -hmm. We'll find out what that is later yeah. on. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Parties. Yeah. Cowie girls. Lionel Richie. During the match... <laughs> Keanu James' assistant slides a letter into BJ's jacket. Delightfully devilish, Seymour. That's that's good, that. Thank you. Uh, come Tuesday, he arrives and brawls the back of Odyssey Jones, the slowest man in wrestling. <laughs> JB and BJ pick up the win and have a respectful exchange with their opponents afterwards. Backstage, BJ reveals that Keanu gave him VIP tickets to Deadline. <laughs> He's very excited, but Fallon isn't happy. When is she ever? He could have got those comped. He works yeah, there. You think so, right? <laughs> well, yeah. If he what? doesn't have to work now, he's in the VIP section. Does the VIP oh. mean he gets to meet and greet some of his colleagues? Yeah, he, 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 knows. he does have to cheer the faces <clears throat> and boo the heels, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. shut up. And the person who cheers the loudest gets free whatever. <laughs> yeah. Indy Artwell wins a qualifier. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was shocked to see these two win <laughs> with that, as Booker T called it, hottie biscotti at ringside yeah. doing the distraction. So JB and BJ are getting a push right now. Yeah. Edris yeah. Elbow is still a great move. Former yes, NXT it? UK, former tag team champions of the United Kingdom, JB and BJ. And they've Remember? never been. Yeah, they've never Oh, no, wait, they, 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 they had come over, been. didn't yeah. they? Yeah, they once. Oh, yeah, right. Big hours, did they? Did they come over as part of Andre Chase's excursion? Do you think they got the same flight? Do you remember when he was like, we're going yeah. to London? Oh, yeah. maybe. I hadn't thought about that. Oh, dark times, though. Yeah. Indy Hartwell wins the qualifier of the Iron Survivor match beating Fallon Henley and Wendy Chu. Mm. Backstage, she tells Toxic Contraction that Saturday will be her night. It's the heart and soul of NXT, Indy Hartwell. Yeah, absolutely. I disagree with that statement. Really? Personally. Yeah. Oh. Who is the heart and soul of NXT? Um, Bronze Boat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Chase, Bronze you are the Bats. heart, I think. Or they're the soul. Yeah, because they've got spirit, so the soul. The heart has got to be cum. <laughs> 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 what I said... The heart has got to be calm. <laughs> if Chase you, it's not spirit. the brains, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, th this match was a bunch of stuff for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Indy was the obvious winner, just because she is the heart and soul of NXT, allegedly, according to the storylines. Mm -hmm. Booker T was interested in saying that when did she need to show us some attitude? She's shown plenty of attitude. I was going to say she's she's ruined several lives at this point. Uh, yeah. Where's Tiffy Strats? Where Still, is she? where is she? What's that? What's happened to her? Dead. <laughs> Imagine she's the whimsical the Wendy Chew. Yeah, yeah. Like that whimsical there. Yeah, uh, nice to have a distraction from the two three-way matches on Raw between the women to watch NXT to see another. Oh yeah, three-way number one contenders different match. Different universes, different shows. Oh, of course, <laughs> great. And then the main event: Grayson Waller hosting the Grayson Waller Effect with the rest of the Iron Survivor participants as his guests. They all insult each other and bicker about strategy and who's going to have advantage. Is it better to come first or second, et cetera, et cetera. Tuesday. Tuesday. Until Gacy starts a big brawl. Waller hits a big dive onto everyone, and then the brawl continues to end the show. Yeah, if I was Logan Paul, I'd be having words with Grayson Waller yeah. right now. Because he did that dive with phone in hand. That's Logan's thing. And held on to phone. <laughs> yeah. And while it's impressive in that, that's Logan Paul's thing now. Not anymore. <sighs> It's a Pokemon card. Someone's taken it. Mm. This this segment was a load of nothing. I've called it a load of awful waffle. Fluffy. It was just fluff. It was good what they were saying. I thought JD McDonough especially cut yep. a good promo. But in terms of furthering the storyline, it didn't get furthered at all. Well, there wasn't much of one, was there? So I liked the. I actually liked them just talking smack. Well, you know, well I, the sense I got from this and from the roundtable thing Michaels did with the other legends, where they all who should be in the match and that and this as well. They're trying to make it feel really sporty and real, like a real athletic contest, because they're going it. like, yeah. oh, but then the strategy. You know? And then you've got like spooky Joe Gacy going, well, you'll risk spending more time in the penalty box. And I was like, yeah. oh, why? <laughs> Maybe choose idiot. someone else to say that line, not spooky Gacy. But yeah, I really enjoyed uh, Grayson just looking at JD McDonough in the eye and saying that he was a, an Irish garden gnome. His <laughs> head is massive. Direct quote there from... Uh, Grayson Waller. Is that what he yeah. said? But Grayson's <laughs> supposed to be crap, though. I mean, that's... Grayson Waller just stealing jokes like... from the indie scene three years ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's got a big head. <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing. If someone else said it, I'd be like, well, whatever. But, you know, Grayson Waller's an idiot. So That's why it's so good. Because it's yeah, so crap. Exactly. It's crap on purpose. I'm convinced. Yeah. I liked actually going out. I remember what you did to my foot, JD. And JD's like, I should hope so. It was only a few weeks ago, you idiot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah JD, JD, even because he's doing much less of the sexy, silk <laughs> stuff he's doing. Now he's just got, like, I'm going to battle you. Like, oh, okay, yeah, that works. I, I do so. like that when he says it, like, I could have injured you a bit more if I wanted to, but I didn't because I'm a nice guy. I like that sort of stuff. Who do you, mm. you think is going to win? 
JD, I don't know. I think. Do you think JD? Yeah, I think JD. He's up there. JD or Grayson, one of those two. Well, I think Hayes might. He needs this more than anything. <laughs> he said it. He said he needs it. It's hard to tell. I, I like that we Anybody don't Anybody but Gacy, I'll be happy with. Oh, yeah. Oh, Axiom. Yeah. I don't care about Axiom. No. Yeah. Do you care about Axiom? No. Uh, Not yet. What What could he do to get you caring? I don't know what he could do for me. He had a five-star match with, like, Zack Sabre Jr. or someone in Spain once. More of that. As I Axiom. That. God, I, yeah. No, as AK. <laughs> <laughs> no. And one with Osprey. Yeah, I was going to say. There's there's he had one. two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what can he do? He can lend us a fiver. Okay. That usually works about getting positive press on the show. He should so. become the new Carol Vorderman. You know, he's a math genius. But like they're doing the letters round, and mm-hmm. when he's picking the letters, or the contestants pick the letters, it spells out the name of his next opponent or something. She's going to be on the uh, New Year's special of Taskmaster, Carol Vorderman. Oh, lovely. Uh, with the chicken shop date woman, she's on it as well. Oh, Amelia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And other people. You know Amelia, don't you? Of course I do. The chicken, chicken shop, shop date. date woman. Yeah. She fooled everyone into thinking she was dating a rap boy. Oh. Who is it? I don't know. H. H. Not from really? Steps. No. Oh. <laughs> the, from Manchester. H. The Mancunian. A-I. The white, the white rapper boy. <laughs> oh, baby, throw it back and make it shake. <laughs> I'll have a boneless box, please. Chicken shop reference. She's, she's a show on YouTube with, with, in a chicken shop. She interviews various rappers usually. Lou Sean Thru. Paul's been on. That's Lou Through. Lou Through. Rapper. <laughs> My money don't jiggle jiggle. Rap. Oh, no. It, it, yeah, I was going to say, he did rap that one time. Uh, Sean Paul's probably the biggest. When she got him on, I was like, oh, my God, Sean Paul. I was going to go and see him in she... Newcastle, but I didn't want to fork out the £48 it cost oh, to sit in the back What row. happened but to going to quality. gigs and seeing all the amount it takes to get these bloody things as a ticket master and inflation? Mm. Oh, my girlfriend saw the Sugar Babes recently. How much I wanted to go Not there. that much. It was at the City Hall, and it wasn't that bad, I don't think. And apparently they were really good. Oh, yeah. Not the three I would have picked, though. Two of the three I would have picked. Not my but sugar they had baby. Siobhan there. Yeah, they had Siobhan. It was the original three, not the oh, blonde one. Heidi, Heidi, Heidi yeah, from Liverpool Heidi. wasn't the, there. The triple threat. Mm. Mm. Sweet. AW Dynamite. <laughs> Good episode this week. I thought so, too. In the Dynamite Diamond Battle Royale. Wait, what was my funny thing? Headline. There was nothing. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not right It one. says AW Dynamite hyphen... Blank. Oh my god! Can you remember what it was? <laughs> no, I just I think it was four a.m. <laughs> I was just tired. I like so you asked me what is it? Sorry, like, I don't know. <laughs> Matthew, read my funny bit. <laughs> it wasn't even there. Jack's funny Sorry. bit. Sorry. Right. In the dynamite diamond battle royale, uh, diamonds are forever, or are they? There we go. Ah, oh, cheers. Um, that'll do. I... W. Morrissey eliminates Jungle Boy from the outside and chokes hands him against the apron. Oh, they get... it looked nasty as well. High mm. angle. Rest in peace, Jungle Boy. He's yeah. got a feud against the firm. No, no, it's a, that <laughs> that stable at MGF literally went eh, about. <laughs> I'm officially. I'm not going to feud with you. <laughs> Could you tell who was going to win this match from the entrances? Because only three of them got an entrance, and one entrance took twice as long as the other entrances. Right. And he was going. Do, 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 yeah. I was thinking that, Austin but then theory. Dustin got one. <laughs> oh yeah. Very polite, like. And Jungle know, Boy. But they were in Texas, weren't they? Whoop the horns. Mm. <laughs> I found Jungle Boy really, ind- Jack Perry, sorry, really endearing when he made his entrance because Starks came out and did all the showmanship and then Jungle Boy walked out as if like, hey guys, just casually. Yeah. So he's he's a, focused like, on he's the a match. Nice lad. Got a little surprise with his own pyro. He went, ooh, <laughs> pretty fireworks he did. But he, yeah, because not you say it's like fire bad. Yeah. Because <laughs> no, all the fire usually comes out of that. He's yeah, a yeah. man now. He's not a Jungle Boy. Oh, okay. He's a he's got jungle Okay, well, sometimes fire good. Mm. He's yeah. got leather jackets. We learned in this yes. match via commentary that William Regal is still recovering with yes. Brian Danielson by his side, which leads me to wonder, how long is that recovery going to take? <laughs> Three years down the line. <laughs> have you been wondering about William Regal? Have you? <laughs> he's nearly oh, better. God, I hope that when he's on TV, fine on the other side, he's still in <laughs> hospital. <laughs> He's Brian, getting your cards, don't worry. They really put over Brian Danielson as being a great guy <laughs> as well. They were like, he's a great man. And there's a picture of him looking nervous next to the stretcher. What a guy. Yeah. I'd rather see him wrestle matches, though. Yeah. Than be nervous. Yeah. He will do, because I think he's going to be one of the next, or first challengers, I guess. Once Ricky Stocks is out the way yeah. for MJF. Mm. I don't he's think he'll na- beat him, though. He's been name dropping, hasn't he? Mm. But uh, in this match, the whimsical kip we've got to speak about again. Oh. Yeah! Because Dustin Rhodes does a destroyer, then eliminates him with greater plomb. Yes. And I thought it was fantastic that Whimsical Kip got spaffed on. Mm. <laughs> Ag- again. <laughs> he can't catch a break, the he guy. He was legitimately 
one of the hot the super bad. He might have been the yes, biggest highlight of the world of sport ill fated relaunch thing because he had a chance to cut promos and people thought mm. hey, he's good at being a cocky heel, yep. and instead he's a 1800s Dickensian cobblestone villain, and I don't know why. <laughs> Just let him be cocky and Kip Sabian. Yeah. What We're else not ridiculing it? the man himself. No. We're ridiculing whatever he's become. Yeah, the man who returns after a year and a bit away, gets a title shot, loses, and then hasn't wrestled since. He and lost. won't wrestle, as he we'll get He did lose, but he gave it a good go. Pac was confused. I was saying, what are you doing here? <laughs> it is literally the gimmick that Kip Sabian super bad would have been bullying in storyline. Like, just laughing yep. at him. Like, look at this state of you wet wipe. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily, though, his ex type partner, Miro, is doing great. <laughs> anyway, oh, so... Oh, where is Miro? I don't uh, know. It currently said, though, the news that came out as we're doing this was that, announced that, uh, not Goldberg, sorry, AEW have no current plans for Miro. He's been found since June or something I read somewhere they have else. no plans for, for Miro. The Redeemer. God's favorite champion. One of the champion. best things about the promotion. Yeah. yeah, he's had four matches this year. Yeah, this is exactly what we criticized WWE for for yep. not using him well. Yeah. Oh. In the ring, Matt Hardy helps Ethan Page because that's going great. Reach the final two with Ricky Starks, but Starks manages to win. Now I thought that the Dynamite Diamond Ring Battle Royal had two winners, and then they wrestled each other. It did used to, yeah. But now it's just a battle royal. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I don't know if that was. Has it been that way for more than one year? Or was it. Because it, it definitely. Oh, honestly, no, no, no. off the top of my head, I can't remember. But all I remember is that MGF has won every single one of them apart from this one. When it got to the final two, I was expecting that to be the end of the match. And I was surprised when it kept going. Mm. But. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I, yeah. I, I, we were sitting here last week saying, why would he bother um, Ricky Starks? Because he's already. He's got the shot for the title anyway. Yeah. But at 150K. That oh. ring is worth 150k, oh, enough, which is a, a, they should have made that clearer last week. I think. I, I think so as well. To stop us saying that. Um, yeah, I thought the, the final spot was brilliant. Yep. He hoofed him up into a power slam in one movement. Oh yes, that was. And then went nice. over the top rope in a second movement. Yep. Yeah. Amazing. It was better than Brian Cage's elimination. Yeah. <laughs> where he got hit and then went oh, oh, and then climbed over. <laughs> oh, <on. I'm laughs> it was good. Dalton Castle was good in this match as well for his little cameo. The mm-hmm. stuff with no. the bar, bar, bar is at ringside. To be apart from that bit, Brian Cage was good as well. Mm. I feel bad for just flagging up the the one bad bit. <laughs> mm. uh, it wasn't as silly as when your pal Eva Luno <laughs> ran. Into, that was so funny. Yeah, that was good. Great. Yeah. I have to tweet out. Oh, those aprons get really slippy. <laughs> um, you know what you should get for us with if if it's slippy, a maxi pad. Oh, oh. segways! I've not Thank ri- you. I've not written down every single Thank thing that was said here. Yeah, I was going to say there really was a lot, a lot of stuff yeah. here. Uh, MGF comes out and cuts a promo on Starks, calling him a dollar store Dwayne and the Pebble. And he says he's going to bounce, put you in my pocket, find the nearest pond I can find, and then bounce you, because you're a pebble, and that's like a small rock, until you land in Billy Corgan's promotion on YouTube where you belong. I cringed a bit at the pebble metaphor. I was like, that's not doing it for me, really. Me neither. No. Well, because he's like the rock but small. I get it. I've never and he's th- going to bounce him like I thought it was Is good. it just me who's never looked at Ricky Starks and thought, oh, you've just been a knockoff rock? I think knockoff rock. People have said rock. this before. It was it when he was wearing like the shirts and the sunglasses, like the open oh, shirts yeah, I guess and sunglasses. Like, yeah. and he's not... He's not LA Knight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we've already got one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and LA Knight's a lot better than Ricky Starks. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Obviously. Okay, no. <laughs> which is a timely thing to say after Ricky Starks pulled MJF's pants down. Yeah. Absolutely. Wrapped them around his ankles, so tripped him up. I was going to say, I Ricky a, tells... I had a feeling oh. this was going to happen. Because I've seen a vlog somewhere where it's three of them hanging out. MJF, Ali Cart, who I think might have been MJF's ex. I don't know if that's true or not. Anyway, MJF, Ali Cart, and Ricky Starks. And it's like Ali Cart's hosting the vlog or whatever. And, and, M- and Ricky Starks must be pals with MJF in real life, but he like bullies him. <laughs> he is the alpha male of their hmm. duo. And I thought, if they ever have a promo together, Ricky Starks is going to bring that real life alpha maleness mm. and he's going to bully MJF who I believe is a shoot nerd oh man he watches these oh <laughs> does he <laughs> hasn't he referenced this podcast to you before no he did that thing when we gave him the uh, the, uh, the trophies now known as the culties oh yeah yeah, yeah that's alright get away you stupid oh, nerds I hope he doesn't... which meant that he gave himself away oh, showed I'm us his scared cards. of listening oh damn hello MJF no. we'll see you this we'll if see. he's mean to me on Twitter I'll never recover if he DMs us going hi guys we know no, it's him no he'll do it publicly and everyone will laugh at me oh. well I'm used to people laughing at me so I would say yeah. MJF's got that big sub energy I've been hearing about <laughs> in his real life 
in, in, in that thing that Jack saw. Because I saw a similar thing with, I think it's Ethan Page, MJF and Chuck. Right. In a similar setting on a, on a couch somewhere. they bully somewhere. MJF as well? Yeah, he's very subdued and, yeah, it's just... That big sub energy. Well, they're all like the, the, the grizzled <laughs> veterans by comparison to him. Like, Come here, kid. And then it, I think he takes out all that anger in the ah, ring. This was amazing. Anyway, Ricky yeah. tells the fifth-rate Roddy Piper that the low-hanging fruit is running dry. You, you smell of, that for him? That seemed like a Matthew line. Oh, thank you. You smell of paint thinner and ass. <laughs> <laughs> You had to spray over so much of it to hide your eczema. Wow. And this proceeds to describe how he's so much better than MGF and how he pays for everything to get where he is. But don't worry, it'll make life easier for you next week, MGF, because next week I'm going to take away all your responsibility. I'm going to take that title from you. Yeah, they must be good friends because some of the stuff he was saying was quite mean. Yeah. MGF kicks him in the dick. The best response he could have done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then yeah. Starks <laughs> recovers and blasts him with the pounce to leave the ring to a giant pop. Oh, it was a spear. crowd were like, hell yeah. Is this the first time on AEW TV that MJF's been, like, conclusively beaten? Oh, the promo? only other oh, thing Punk, is when Punk didn't say anything to him and just went, huh, and just walked off. <laughs> That's the only other time yeah. I can think of. Because this was the first one for me. It was just mm. the little bits where he's going, like, moi, instead of, like, you think better than me, you think better than moi. Mm. Just those little bits was like, oh, this guy, this guy knows his way around a microphone. Mm. I don't know what he Breaking meant, news this week that Ricky Starks right, right. knows his way around a microphone. Shades <laughs> off, former Evolve <laughs> yeah. champion Austin Theory. <laughs> that good. <laughs> that damn good. Yeah. I, I didn't get, understand the bit where he said, well, your nose is different, call it the rest of you. Does that mean because he's a brown noser? Yeah, yeah, that's what he meant. Right. Yeah, yeah. But he's not. That. that doesn't work for him, Jeff, because he walked out of the company for more money. That's the he's opposite, the opposite to a brown, brown noser. noser. Yeah. Oh, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, right. one, one minor little maybe, issue. Maybe that's a shoot. Maybe backstage MJF oh, really does it. suck up. To stop it, you. Like, oh, the real, the real. It might. Why would that make... This is AEW, man. They do it all the time. Yeah, they do. Malachi Blast will come up later and go, this company's full of corrupt people with <laughs> I've, shovels. I've noticed, <laughs> I've, noticed since, I've noticed since Ross said it that every time they try and do a work shoot, a part of Tom Campbell's soul dies and Tom splits off. He sat there, He sits there at his desk and goes like, oh, <laughs> another work yeah. shoot. Tom just wants wrestling to be a story, and I don't yeah. blame him. Yeah, I, I agree. And I really like this. It's almost a shame that there's not a ha hope in hell that Ricky has a beaten MGF in his first nah. defense. But we're here for it. Screwy we? finish, get it redone at Revolution, maybe. Because the crowd's Ooh. invested in Ricky, something like mm. that. Yeah, has he been TNT champion? He's better than that FTF now. He's bigger champion. than that now. Yeah, he's oh, sorry, yeah. They got the two mixed up. Yes, the FTW title. He's bigger than the TNT title now, but he's not going to beat MGF. So it's like, where does he go? Rampage. <laughs> no, 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 no. Backstage, John Moxley says he likes Hangman now because he let his fists do the talking. He says that Claudio and Wheeler will beat the JAS tonight and at final battle because that's the build of this <laughs> award-winning pay-per-view. Moxley, I felt bad for him this week. There was a lot of Moxley papering over the cracks with his charisma, going, forget the storyline, I'm John Moxley. And I'm, mm. yeah. That's right, I'm big, John Moxley. A wizard did it. The mm. big regal-shaped hole. Yeah. And they try to put the Moxley yeah. He's a bit too big to fit in there. Mm. Is, he, is he? Yeah, he will be. They're both tall yeah, men. They're both yeah. thick men, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. I did Speaking like it. It was like, he's like, uh, this isn't all elite talking. <laughs> in the middle of a promo. <laughs> 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 this isn't Blackpool Microphone Club in the middle of a promo. <laughs> Are they going to call oh, yeah. it? They should rename it like the Cincinnati Combat Club or whatever. Because he's from... The Cincinnati Shaggers. Here we go. Yeah. Yes. Wheeler Yuta. <laughs> yes. I am one of them. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Samoa Joe. Silla Black's shagging Lionel <laughs> Richie. That's it. Moxley. <laughs> Yuta. Silla Black. Samoa Joe beats Darby Allen to oh retain the TND Championship. Oh. But you know it's going to be a good one when Darby Allen does his tope the outside <laughs> and Samoa Joe does his <laughs> casual walk away and laugh. Brilliant. And Darby just dies. Oh, my God. I honestly thought I was watching, and I've never dabbled in this myself personally, but I felt like I was watching, you know, the BDSM porn. <laughs> where you get I your, know what you're referring to, You yes. get your whips and your chains and that and your yeah. devices and whatnot. I felt like I was watching that, just the stuff that Darby was doing to his own body and the, what, the stuff that Joe was doing to Darby's body. Yeah, the the power slam on the... On the floor, yeah, on the exposed floor. Uh, the, off the ring post when he just ricocheted him off there. Um... What else was there? There was another uh, one, wasn't the there? Muscle Buster on the skateboard. The Muscle Buster, yeah. Oh, on the wheels on as the, well. On that side of it. Aye. Yeah. Oh. It was a real skateboard. BDSM like one porn. I hope he was narrow enough to land in between the wheels. I don't know. It was so funny seeing Darby next to Joe because you're like, oh, Darby is a skinny kid. like Compared to Samoa Joe. Or right. is it just Joe's that thick? I think it's a bit of both. Yeah. Thick daddy. Jack Spratt and his wifey. 
Um, yeah, put him on the skateboard, puts on the Kikina clutch until Wardlow runs out to make the save. Finally. Where were you 10 minutes yeah. ago, Wardlow? <laughs> he did run fast, though. None of this young bucks jogging. He sprinted. Was it just me that when Wardlow came out, Taz shouted, Warlord! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he did. But in this match, Joel, if you know how to do it, hit the thing, Joel. Oh, my. Oh, 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 oh baby. And that's because... Joe countering the coffin drop into a choke to finish mm. the match oh, yeah. is my move of the week. Yeah, The crowd gave the Bobby Lashley pop. Mm. I really thought that Darby was going to win for that split second because he even did a little point. He went, you're dead, and then did the coffin drop. And when the camera cut back, he... Yeah. Brilliant. Really good. I concur with yeah. Ross's move of the week. <laughs> uh, a brutal display, but it's what we expect from Darby. It is one of these things where I feel like Jim Cornette watching Cactus Jack in 1990. It's like, well done, Darby. You died again. <laughs> uh, great. In the exact same position you were three years ago. You all right, mate? Oh, Jesus. You're okay. Well, I'm just saying that as it is. Scathing. We have to worry, like, Darby getting killed, getting killed. Matthew's, I mean, it does do it very well. Matthew's got his favorite of the four pillars. <laughs> he's the only one I don't want him to get jealous, all right? <laughs> it's, it's Ricky or no one for Matthew. You know how hard it is for me to look at Darby with a goth in the the short shorts and be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's that noise? <laughs> I've been targeted by Kip Sabian in the Dynamite Battle Royal. Orange Cassidy offers him an All-Atlantic title shot on Friday. And he How says, my? This is, he says, no. What did Kip do? What did Kip How do? How convenient, my <laughs> sweet little Clementine. <laughs> Get in the bin, will you? <laughs> Kip claims he's hurt. So Cassidy suggests he finds a replacement. Kip gets an idea. Which I accidentally spoiled is, earlier, but hopefully it's been cut out yes. of the podcast. If it hasn't, haha. Uh, <laughs> Kip, you're so rubbish. <laughs> you're so crap. So, is if interference on Orange Cassidy didn't work, even though he hit it perfectly, <laughs> gets battered earlier in the Battle Royal. By Dustin. And then, yeah, and then Orange Cassidy goes, ah, you know what, I'm pretty chill, do you want a title shot? And he goes, no, I'm hurt. <laughs> And then he walked in one week. And then he in wa- one week. And he walked off after getting the idea. And Orange Cassidy went, what does that mean? <laughs> like buried it. Is that a no? That's that tops Dolph Ziggler's stretch at the end of 17 into, into 2018, doesn't it? Oh, when With, he <laughs> relinquished the US title in the Rumble last, uh, eliminated quickly. He wasn't last though. He wasn't last. <laughs> was he not last? No. I yeah, thought he was. 30, wasn't he? Have we done this before? I thought he traded in the US title for the 30 spot. No. Jules nodded. No. Is this Mr. Nelson Mandela coming I back? I thought you were nodding there. Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela? Mandela. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> anyway, enough of that. This is the fourth producer on a podcast that Matthew... Actually, if you come for Chidi in the early days as well. That Matthew has disdain for. No, no. Can you, I want, yeah, sorry, why was I, I being brought up? Next week, I want Matthew to do like a, a ranking of all of oh. the <laughs> editors of the podcast. Andrew, everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> they're all, they're be, all lovely producers. will be up there as well. <laughs> of course. <Oof. laughs> After John Moxley stopped Sammy Guevara from interfering, Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Utah beat Jake Hager and his hat in a tag match. Oh, yeah. Claudio rejected the hat. It was a great strike from Claudio. Mm. That's all I've got to say, yeah. Yes, Wonderful sir. strike. I don't have much else yeah, to say yeah. about the match. The, the great yes. Utah doing that thing on his ropes. The great Utah. <laughs> you know the bottom rope where he sort of rolls out and rolls back in. How the bloody hell do you do that? It's like the wacky Magic. line. Yeah. The wacky line. We learned that in the Blackpool Combat Club. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the middle rope. You do yeah. the bottom rope. Cloudy yes. does the top rope. Um, Rick Knox just not calling a blatant DQ when Sammy literally puts his hands on Claudio, but what yeah. do we expect now? It's Rick Knox. <laughs> awful <laughs> referee. as much as Taz hates him. <laughs> He's I, a ba- seen, really bad referee. I've since seen some clips from PWG of Rick Knox doing a suicide dive and battering yep. the Young Bucks. He <laughs> battered the Young Bucks. They bullied him for years. Oh, so he snapped. Yes. Oh, well, he battered them. That was like the first match he went out. Oh, the crowd was. went wild yeah. for Rick Knox. Yeah. Yeah, well, all right, I've had enough of this. Mm. Just a tope. It was great. Con Hello, almost as good as Santos Escobar. It was better than QT Marshall's. Oh. It was, no, it was. It just was. It was a good tour from Rick. Yeah. But you know what was all, even better than that? Afterwards, Tony Schiavone shows footage of an interview he did with William Regal <laughs> in the event of something bad happening to him. <laughs> Should I be murdered? Hi. Should yeah, hi. I'm William Regal. I'm dead now. Oh, my God. <laughs> On this those was tapes. the best storytelling device I've ever seen. Regal says he realized that the Blackpool Combat Club don't need him around anymore. He betrayed Moxley to teach him to always keep his eyes in the back of his head. <laughs> Bollocks. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, begging for Moxley when I cut back to the ring. I was begging for Moxley to go, no, nah, I'm not yeah. having that. So I'm buying Blackpool Combat Club for life. No, you're not. 
Regal screwed Moxley over to teach him a lesson because he loves and cares about Moxley to the team that much. So he knew that MGF was likely going to put himself in harm's way to show that the evil one can strike at any time. Uh, and then Tony Schiavone, who wasn't happy with Regal at full gear, felt no need to mention anything at this oh, for the last yeah. two weeks. Tony knew all this. Yeah. Is the, have I got the timeline right? Because this interview was recorded two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Was that before the week before the pit of you or the week after? This is before... They said two weeks ago. Is this before... He, is this before full gear? B- before he turned on MJ? I assumed it was. I don't know. So it, all this has happened before. We need to verify this. Oh, yeah, we do. You just said two weeks ago, I think. Yeah, the, the interview was two weeks ago. So two weeks ago on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Was this the, the Wednesday after this Full might Gear have been after or the Wednesday he, before Full Gear? You know what? Gear? This might have been after he turned on Moxley, but before MJF turned on him. Yeah, that would make yeah, sense. That no, would yeah, make he sense. betrayed Moxley to teach him. Yeah, so he's after oh, Full Gear. Oh, so right, Tony, right. Tony didn't actually know this was going to happen. Although, was Tony still annoyed at Regal? No, but I mean, he kept this a secret was for Tony's, two weeks. Well, that's very nice of him. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it just? <laughs> he has yeah. known William Regal for 30 years. He has known him for 30 years. He did say at the start. 30 uh, years, my friend. Uh, Thirty years. I thought it was a look. They did what you know, they could, right? It was so. a stretch, a regal stretch. <laughs> hey. But it was a nice bow. You know, they've tried to make William Regal the Oracle, like, oh, here's the, my final lesson before I die. <laughs> I think Moxley looks like a punk bitch because <laughs> he's just taken that and gone. Well, I don't know what to say, but what I will say is, well, the Blackpool Combat Club. Uh, he's doing one of those promos yeah. where it sounds like a gearbox revving up. Hey. And, uh, and normally when Moxley does that, it's good. That it has like an intoxicating effect on yeah. the audience. We go. Moxie's class. I've just totally not paid attention to the bad stuff, but this time it didn't work. This is the first time it didn't work on me. Mm. I was like, Moxie wouldn't forgive him. He'd hunt him down. It's John Moxley. Anyway. I did go like to the re- hospital and batter him and Daniel Sun. He's going to be in the hospital for the next 30 years <laughs> at least. I did like the way he was like, I'm Blackpool Bo- uh, Combat Club until the day I die. It's been emotional, fellas. No, oh, it's a nice him, little bow. He cost him the belt. But you teach him a lesson while doing something. And you can tell that not only is he like taught him... I'm taking away the sweets. Right. Not only has he taught him all the good wrestling moves, also taught him the good films as well. I'm it's being emotional. <laughs> I really have to question Regal's strategy. I don't get it. This hasn't helped Moxley at all. Don't understand. MGF sent an email. I don't get it. <laughs> Do you not get it? So it turns out Regal never liked MGF anyway. No. What? No, he did like him. So no, why no. has he helped him become the champion? Well, he must have to liked teach Moxley a lesson. But he's... And the but, BCC but now lesson. this is going to cause in storyline this is going to bring a pestilence upon AW and that's MJF as, and his title reign of terror and this is all Regal's fault well he's gone back to the other place now good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense it, do, it does not make sense <laughs> arrive make a mess leave <laughs> <laughs> do you reckon he's like secret agent Regal Triple H is Go yeah. Back, yeah. What's it like backstage? Uh, oh, rubbish. <laughs> They're fighting one another. Only 10 of them came to look at my in ring classes. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it have been great if it was like the other way around? Regal cuts a shoot promo and then the young bucks and Kenny Omega shows up and he just turns up in a pretzels in seconds. <laughs> <laughs> There's these three balloon animals on the floor. So it's like, none of them could fight Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the screen's gone off. Uh-oh. Back on. Uh-oh. Uh, no, it hasn't. It's back on. <laughs> Whee! Back in the ring, Moxie puts open an open challenge for Rampage, which we learn is against Takeshita? What? Yeah. Why? Yeah, that got announced, yeah. Give so Moxley play. went, I'm going to put out an open challenge for Rampage. And then rather get the nice pop when it's revealed on Rampage, they just announced it. Yeah, what the hell? Maybe they oh, Takeshita just said, yeah, I'll take it. Maybe they were scared Takeshita wouldn't get a pop. Maybe they were scared the ratings could go lower. Oh, without knowing it was Takeshita. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. <sighs> Good stuff. <laughs> Jamie Hayner has a sit-down interview with Tony Schiavone and says she'll be keeping an eye on this week's Rampage. Well, you'll be the only one, love. She <laughs> says she's a fighting champion and a bloody good one. I love the way she said that. She's so a bloody, bloody positive. Good a bloody one. Good I'm a fighting one. champion yes. and a bloody good one at that. Oh, she's she... realising the effect all these British people are having uh, right now on TV. So. Sabian-esque the way she did it. Don't, no, it don't, you, don't you dare. Why is it bad when he Stop does it? What would people. Sabian actually say if he was saying, I'm a no, fighting champion and a bloody I've good one? I've made a horrible mistake. <laughs> I'll joust thee. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah! (laughs) You will be King Macbeth. I don't know. (laughs) Rubbish, this. Banquo. He is crap. It's a Macbeth reference. I don't know. Money in the bank wall. Jade Cargill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm all for the Shakespeare wrestling puns. This is really uh, my wheelhouse. Well, good. You love the comedy of errors next. Uh-huh. Jade Cargill and the baddies beat Kira Hogan, Sky Blue, and Madison Rain. It was Red Madison Rain. <laughs> no, she, no, she's, she's, she's the, the coach. coach. She's the crowd Blue killer. Mental. She's the coach who loses every single time she wrestles. I enjoyed the color palette of this match. Red and blue. 
There was Team Red and Team Blue. I enjoy, I'm, I'm a child. I enjoy <laughs> right the, right the point of looking for compliments. Yeah, it was Red and Blue. Hey, Allegedly, hey, red this, and blue. this was a grudge match because Kira Hogan was kicked out the baddies. Well, that's right. Because that ceremoniously has... so as well. Yeah, in a segment that lasted three seconds. And Kira Hogan, if that was her getting kicked out the baddies and being angry about it, she, sh- she did a terrible job <laughs> of showing how angry she was because no. she didn't seem nice in this match, I thought. Well, she, she was keeping her cool in the heat of combat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <just> really trying. <laughs> um, what else was there? After, uh, my main takeaway was, obviously, Jade's just on a different level yep. to everyone else involved in this match. Did you spill water on Squirtle? Yep, I did. Is that, was that so for irony's fine. sake? It's not very yeah, effective. Yeah, I was going to say he's fine. Yeah. He's actually happier now. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. R- Red Velvet it. looked a bit annoyed at the end when her and Jade were like walking around each other. I guess that's sowing seeds for... Another storyline. Uh, yeah. no. <laughs> I get the. I, I don't actually think it's like all of the. It's not wholly the fault of the women involved. It's just that they've got really flimsy foundations to work yeah. upon. There's not a lot of time being dedicated to this story. Yeah. Yeah, no. it's like when you go to Sainsbury's at like 6 p.m., go to the good sandwich section. It's not, it, there's nothing there. Mm-hmm. Vicky Guerrero did an interview this past week where she was again oh, calling for more. Well, she made a sensible point. She went, oh, sorry. More time for the women. It's not, it's, we need, need more time. Yeah. yeah, fair play, Vicky. Yeah. Because this is what happened. Yep. Yeah. Backstage, Britt Baker interrupts Soraya. Uh-huh. She's a ray of sunshine. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Actually, play that in my head. A Soraya of sunshine interview <laughs> and challenges her to a tag match in January. What? Yeah. <laughs> Chris, uh, Chris is old as Matthew. She gave her okay. tickets to that dynamite <laughs> that she wants to challenge her for. Oh. I hope she doesn't check and just goes it's the wrong way. It's really one. Fallon Henley and Kiana James esque, actually, this feud. Uh, kind of. I, I do like she's like you're so privileged getting your first match back on pay per view. Here's a couple of tickets. Go and take the next month off. Oh, is that what she was doing? I think so. Oh. Just her face a bit, yeah. Okay. But I reckon there's oh. a bit of a switcheroo coming here. I reckon the Jamie Hayter will team with Soraya mm. to take ah. on Brit and someone else. That, there's the time. Whole, there is time. The whole story's got to be. Uh, well, the whole story is Soraya find the tag team partner. Oh, I think that Soraya will. Find a babyface tag team partner, and it'll build towards Soraya versus Hater. Oh, no way! Is it too soon for that? Soraya needs to win matches. Yeah, that's all I'm asked about before she gets anywhere near Jamie Hater's title. Mm. Is mm, yeah, no, never mind. Yeah, that, that, that sounds right. <laughs> it's like that's the inner conflict there. <laughs> and Jack. It is, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, mm. yeah. Well, they're both English. I don't know. Who I want to win England. That's right. Who do I want? Keep it real. I like Britt Baker catching herself in the promo when she went, Jamie Hayter is always by my side, except for right now. <laughs> <laughs> she was on her own. She is good. Mm. In the main event, the Acclaim beat FTR to retain the AEW tag team titles. It was a good match. It was. Like they claim just being not flat out dicks, but just subtle dicks. It's all right for the champion to be the underdog. And the champions were the underdogs, but they pulled it out of the bag. Right. It's a big win for them. This is what killed WCW. Oh, Okay, <laughs> what's happened here? This, Whoa, match, what <laughs> this match is something that we've been gagging for. Literally, scissoring for. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh. And it's been pissed away on a week to build to a Ring of Honor pay-per-view. Got you. This should have been on Revolution's card, built up properly over the next month or two. But um, the, the issue is there, though, that people are already complaining that it's taking too long for FTR to get their title shot. So how do you kill all that? Tell time? a story. Okay. It's not my problem. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get a story where we bring in the fact they haven't had a title shot despite being number one contender since April, I think it's been. Okay. Yeah. Get us there. Because then go this... fishing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go. I'm surprised they didn't Have do a it. game of poker that lasts two months. Yeah. Why not? I'm surprised they didn't go to do this at full gear. I get why they did with Keep Lee in strict. Uh, but it doesn't really make much sense now if Keith Lee Strickland and now teaming up <laughs> at the bloody Ring of Honor show that Don't we remember that happened. Keith. Yeah, I can't w- forget Keith. We literally established this already, so now it's like, well, they should have just done it. Hey, Shane Taylor and his mate could actually win that match. Shane Taylor, I hope they had that on the, the, the they graphic because Keith might Excalibur. <laughs> they do be, uh, Ring of Honor pay tonight. Shane Taylor and his mate will take on. <laughs> <laughs> he did a good job, by the way, before this match. Excalibur, he had so oh, much. Oh, he's yeah, he's very good at talking. Plenty of practice now, stop yeah. God. Uh, but yeah, again, he it was... probably looks like the crimson chin under his mouth. Big <laughs> jaw for talking. Yeah, it was. It was like finally we're getting this, and it's in a random episode of Dynamite. Fair enough. Given the slow decline of ratings, you can also make the argument that they had to do something big here to mm. get something there. Which Have you I can seen also Excalibur see. without his mask because you're his mate. I had, but I didn't know it was <gasps> him. I was wow. talking with him after the, I think it was the Evolve show at the 
Oh, oh my God. O-L-E. You've seen him without his mask. But I was just talking There's about pictures stuff. pictures on the internet. No, that's Phil Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, no, 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 that's him. He looks that's like him. he could be Brian Zane's older brother. Really? Oh. Yeah. But I talked to him about stuff. This is what annoyed me. Um, it's like, yeah, hey, how are you doing? Because we just, um, they were taking down the ring, and I, I think I was helping. Maybe just talking to people. Who am I kidding? And then he was like, yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, he sent me a DM, like, hours later, just, like, following up on what we were talking about. I'm like, that was you! And he went, ha, ha, ha. Do you not know it was me? He's like, well, no, how could I? <laughs> you were a man in the mask. Yeah. So I've no, I couldn't tell you what you looked Excalibur like. Excalibur without mask. I did like the stories well in this match of Bones, who is the established weak link of the side in storyline. Oh, wow. In storyline, um, but him oh, getting the hot tag. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> him being the stronger of the two acclaimed members, which was a nice. You know that mm. story's been told quite well. I think. Mm. Uh, his hot tag was good. Caster getting a spear to get Bones out of a double suplex straight yep. into a pin was sensational. Yes. absolutely. The acclaimed were able to look. Like they could hang with the FTR in the ring because on paper, you're like, they <laughs> killed it. This lads. is their third big banger, I reckon, in the, in the last few months. Maybe third. more. The acclaimed. Third, yeah. Which one's the, which the, one? the, the two, first the two one? Two matches against Swerve and Keith. Okay. In terms of crowd reaction, and yeah, this, the first this, two, this absolutely. Is the third banger. Okay. So no, you're not counting the third match against Swerve and Keith. Was it three? Yeah. Yeah. There was a rubber match. This is their fourth banger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the third one wasn't that good. <laughs> like, was, yeah. yeah. In terms of crowd reaction, it was like, all right, we've seen this now. But the second one had crazy heat as well, but was a bit of a mess. But yeah. the, th the first one was the perfect blend. Right. I also like the how well put together like each team trying to do their finisher, but the other team having an answer for it. Yeah. Mm. That was well done. Scouting, homework, yeah. mind games. And I was glad to see Cash Wheeler get to do a lot of wrestling towards the end, despite the fact he ate the pinnacle. Because it seems to be all about Dax. Mm. What about Cash? Mm. Cash right. is also FTR. Yes. Up oh, the Cash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and I like the finish as well, because it's like, oh, you're going to hit that move for you. Ah, well, whoopsie diddles. Got yeah. the legs, just like Brett versus Davey Boy. I was um, convincing myself that FTR were actually going to win, because I was like, they can't lose to the Acclaim. But, I mean, mm. yeah. No, they can, because we're building to the ass boys. Mm. The guns mm. appear on the Tron <laughs> after the match and mock them for losing before revealing a challenge from the Briscoes for a dog collar match at Final Battle by uh, showing what's in their presence. It's dog collars. No, dog collars, that's this right. should have been the match that that show was built around for weeks. <laughs> Everyone would look forward to that. In case people aren't aware, uh, the pay-per-view is this weekend. It's tomorrow when this video goes out. Yes. It's just after the England-France match. <laughs> yes. These yeah. two tag teams have got a storied rivalry. They had one of the yep. matches of the year earlier this year, mm. wasn't it? On the other Ring of Honor show. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just the end of a segment yeah. on Dynamite is what we got for the build. But Tony Khan assures us <laughs> that he finds criticism Ring of Honor on AW amusing. He he he, he said. Like okay. That. Well, fair enough. Maybe it'll be... Who was it? Was it Jack Atkins, maybe? Someone said this might be like Forbidden Door. Under expectations, over... De was it you? No. That's, oh. that's a thing I do say. Over-deliver. I don't know over yeah. yeah. The thing they do really do well, or have done well this year, mm. is under-promise, over-deliver. Mm. That's the phrase I was looking for. Yeah, maybe so the pay-per-views from SummerSlam onwards have been top-notch. Uh, it, might, it might do... It might, uh, it probably will do that, to be fair. Okay. You know what? I hope it is, because I won't be watching But we it. will <laughs> all bring, each of us, to a man, one highlight of the night next week. That's right. Like, we'll, like the three wise men seeing <laughs> baby Jesus. Is it just all going to be the FTR match, because they're really good? Yes. It'll be interesting yeah. to find out, won't Yes, it, it will. It will be interesting, yeah. <laughs> Will we have the same or differing highlights of the night? Okay. Only one way to find out. We are three Ayatollahs of rock and roller. <laughs> well done. Mm. Is to watch next week's long week of wrestling. On this podcast, you're already watching. I thought it was the end the of the segment. subscribe and like. I was stretching and reclining. It was until you said something. Damn it. Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> ah. Tell me a little look in the mailbag. Our re Bonnie lads. Hello. We're, Hi. We're coming up on the anniversary of losing Brody Lee from this world. And I thought I would bring back the Poet Lariat submissions. Bloody hell. Oh. To commemorate the occasion. I did mail this in before. Thank you, Jack, for the very kind reply the first time I sent it in. I remember I couldn't fit it in. I felt bad because it was, right. yeah, it was nice. But figured I'd take a chance to see if I could get it in this time. But your pal Ross put it in the episode. <laughs> 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 Hope all is well with you all and you stay safe over the holiday season. Much love. Pete from Mean Jean, Brisbane, Australia. I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry. Mean Jean. Mean Jean. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. It is spelled Mean Jean. Yeah. J-I-N. Um, let me go get some of this. <laughs> that did nothing. <laughs> there was once, no, sorry, there once was a wrestler who was ready and rough, proclaimed to all that he had the right stuff. 
nimble but as tall as a cliff or bluff, this is the story of Brodie Lee. He would wrestle in places nearer and farther, Ring of Honor, Dragon Gate, and also Chikara. <laughs> but the family man's name was then changed to Harper and joined a cult that was only three. A younger brother in Rowan, a father in Bray. On the main roster, it was Kane who was slayed. But soon they conquered Rollins, Ambrose, and Reigns. Quoth the Harper, yeah, yeah, yeah. Harper unleashed to a singles run cycle, soon to capture that famed IC title that lost it back to Ziggler in a month in a move that seemed spiteful. How in anyone's mind could this have been fair? Perhaps Vince was just a surly curmudgeon, put him back with his brother to pillage and bludgeon, bludgeon. Wow. but forevermore locked in a mid-card dungeon, and soon he would rarely be seen. And so Harper was lost, but Brody was found. An exalted debut, putting fallen angels in the ground. Throwing papers that hit people, <laughs> hit people right in the crown. Perhaps he'd absorb much of where he'd been. The debut was considered truly momental. But he seemed to hate those who had so much potential. Cut them down and made them seem less than essential. He took on the role that had never believed in him. Soon he rose and sprang into action. Destroyed a nightmarish family perhaps a familiar faction, dominated and won in a brutal and ruthless fashion. It was clear that this shark would not sink but swim. But Brody grew ill and his body grew tired, and we said goodbye to a man who was greatly admired. His reign as TNT champion will never expire. It was such a shock to see this kind man depart. And so say we, as we come to a close, that this man was generous and not just with ring gear and clothes. And so I raise a glass, a toast I propose, Gone from this world, but never our hearts. Goodbye, Brody Lee. So say all of us, Marks. Ah, bloody hell, that was nice. Yeah. Wow. Very nice. Uh, Very nicely done, Pete. Covering a lot of his career. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much everything. No stone unturned there. A very lovely tribute. The poet lariat was a thing from a while ago now. A long time ago. <laughs> well, I said it was one of my favourite puns I never got a chance to use in any context. Then people send in their own poems to become the poet lariat mm. for the Colic Russian podcast. So thank you very much. A lovely send off to Brody Lee. Thank you all. I have to see these bits just to segue because I know the next, I haven't seen the next one. It's going to be something about diddlers. So, you know. <laughs> Topic on bonjour, lads. Okay. Today, I have a sweet and easy question, but before that, let me sidetrack into something completely unrelated to it. Okay. Just kidding. Let's get straight to it. Oh, this is a regular listener. What are wrestling moves that you absolutely hate and think no one has ever made look good? I'm asking because I just saw someone doing a standing shotgun drop kick, and it always looks rubbish to me. What? The running one is okay, but still not great. Another offender is the kick to the midsection, but I feel it's more on the wrestlers rushing it a lot. Looking forward to your answers. Thank you for all your content, especially the podcast, which is the one constant thing in my life that can get a good laugh out of me. Take care. Uh, Divi Avenue from France. Oh, let's try it. No, I'll try, I'll try, I'll try. I'm excited, I'm excited. Thank you. You said Divi. Uh, (laughs) Divi Villanue. I've I've That was actually all right. Go on, go on, Ross. Dylan Thomas. Oh, it's the wrong one. Uh, Divi Villanue. Okay. From France. Easy answer for Thank me to this question. Merci beaucoup. Mm. Merci ahead. beaucoup. Go ahead, Ross. Ball it is quickly. the Alberto Del Rio slash Andrade corner drop down kick. Okay. Where the opponent has yeah. to hold themselves there for ages yeah. and see what's coming, but still not move. Yeah. I've never seen anyone do that well. There is one yeah. example that's now ticking something in my mind, but I can't think who that was. Was it when they were trying to get back up? I think so. Something yeah, like that, something yeah. Like that, yeah. But that is the move I would say. Because Del Rio would do it a few times when he was just angry and would do it with no like build, so it looked relatively. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. nodding and it's back moving the table. Oh. <laughs> we do it uh, relatively quick, so it looked natural-ish, as natural as that move can get. But the worst times we go up, he'd be like, "Hey, baby face, Del Rio," and the guy's just like, "Hit me, daddy." Mm. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I don't like Kenny Omega's. Dragon snap soup. <gasps> oh. Wow, the snap dragon. Yeah, because it looks like it kills people and they have to like kill it and then get back up. And right, right, right. I'm like cl- clutching my pearls going, ooh. That could be a, a like, serious. Yeah, and then yeah. they're like, oh, get up. Mm. Plus, you know what? I look at it and go, I would hate to take that because I think I've taken a bump like that in my life accidentally falling off the couch <laughs> and it wasn't nice. So I see a power bomb and goes, that looks soft. I could take that. That's no problem. But that one, I go, oh. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to steal my answer from Stephen Larson. <gasps> Two wonderful men. 
because we did a live show in Las Vegas, and this was one of the questions on that live show. It was like a panel. Was it straight to hell? Oh. How the hell can you remember that? Because I remember their answer. <laughs> because I remember... What was the name of the event? Because their... Uh, star cast. Well done. I remember this because their answer really made me... You know when you've never realized something, and then you're like, oh, yeah, that is crap. And it was the Rainmaker. Mm. And it was, I was... I think it was... I can't remember which of Steve and Larson it was. One of them said they didn't like the Rainmaker because it was like, I'm going to hold your hand and then do a little spin. And then and then it's just a, a clothesline or a, a poet lariat. And it's not a good one because there's no space for him to run and like properly get into it. Mm. And it, and if you watch your card of matches, it takes like six to ten <laughs> Rainmakers these days to actually beat someone. So unfortunately, even though I think a card is great, I don't like his finisher. Fair People have argued, though, that the tombstone he does before it is the real finisher, and the Rainmaker's just a flourish at the end. It's just people's elbow. Yes, yes. The bollocks. <laughs> Relate, relating to that <coughs> clothesline, the discus clothesline as well would be one. What is spinning? Like DDP, you mean? What is spinning around out to its clothesline? Get the momentum. No, it doesn't. We <laughs> it it's up. even harder to hit the move, if <coughs> anything. Ooh. Nah. Also, um, <laughs> it's physics. I know, I know that some people do it well, but you know the Kojima and Kawada and them and the court and Eddie Kingston. Yeah. 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 Dragon Eyes. <laughs> I would never say anything bad about his chops because <laughs> he has chopped. Oh, has he chopped me before? He will if you say something negative about him. Yeah. No, he's a good. Yeah. Sometimes good the little lad. chops in the corner, some people let themselves down. Like who? Oh, so many. <laughs> um, I learned in Bret Hart's autobiography that he doesn't like any chops in matches. And he doesn't, it was part of his not liking Ric Flair. <laughs> he said, I also chops are crap. Yeah. He says it didn't feel like a real, real fight. Any reason to, to diss Flair? He said loves. he was stuck in the 70s and he wasn't good. Yeah. <laughs> We know why that is, don't we? Because we know that Bret Hart is the real life nature boy. Yeah, not, yeah. Not, not just a gimmick. Yeah. Even though Ric Flair was also the real life nature boy. <laughs> Ross, Ross, he told a story in his autobiography where everyone went out and got really drunk and came back to the hotel and Flair had the penthouse room, but he wasn't there, so they all weed on his bed. <laughs> <laughs> Even Vince. He said Vince also weed on Flair's bed. <laughs> what? I know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. book. Bret's book. I cannot recommend it enough. <laughs> Yeah. It's my Hall of Fame it's... nomination for <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Greetings, lads. I hope you're all doing well. Recently, I had to take a long car ride that lasted about six hours. I decided to pass this time by listening to the first ever Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and AEW tier list videos that Ross wow. posted. Oh. Those videos are three years old now, so it was interesting to hear Ross and the other guys talk about certain wrestlers while knowing how they changed in three years. Oh, God. Some standout examples include Pacitti laughing at the idea of Bobby Lashley entering the best tier, Ooh. and Jack <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> comparing Kip Sabian to Shawn Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's good. It was accurate back then. Good. Yeah, in Saudi Arabia. However, there was... <laughs> no, was I saying that him and E. Eston Reese were like Nash and Miles, maybe? Because they were... Maybe. Yeah, yeah. They were like the dudes with attitude. Yeah, sure. However, there was <laughs> one line that absolutely shocked me. In the NXT tier ranking, when talking about Shane Thorne, Ross said, I thought he can play that sort of unhinged character really, really well. I was stunned that Ross had predicted the Slapjack character oh, an yeah. entire year before he debuted. Right. I believe this is a sign that Ross is an oracle. Obviously. Yeah. You've already said that once as podcast, hasn't I? Who can see into the future because I think it's safe to say nobody could have predicted what retribution turned out to be. So my question for the mailbag is this. What current wrestler do you believe needs to undergo a major character change? Similar to Shane Thorne to Slapjack. An entire change of name, gimmick, moves, etc. help him... <laughs> Thank you all for the amazing content you guys continue to put out. Dylan Thomas from West Tennessee. Thank you, Dylan Thomas from Thank West you, Tennessee. Dylan Thomas. Kip Sabian's the answer to this question. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Funny yeah. enough. Yeah. 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 Getting back to being super bad, that's the first one that comes to yeah, my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And also, obviously, scripts. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's my two. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, that is very true. I'm going to go for Apollo Crews. What? Listen, I think why, why, the why? that's not that's a restrictive gimmick. It's not gonna help him in storylines, is it? They're gonna run out of ideas quickly. No. It's an easy gimmick. Yeah. yeah. Has a sight of the future. Ooh, what could that sight mean? It means one of two things. That mm. means he ends up in this position. At the mm. minute, he hasn't quite realized that they are flawed visions. He still believes them fully. But when he realizes, that's when I think we'll see the true potential of this story of this gimmick. And I'm not optimistic. Hmm. 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 Who are you changing gimmick for, Matthew? Oh, well, you already said Kip. Uh, Die Jack. 
okay. You know, he's just changed himself, but... Just go back to being Croatian. Yeah. That was his thing. Some of that feels... Kevin Owens' speech, which might be the best one of the year, up there with, you know, the UC promo. But, you know, you're just a guy who's playing wrestler. Oh. That's what you see in XT 2.0, some of these stupid gimmicks. Scripts with a stupid mask and die jacks suddenly, yeah, I'm an 80s badass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, you're not. Is he you know how to sell those lo- their lines like on the law? It's, you know, you've seen a guy playing it, so. He's a bit Duke Nukem. He wishes. Okay. <laughs> there you go, die jack Nukem. Dun, 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 Try to dun. make a gaming reference and you've thrown it back in my face. Yeah, I agree, yeah. A dude, 90s one as well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Cheers. it's time for me to die jack and chew gum. I'm all out of gum. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. So, thank you, Jack. You helped me a lot there. Ah, apparently there's another one there. Uh, oh, yeah, there's another one. Uh, da, 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 what is it? Hello, Matthew, Ross, and Jack. I had a YouTube video about Mick Foley's Christmas slash Santa room, which made me think how much fun a magical uh, Christmas would be if you had someone like that as your dad growing up. So which wrestler would you have as your father, <laughs> not your daddy, or as your daddy, who am I to judge? Merry Christmas, Phil from Melbourne, Australia. Is Phil literally... P.S. <laughs> thank God AEW is finding its feet again. Is Phil literally there. just asking which wrestler you, would like to be our dad? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. Um. I'd have someone with a surname Anoy. I was going to say the tribal chief for me. Yeah. Because he's going to be rich, so there's nice mm-hmm. life. But also he's going to make sure you're brought up in the right way. Yeah. Look at Jay Uso, the arc of Jay over the past year and a half. Yeah. So then should we be saying that actually Seeker from the Wild Samoan should be our dad because yep. he is Roman Reigns' dad and look how Roman turned out. Nah, I prefer Roman's purse. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> it's a lot wider than Seeker's would have been. Okay. I'll, go, I'll go for Affa from the Wild no. Um I'll say, are we best choosing wrestlers who are actual dads because they've got experience? Just to, who, Which wrestler do you want to be your father? I you think pick any wrestler. I'll, raise you. I'll go for probably, probably William Regal for the stories. Imagine oh, sitting on under one. his learning tree and just yeah. hearing all the stories. Oh, I want swindled Tony Khan into giving me a year of you know. I reckon you would hit that if that was your own dad. <laughs> would you? Oh, oh shut up, my dad. dad. Here yeah. we go again. Oh, oh Johnny Saint is it this time? Oh. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that's true. That oh, is you true. met Bruce Forsyth once, did you? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, no. Yeah, no, that's true. Oh, in that case then. Yeah, just the stories. <laughs> Bret Hart. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Oh, Brett, what is it this time, eh? A couple of Japanese ladies. Yeah. Oh. Brett, Brett, tell us again about Ric Flair's bed. Oh, oh. okay, no, son. Actually, there is evidence in favour of Brett. Have you seen how he is on Wrestling with Shadows with his kids? He's lovely. Yeah, Brett. There we yeah, go. yeah. We, we met one of the offspring, didn't we? We met, oh, the, one we met the one he's being nice to in the video. Yeah, we Blade. met Blade. Blade was a cool lad. Been brought up well, I'd say. So <laughs> absolutely, like Bret Hart. Yeah, he yeah. was much less miserable than Bret Hart. He was actually a nice lad. No, I'm not. Like, <laughs> well, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just. I know it's the way you said the it. The reputation of Bret is that he's really miserable. Yeah. And Blade was like, just ah, oh, hey guys, oh, I'm Canadian. <laughs> wow, he's like he's in here in the I room. I don't remember the night that. <laughs> wow, what, what a lovely mailbag selection this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to send a mailbag. The address is mailbag at cultaholic.com. Nailed it in one. Thank you, Ross. No problem, Matthew. See you next week, everybody. (laughs) In the mailbag section. There's still more to come. Ah, wrist piss. Mm. Greetings, my diddler friends. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) No, no. I just wanted to tell you, or how much you've become a part of two lives. My daughter and I love watching your channel, and you guys helped us get through those rough months while we're in lockdown. Oh, thank you. My wife passed away when our daughter, Sarah, was only four years old, so it's just been me and her ever since. She's just turned 13 this past July. We had found ourselves parting ways on certain interests, but during lockdown, she began watching wrestling with me and found herself, sorry, herself quickly becoming a fan. She's a huge AEW and WWE fan, especially WWE now that that weird old man is gone. No, <laughs> it's not mine. Oh, bless you. Thank you. She and I now... Oh, bless you again. Bless you again. Regularly watch your daily news videos, and we, quote, do the podcast every Friday when she gets home from school and while we cook dinner. Oh. 
She thinks Jack and Fraser are the cutest ones. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Why did you laugh? <laughs> She's, I wasn't ready for that. She was 13. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Jack, yes. <laughs> and she also loves Matthew's oh, no. hysterical <laughs> laugh. Well, you'll love this one then. God. Oh, no. Oh, God. Can I take back the yes? <laughs> I'm dying. And Ross's Gary YouTube ranking videos. Oh, Thank you. She is also a fan of Andrew's pictures on three I'd just pictures. like to apologise to father and daughter. <laughs> Adam's Hell in the Smell videos and pretty much anything Tom does because Tom is, quote, always so happy. That's, Aww. yeah. <laughs> At any rate, you guys have helped a single dad and his daughter bond over the most unlikely thing, pro wrestling. We owe you a huge thank you. Aww. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry for ruining such a lovely email. <laughs> We are also huge music fans, all genres, uh, which is the basis of our Reese's Pieces idea. So here goes. Let's say you have AEW's Tony Khan money to spend on the rights to any song you could use for a dream promotion you're right. starting, WCPW. We'll give you the rest of your promotion, and you purchase the rights to any existing song you think would be the perfect entrance music for the wrestlers. Ready? No, but I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your list. Fastest thought first. So Jack, Ross, me, Brian Danielson. Uh, do you really like it? Is it is it wicked? Because it starts no, with it, it, it starts it. with Enter the Dragon. So there you go. Oh, okay, that would have been mine. Oh, really? One, huh? I think we'll call him for this when he debuted. Do we? Maybe we did. Yeah. Uh, I'll just go final countdown then, just because history. Mm. Used to be his theme back in the day, didn't it? Um, I want to pick the Bob the Builder theme song because it's a banger. Kids love it. Uh, Thirteen-year-olds love Bob the Builder. Now I assume, twenty twenty-two. <laughs> Is he still on the TV? Is Neil Morris? He's still doing the voice. And uh, the, the, the the chant like Brian Danielson can he win it? Brian Danielson crowd. Yes, he can. Does it fit? <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah. Can he fix fit. it? Yeah. You know what, Daniel Bryan. Yeah, that, that would work. Yeah. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Brian Danielson. <laughs> All right, it's not winning the Poet Laureate, I'll admit that. <laughs> Kevin Owens. Um, probably When by Shania Twain, because it's his favorite Shania Twain song. <laughs> oh, Do you remember really? when he went to see Shania Twain? He's like a massive fan. Oh. And he had a sign that was like, please play When. <laughs> and I listened to it, and it's a lovely song. Aww. When money grows on trees. <gasps> That's Kevin Owens' music. That's him. Carl Gordon, it's yeah. not very hyped. Like, it's not like, but I think you'd like, like it. Like Minoru Suzuki, I guess. Yeah. Wonderwall. Oh, just because. Okay. I can imagine yeah, Kevin having a great time walking down to the ring to Wonderwall. It's a nice one. Looks like he would like Wonderwall. Yeah. You know what Wonderwall's about? What is Wonderwall about? About a, a, a wall in a flat on a film from the 60s that a man would use to peep through to look at the naked lady next door. That's what Wonderwall's about? Correct, sir. It's oh, about no. a peeping Tom in a film from the 60s who would have the Wonderwall, which had a peephole in to look next door at a naked lady. Okay. And oh. after <laughs> no, the... That's not why I'm giving it to Kevin, wait, wait. by the way. Peeping I mean... <laughs> Tom, the film Peeping Tom. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I know the one you mean now. God. Is that what the film's called? Yeah, Peeping oh, Tom. Fair yeah. enough, yeah. Yeah, it was the, whatever. Anyway, let's move on to something else. <laughs> uh, what the, would you pick? 30 year old. I love those 60s films. Um, <laughs> Kevin Owens, the theme from Bear in the Big Blue House. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're just choosing children's I things. might have to change that. <laughs> you know, Bear in the Big Blue House is more like four year olds, not like. 13 year old. So is wrestling. Yeah, it's very true. <laughs> no, that is true. We are adults who talk about wrestling. Kevin Owens is a big bear. Okay. Uh, Sasha Banks. Um, oh, man. I'd have Like a Boss by the Lonely oh, Island. Like a boss. Yeah. Talk Luke. to the corporate. Like a boss. Yeah. Leave the show. Like a boss. Yeah. yeah. Good, that. <laughs> this would be one of the 13 year old. The thir I don't know what to, this is The 13 year old there. My money don't jiggle jiggle. That one. Louis Theroux. Yeah. It folds. Yeah. Her money folds. Well, I doubt it does. I bet it's on a little plastic card. Well, Sasha's. Uh, yeah. Mercedes's. She sorry. doesn't carry change, no. does she? I mean, I don't carry change. I just carry note and card. Lockdown really Ooh. did. Uh, that's the <laughs> last time I ever really did like monetary transactions with like. I always use card now for everything. Yeah. It's change. It's, it's a shock because there's obviously people come up to you asking for spare change. You go, I haven't got any. And like, no, I haven't. I literally yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Too scared to set up will pay though, me. Too scared. Oh, really? Yeah. Because it just people start just don't trust it. Mm. Don't trust it. Yeah. Oh, you can say like when I lost my card, you can ring them up and go, "I've lost my card." And they went through the transactions. Goes, which one was was this? 
oh yeah, someone's used it to buy. <laughs> this actually happened as well. Someone's <laughs> used it to buy this this weird show on Pivot Share, and so now it's a wrestler one. That's me. Yeah, that, that one's. Everything else after that, you can get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> but the guy, the guy even went, ah, I see. They took your details and bought weird looking stuff. Because no, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, CCW used to be good, all right? <laughs> Cancel me card and yeah. shut up. He was more of a sports entertainment fan. You can tell. <laughs> Pivot share, which, which, yeah, some horrible thief from 2009 is still on your card, sir. I'm like, all right. Anyway, um, touch your bones. Uh, the Angels song. Uh, will I ever see your face again? Because <laughs> we, no way, don't know. Hey, what, ask Melt. Watch Bomb again? Mm. Oh. On After Raw. After Raw on a Monday. Right? Yep. She was on that. One week with Nikki Bella and two other fellas mm. playing bar <laughs> games. Nikki Bella and two other fellas. <laughs> the comedy triplet. Uh, the Street Profits. Ooh. Um, oh, man. I don't know. Um, flying Without Wings, because Montez Ford's got a really good frog spot. Ooh, ah, that's rubbish, that, though. Lolly, Viva La Radio. Oh. Ask your devices to play this song. One of my favorite songs of all time. Just the way they dance to the to the ring, it would fit that vibe very well. Do you actually like Lolly? Yeah. Oh, good. Just that one song, though. Don't like a Hey Mickey cover. <laughs> she covered Hey Mickey? Yeah, of course you did. Good. What, yeah. you also find your blow my mind? Aye. Oof. She does, it didn't slap kids. <laughs> you, should, you shouldn't slap kids, in fairness. <laughs> uh, it's Tricky by Run DMC. What a tune. Mm. Just, I like it. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Becky Lynch. Mm, oh, I'm just... You've got to not choose an Irish song, haven't you? Oh, I'm going straight. Oh, oh right, okay. Yeah. Um, then I'll go for Whiskey in the Jar. I'll go for that. Which one? Uh, which one? The Dubliners. The original, oh, original... Okay. Uh, you know what I'm not a fan of is the... I just like it as a little folk song. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Metallica's is the best version. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, but I'll go for that uh, Shipping Up the Boston... Oh, yes, what a shout. Damn it, that was my Drop pick as Murphy's. well. Yeah, I, that's, that's a, a, that's a great song. You ever seen them perform that live? It's quite no. awkward just because of all the musical bits. That makes just no sense. They just stood there. Yeah. But the, uh, the band playing music. Ah, 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 <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a bit better. If she than comes that, out the crowd and she's like, hey, it's Becky, which guy's going? I lost my leg. <laughs> Apparently, that's used really well in The Departed, which is a film that I want to see. So I will. That might be the film I watch next year. One of you. The one yeah. film. This year it was lost in translation. A lot of people asking, what's your favorite year. films of the year? And Jack's like, well, I've got my one, my film of the I year. I watched. Ooh, what you ever seen? No, this is the film. <laughs> yeah. Was Jackass this year? Yeah. That, that, that's my film oh. of the year. <laughs> Probably the loudest I've made a noise this year, reaction-wise, to anything is when the bear shows up. <laughs> Probably the start of the it bear. It is scary, was, like. Mine was... strapped to a chair. It mine... was the, the bear bit was, I was almost off. The, in the cinema, me and, oh. me, me and me Bobby were watching it, and I was almost off in the chair because I'm like just going nuts. Bobby Fish, <laughs> you and Bobby Fish, yeah, yeah, he uses the way Pete passes. Bobby's was Bobby. so good. <laughs> I did that back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> me and Terrible Ted did that spot. <laughs> that kick was rubbish. <laughs> uh, where we at? Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, you're as cold as ice because no, we went. We no, hang on. Your mate By used foreigner. that as an entrance music. Yeah, Iceman. Yeah, Iceman. Oh, God, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> he was his dad's gardener or something. That's right. He did his dad's gardener. Oh, from that death. The death match tournament, yeah. yeah. Right. I'll go for that one, yeah. Bulls on Parade. Whoa. Because I know that was the oh. that was the inspiration for his actual theme. Oh. Yeah. But I, sense, you know? I can only oh. vaguely hear it. So. The intro. Oh. Apparently he went to Jim Johnson. I really like okay. Bulls on Parade. Make, <laughs> make a theme for me. Imagine wow. Austin loves Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. I thought he'd like Willie Nelson. He was. What was he listening to last night? It was on his Instagram story. I can't remember what it was now. I was shocked as well. Mm. Was it Lolly? It was Rocky. Uh. Like genre-wise. Mm. Oh, right. Not Balboa. Thank you. <laughs> it's a shame that's where my, my brain went to. Uh, I can't think of anything better I know. than Stone Cold Steve Austin's theme that he already uses, so I picked Powerman 5000 <laughs> when Wells for life. Ross, what are you looking at? Tay Mello needs to calm down on the gram. <laughs> Oh, Ross is Instagram. <laughs> it wasn't totally not safe for work, but it was. But he has shut his laptop down. Save yeah. that for later. <laughs> oh, that's a weird thing to set up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, God. Banker Bella. Get away! <laughs> I'm trying to search for Austin. He can't. Every time he opens up, it opens Stone up again. Cold Steve. It's taken so long to load. <laughs> He's not even called Steve. What's he called it's on Instagram? Steve Austin. Steve Austin probably. <laughs> 
Steve Austin from the grass. If you're wondering, it's shot somehow. <laughs> it's so like... Sammy Guevara has got the camera lens right next to her lady garden. It's, it's crotch upwards is the shot. <laughs> That's the sound of a million listeners typing in. <laughs> Black Label Society. Funeral oh, okay. Bell is what Stone Cold was listening to. Oh, okay. Nice one, Steve. When he's working out, I guess he wants something a bit. Yeah, yeah. Black Label's When he's training one. for WrestleMania. Yeah. Banker Belair. See vein in his bicep, by the way. <laughs> He did, he did a video or whatever where the, the veins... He speaks about were... Stone Cold now, by the way. <laughs> the veins were popping. I was like, he's he's wrestling. Anyway. Thank you. Too what current. was the question? Banger Belair. Um, the Karate Kid soundtrack. You're the best around. Oh, that's good. You're the est. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. good the fresh princess of Belair nice. theme will redub it as. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That's how I became oh, pretty... Right. Uh, um, do the ABC by Jackson 5. Okay. E-S-T. Oh! Gonna pin you one, two, three. Very good. Uh, ricochet. Um, ricochet. Oh, it's hard to think, isn't it? Usually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, can anyone come on and go first? I can't. Uh, I just figured he needs a, a song to get the crowd into him and big sing-along and he'd be more beloved. So I picked A Little Respect by Erasure. Nice. Good Not song. the weakest cover, the better version. Fox. <laughs> That's one of my mum's favourite songs, that. I tried to discover Ricochet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll go for the theme tune of Cartoon Network series Mucha Lucha because the main character was called Ricochet. Oh. Before he was the original Ricochet. Mm. Yes. In a much similar vibe to yours, just to get people pumped, uh, Road of Resistance by Baby Metal. Okay. Oh. Big song. Right. I can Imagine work Ricochet from, yeah. on the road first going, Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Who you, was it who said they'd seen Baby Metal live the other day? Oh, I can't remember. Was now. someone in here, wasn't it? Was it Andrew? Probably. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> Kenny Omega. Um, Big in Japan. Bye. Alphaville. Oh, when Richard you're big Tuckman. in Japan, to know you're big in Japan. Because yeah. he wishes he was back there, doesn't he? Cycling with Richard. Yeah. Him and Kenny. Yeah. Imagine that. Him going, you have to watch, you have to if you turn right, you have to turn left first. He's like, thanks, we should. Yeah. <laughs> turn <laughs> in <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> no, but no, I think no, no. God. <laughs> or any Mario theme from the, the games. <laughs> from the, the what, games. <laughs> what's that thing he had for actual entrance with the, Oh, he did the Undertale. Yeah, the like, Imperial the Mint one. head piece. Yeah, he, he came down to <laughs> the sands. Right? In saying that, that happened um, from a nerd perspective, and right. it was great seeing people go, "What the hell is this?" Uh, I picked "White and Nerdy" by Weird Al Yankovic, <laughs> Penta, and Ray Phoenix. Um, Ray Phoenix's shop window looking nice this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, a bit controversial, isn't it? People don't really understand what it is. All I've heard it's quite it. a modern. Art. I haven't even looked at it because I hear the noise and go, "That's enough for me." Yeah, it's like it's like I think the the books came out in like '99 or something. What book is it? I, I can't remember. Oh. I recognise the artwork, um, but all the mums are going, e, "I don't get it." Oh, because obviously they're a bit older than you know being a kid in '99, I guess. No, yeah, yeah. I'll uh, Ray and Fiend, um I know it's hard. To, um... <sighs> oh, I picked a Vegas theme from Street Fighter Two. How does that go? Vegas uh, thing. Uh, oh, the only one I can remember is Gattles. Is that the song from Pulp Fiction? It's not. It sounds like it. You that's what that I one. go for. Yeah. <laughs> the one that's said at the Black Eyed Peas. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Pulp Fiction. Louder. Yeah. I'll choose. Yeah, well, I'll pick the Black Eyed Peas. Pulp Fiction louder. I'll choose. Because then they could come out like that, and then Pack would go, Pulp it. <laughs> Hammer, louder! <laughs> <laughs> I'll choose my humps by the Black Eyed Peas. It's funny if they came out. There we go. Change it to my hammer. Yeah. yeah. My hammer. My hammer. My hammer. <laughs> I can't do that. I drive these doylums crazy. <laughs> That's not even in the question, by the way. Claudio, <laughs> Claudio Castagnoli. Uh, Superman from the Tony. Is it Melancholy? We were singing it before. It's Me and you were it? singing it before. No, I'm a yeah, Goldfinger, man. isn't it? Goldfinger, yeah. yeah. Am I thinking of a different Tony Melon Hawk song? Melon Colin. What was that band? Melon Colin. Melon Colin. Melon Colin. Um, I forget I their meant, one song. I meant Superman by Goldfinger, yeah. I did. Yes. 
Who right. also do a good cover of 99 Red Balloon? Certainly do. Mm-hmm. I'll go for Hero, the soundtrack to Spider-Man by Hero Chad. Chad Kroger featuring the Saliva Man. That's saliva. <laughs> What's he called? Saliva Dave, Man. Dave Saliva. I have no idea. <laughs> the one who sings My Sacrifice. No, it's Creed. Oh, yeah, damn it. Uh, oh, I'm thinking of Scott WWE's Scott other favourite band. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. What a, imagine Claudio walking out of that song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yay! <laughs> uh, Claudio is Swiss, so I picked yellows. Oh, yeah. Cha cha. Because they're Swiss. Are they? Are they yeah. actually? I thought you just meant because he was a scrummy man. Cha If he brought back the suit with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the camera starts like Sammy Guevara, apparently, from the bottom up and looks there. Is it cha cha? Did you see the picture? I couldn't not see it. Chris, I turned my head 180 degrees. It was still there, me vision. Bloody hell. Final one Dr. Britt Baker. Um, okay, I can do this. Um, oh, I believe My can. Baker by Boney M. Uh, ma, 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 ma. Ma Baker. She pulled out me teeth. Ma, 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 ma. <laughs> ma Good. Baker. Mine, that this is because I've gone baking. I've not even gone the dentist route. I've gone for, do you remember the song Baby Cakes in the, in the mid-2000s? Oh, Baby, Baby Cakes. Cakes. You just don't, don't know, know. No. Only wow. English people of a certain age or British people of a certain age will get that. was that. a bad song. H2O! Oh, that was a good one, though. <laughs> the Baby Cakes one kept the Libertines can't stop me now from reaching number one. Oh, you know what? Like, there you go. So I'm happy with them for that. Are you? Do you know no, Libertines? Not really. E, me and Pacini do. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, what have you two got in common, eh? Yeah, I know. Hating poor people. Uh, <laughs> I knew you, your opinion had changed with me last week. I know. I knew it. I, I was just looking for the evidence to present itself, like a Sherlock Holmes case. No, I, I, I was on Libertines, a bursary. Libertines, yeah. I was on a bursary. Tory like pretending they're no, not a Tory. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm on a bursary hour. I was, the judge. I was. The judge of life. This is so, Rip Baker, DMD. I picked uh, Supergrass. We are young, mm. we are free, we've got teeth. Nice and clean. Be your friends. Be your... Richard Thank Hillman. You, Ross mentions yeah. it often. That that song's playing when Richard Hillman drove the family. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That could be <laughs> Britt Baker driving, <laughs> Jamie in the front seat, mm. Rebel in the back. <laughs> yeah. I love you. And because you three would be the announcers... Tony Schiavone's David Platt. Oh, it... <laughs> You deserve your own entrance music as well. Oh, no. So feel free to buy yourselves your own entrance music too. Ooh. Um, wow. Thanks again for being a part of our lives. Who was it from? Uh, you'll never know how much you've helped us get through the insanity of the last few years. Sincerely, Captain Tony and First Mate Sarah. Well, thank you very Atlanta, much. Aye, aye. Aye, 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 Captain. Thank you very much. That was a very heartwarming one. Do you have any idea what your, well, my your own theme music would be? be. Um, oh, I've forgotten what it's called. Yours, I thought you had one. I would I would always go for The Boss by James Brown, yeah. but it, it changed to the, the theme tune to Alan Robinson's Night Owls. <laughs> What's it called? It's called Little... <clears throat> oh, me and Jack, I can always... Daryl Way, Little Plum. That's what that might be. Little Plum by Daryl Way. When I... This is true as well, but it never panned out happening. But um, when I did my little stint in North Wrestling... Oh, yes. Um, there was a song. The fir- It's like a grime... like. It's like a UK grimy hip hop y song. And the first line, I was going to be a bad guy, so I wanted a song that made me seem really arrogant. And that. And the first line is, I'm famous, catch me all over the YouTube. And I thought people would hate ah. that. So I'll go over that one. It's by Cozzy MC, I think. It's good. Yeah, it's called Famous. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Mm. But it never, I never got an entrance in the end. Yeah. So. Oh. oh. <laughs> Damn it. I just had to do a, a run in like a peasant. <sighs> I miss Liam Slater's. Well, I wrestle for WCPW, so it's better than these, big, these, these <laughs> small independent <laughs> promotions. You know why they're be- better than you guys? So they've got guardrails. He, he brought his own guardrails to show out. how much better they were. It out, was such a good run. He came out in a King Ross t-shirt once, and he yeah. came out dressed as me once. It was I didn't know he was going to do it. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. He died. I was in the crowd. Like, That's the funniest thing ever. I suggested to him, and he never did it, because I'm, I'm sure wrestlers like, you're giving me tips. Yeah, <laughs> stick, stick to your laptop. <laughs> try, but then, try not watching your moves. Yeah, yeah. I said, you should go put him in the corner and then do the 10 punches but do a list 10 reasons when I beat you one that punch two that punch three didn't do it he's like shut up you idiot Fair that's enough. a good idea that yeah um, my music would probably just be probably the theme song from Ulysses oh you th- uh, 
Ulysses, Ulysses. Why am I even trying to sing it for you guys? You must have had an entrance before, though. It's like a pre-show or something, like dub X dubby stuff you do. You no, no, no. We, we went in from the crowd. Uh, after. Oh. With the 20 minutes we had to prepare the match, and like, by the way, you guys are doing some at the ring. I'm like, are we? <laughs> this is the notice we get. And he goes, oh, you know, you. You and your opponent, Strigger. I hope you're doing well, pal. Um, you and Strigger, you know, all you need to do is just give it, give it a good five, ten minutes. We're like, what the Whoa. hell are you talking about? <laughs> Professional entertainer, you can do that. Five, ten minutes off the bat. Five, ten minutes Why or twenty I? minutes notice. Of course you can. <laughs> I can't take a poo in twenty minutes. Never mind, get ready for a bloody wrestling match. My first ever wrestling match. I can't even take a poo in twenty minutes. Well, thank you for that heartwarming father and daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've long since... Clicked unsub on YouTube, but we appreciate Tony and Zarek, you two, bonding over the unlikeliest of things, which is, of course, professional wrestling. I think that brings us all case, together from... Is it, uh, is it S-A-R-A? Sarah? Yes. Could be Sarah, then, just to make sure we've covered oh, all the pronunciation oh, bases. Yeah. Sorry, first a, mate Sarah or Sarah. There was a Sarah. girl at my uni who I always thought was Sarah, and it was yeah. Sarah, and I just, I'm now hyper aware oh, I of... I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for letting me know that, pal. It could be either, and Tony. Well, I'm going to call them both boss, just to yeah, make sure. boss. Yeah. Out of respect. And if you have any uh, other Reese's Pieces, send our way. Don't worry. You can send it right to mailbagacolite.com. Make sure you stop it. Make sure you put Reese's Pieces in the header. Makes our life a lot easier. Yes. It's Cultaholics. The Question Ah. <sighs> oh, yeah. Mm. What a lovely fruitcake-filled, lovely girthy podcast we've had today. And there's still time just a little bit more, uh, but not without saying, checking the naughty and nice list. Oh, here's some lovely, lovely nice people. <laughs> well done for making a Christmas theme there. I'm trying my best. Yeah, Patreon producers, Chris Routh. Routh. Okay, right. Routh. Get in. Love Reno 2200. 2200. Two, 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 two. And Noah Anderson. Uh, Anderson. Anderson. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you very <clears> much, <throat> you scrummy little helpers. And <laughs> the big question, of course, E, As we're coming near the end of the year, it's not like there's going to be any better ones to come on that's already been. What was the best promo of 2022? Okay, so we're doing this off, kind of off the top of our heads, but... Yeah, luckily we watch wrestling for a living, so we've got some good ones yeah. right here, the front. Aside from... First? Now, the first thing that genuinely came to my head was the All Out press conference. That's what I was going to say as well. Because well. what it a promo. Amazing. OSW Review said it. They spent ages like kind of dissecting it and going, oh, he's a dick for this. And then they went, what a promo, though. Right. <laughs> so good. Um, in a serious one, I might go for MJF's one where in the feud with Punk, where he convinced us all for one week that he was actually the good guy. Because oh. that was different. I know people, not everyone was fooled, and we all thought, oh, maybe this is just going to... So it didn't have the full shock value when he turned heel again. But it was ambitious and a different move in a feud, and I liked it a lot. And he carried off really well because everyone was booing him at the start of the promo. And then midway through, they all start, like, booing Punk or cheering MJF. I thought it was really well. I thought we often laugh at him for, like, the low-hanging fruit and everything. But when he when he wants to, he's really, really good. So, yeah, that one. Yeah, it's my first one to go to, so I'll go for Was the it? obvious one. Oh. No, sorry, I meant CM Punk. Sorry, I got Oh, this. right, yeah. I, think yeah. I zoned out for a second there. I'm rather hungry. Yes, the <laughs> MGF one was good. Uh, that one was good, but my picks would be the Usi Bomb. Yes. As they're calling it on the streets, or so I hear. Uh, just to really, really properly establish. Uh, yeah, Sami Zayn's really over now. Uh, everyone laughing their asses off. And then Roman joining in. Everyone playing their roles perfectly. Especially Jay, who's not supposed to be laughing, but he is. Just just making it all the more memorable. And now... Where Roman looks up. Yeah. And Jay goes, I don't give a damn. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, the camera work on that the one. zoom in. On dun, his face. dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, just for me, well done. The in, oh, I mean, this, just put the entire bloody thing that they've been doing with Sami Zayn in for the past few months. But this this was the, the cherry on top. Mm. And bubbling under... Even if the um, even if the landing wasn't quite what everyone wanted because of everything that's happened, William Regal and MJF going at it with MJF being like, "Yeah, well, I emailed you and you told me I wasn't ready to go along. Yeah, so you now, aha, I have my revenge on you. I'm gonna do things you can't even imagine." And Regal's like, <laughs> "Oh, you think you can worry me, pal? I'm glad I emailed you because you're not ready for this world of her." Yeah. Sunny Jim. That would be my line of the year. Just to, when he attacked Regal and then. 
signed off the attack with the line that Regal put sent to him on the uh, email. Okay. Mm. This is a singular line really? of the year. Okay. But just like Regal turn around, turn his back to him, goes, go on then if you think you're hard enough. You know, <laughs> all right, then you're sc- <laughs> scaring oh, the me. One. I've yeah. wrestled yeah. Les Kellett, you know, <laughs> and all this stuff. Then Jeff's like, for Scythe? Yeah, that's right, one time. <laughs> I've got lizards who allowed you in my podcast. <laughs> the lizard thing that he tweets, when he tweets about his lizards, it really melts my heart. He Aww. loves those lizards. He does. He goes, this one sent my heart all a flutter. It's a lizard <laughs> called Barry or something. Called Excalibur. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. those are good ones. Um, what else? Ricky uh, Starks last night deserves really a mention. One. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, my God, I've gone blank. I like uh, Kevin, Kevin Owens. Oh, Kevin oh, Owens. Austin Theory. Oh, theory. Yes. yes. Thank you. I forgot about oh, that. I thought that's, you meant JD Don't Google me. <laughs> Which was also a good one. No, that, yeah, because that was the same same interview segment as when uh, Ilya Dragunov said, Braun, where I'm standing over your prawn body. <laughs> <laughs> Two likes from me. But yeah, the Austin Theory one was so good, so unnecessarily good that it tore apart Austin Theory at the seams, at his very DNA. And I think the crowd all went, God, he's right, you know. Ooh. Everything Kevin Owens said about him. Uh, and then especially they went punch for punch and Kevin looked like he's been throwing punches all his life because he has and done mm. all the Canadian violence and Austin Theory looked like it was his first time ever throwing them. So I thought that, that I've didn't... got the winner. I verified it was this year, 10 months ago. There he is, stepping out of his red Corvette. One continuous shot. 2022, My 10 word. months ago. Oh, he yeah, meets January. Chase you in the car park. It's one continuous shot. He's just running his mouth about Grayson Waller. 18th of January, 2022, LA Knight is all healed up and wants a piece of Grayson Waller. This is where I believed well and truly The Rock was back. Yeah. <laughs> God. Look at him go. Uh, he looks a bit confused at the moment, but there's JB and BJ. That's why. He that's looks, the promo of the year. He looks like a pissed up dad who's just found out his son's out of tension. He has to stop what he's doing to come get him. <laughs> uh, also, Miro. I know he's not done a hell of a lot, mm. but anytime he showed up on screen to do those promos and the little one light there. And my like, God. My God gave me sand for a neck. Yeah. I'm here to kill you, God. Another backstage promo. <laughs> do you remember the, St- the very early BCC? The oh. one that everyone raved about. Oh, the Regal one, right? Yeah. The yeah. Nice one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I would, they would scar their opponent to permanently disfigure them. That was nasty, that one. God, that was good. Yeah. It's been a good year. There's going to be lots more. The Cody one, when he first turned back up in WWE, about his dad. The Cody oh, one, oh, the one like, I, I asked my dad, Dad, you got a photo there of you with the WF title. I don't know you're WF champion. He goes, ah, sorry, sorry, not worth it. Yeah. I'm like, and I, part of me thought, well, why have you put that bloody photo there to confuse your kid if all the, all the belts <laughs> you have held? They yeah. explained it because he wants to come back and do that. You go, great, justification, yeah. reason for doing it. The Pray Cody one that. where the ladder's in the ring. <laughs> Well, he just he, he oh, basically no, goes, "There's no. trouble backstage here. I'm no. off. I'm <laughs> off." And everyone went, "No, he's what not." The, what and the... then he was. There's one where he starts like it, oh. it's a cringe start. Where he's like, "People have told me to save this one, but I've got to get it out there." Mm. <laughs> I hate that one. Just because it foreshadows not... everything, didn't it? No, it was rubbish. It was <laughs> just <laughs> rambling and talking. Was that this year? Yeah, it was. Yeah, because oh, wow. he had the ladder match and then oh, he sold yeah. off in like January, February. Yeah. Mm. Well, wow. and then everything was great without him. Please, Cody, come back. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Vince McMahon's promos when he came no, back to no, SmackDown no, and said, no. coming up tonight. No, no. Not those ones. <laughs> I'm joking. Everybody. I enjoyed, you know what, actually? I, I really enjoyed uh, Owens' one to Austin when he said, I've fooled you, Steve. I've brought you here, not for the Kevin Owens show, but to wrestle me now. That was really good, that one. In the main event of WrestleMania. They were all right, because it was just like, hey, Texas is stupid, you all wear cowboy Not that hats. Bit. Bang, bang, the bang. Bit where, <laughs> the bit where that all fell away, and he went, no, no, mm. the real, real I fool, he said, I fooled you, I Steve. I was like, oh! I don't quite remember that one, but I'll take it your word ju- for it. It was just before the match, in the ring, in, at WrestleMania. Oh, at WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. It was sorry, just a sorry, KO sorry. show at the Steve, start. Steve, I've, right. I've fooled okay. you. This isn't really the Kevin Owens show. Okay. Because no one still quite knew whether Austin was good, even though, like, yeah. yeah. Um, anything involving Roman Reigns, just sat down talking to Heyman. <laughs> yeah. Why is man come here? Yeah. The one where he first became pals with Sammy when <laughs> it was just those two in Canada because the Usos couldn't cross the border. Yeah. And Sammy's wrong. there backstage and everyone thought, these two work all right together. Yeah. Mm. Was, was, um, Cum, was Cum this year? Cum's promo. No, that was like the start of the year. I thought, yeah, it was just in the back of my mind. I was just checking. His dancing shoes one was good. I got my... <laughs> hey, Brad. I got my dancing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Odyssey Jones striding over. <laughs> Stop uh, it. <laughs> There's got to be a Moxley one in there somewhere. Oh, yeah, that's another good shout. The one where he tore Punk apart. Yeah. There was one where I remember yeah. thinking, like, he's the biggest baby face in the world ever. Like, it was fairly recently. 
he's done such a good job any time he's gone out that it's hard to pick just one. Not the punk one where he foreshadowed what would happen. This is Chicago mm. where the week are eaten in the oh, street. Oh, the same <laughs> punk one him and Ace Steel. Hilariously. Yeah, okay. They did six good. weeks of build in one promo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that all fell apart. But Moxie, if you just heard Moxie's promo, you thought it was the biggest match to ever happen. Mm. Like every single week. Yeah, he's good at that. It was him versus Lee Moriarty. He's like, this is it. <laughs> As you say, I'm going to start talking in the first gear and then go up the second gear. Yeah. And up the third. I'm never going to unhear that now. Yeah, You've he does ruined do that. him forever. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Hangman, workers' rights. <laughs> <laughs> How dare he? Hangman, with that one off comment that I still don't really understand why CM Punk <laughs> didn't like it, that caused everything also. There's got to be an Eddie Kingston one. God, I wouldn't get that far thing. not yeah. thinking about an Eddie Kingston. Like, a specific, yeah. that's, again, he's like the Moxie camp of he's so good every week. His Yo. last, they're all good whenever he's on the mic, but the last really, really good Eddie Kingston one was last year, wasn't it, in the Punk feud where he said, no one likes you. You're actually not a nice person. Did this all get one in the build-up to Anarchy in the arena against the when JS? When he wanted to burn Jericho, maybe. Did they, yeah. all just, did they all get one building up to that? Because I feel Danielson, Moxley, K Kingston, with Regal. Oh, that must have just been a, a great time, but I can't remember any that of them just made me think of the best promo package in AW history, which was when the Inner Circle mocked Cody and Brandy's vlogs. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah. <laughs> Sammy and he, Jericho gives him a little kiss. <laughs> I'll tell you what mentioned of Jericho made me think of Dalton Castle. Oh. When Dalton Castle out Jericho mm. Jericho, when he was called like the That's peacock right. power, the power of the peacock's going to take yeah. him down and take the Ring of Honor title. Mm. Maybe the best promo ever, yeah. ever, ever to happen in wrestling. And an honorable mention to uh, just Dom the week after Rhea Ripley going, hey, boo! And that's like, this fantastic. is my Dom now, he said, yeah. gesturing at Rhea. <laughs> On that bombshell. <laughs> I'm sure you'll let us know any we've missed because what a cracking year it's been in mm. promos. Well, even the Colts is coming up. Even the Gun Club look good yeah. in their talking. So bloody hell, it's anyone's game. And yes, for more amazing awards of that we can't even wait for. Well, you'll have to. Sorry, that's how time works. Yeah. The Culties is coming, coming up out very over, soon. Over the festive period. The annual Culties to annoy people and mm. sense them. Yeah. Can Seamus do the double? Nah. Still hurts. Still hurts. <laughs> This is the year when he's had banger after banger. Exactly. He's prophesized it somehow. He prophesized it by watching his matches and going, he's got him. <laughs> anyway, it's been ourselves before we leave us that you know what Jack's got on tap for the next week. Every Wednesday, twitch.tv forward slash coldaholic from 6 p.m. after Ross's streams. Ooh. Me and Owen do Football Manager. Um, I've got a weirdest episode in the can. Wait, does in the can mean edited or shot? Shot. It's a can. It's being worked on. It'll be out. Just after Christmas, I think, but mm. I'm not sure. Um, and um, maybe another voiceover as well. There's, there's loads. Of, it's Christmas. There's loads of stuff going on. Yeah. What <laughs> do you got, pal? I, I start twitching at three o'clock on a Wednesday. Just a horrible memories that time of day. Joke didn't land, did it? I start twitching at oh, three o'clock. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. It's the end of the podcast. <laughs> I've done a, a video combining my fantasy. Well, basically, what's happened is Keanu Reeves. You know Keanu Reeves? I do know Keanu Reeves. He's uh, come at me with a blank check and said, Ross, I want to start a one hour weekly wrestling show on television. I want you to go and take this blank check and buy out the contracts of many wrestlers from the two main rosters of WWE and the main roster of AEW. Just not the dark and dark elevation. And he says, Ross, the spots to fill on this roster. Can you just put me together the fantasy combined roster for this new weekly television show that he's going to start. So I've put that together in a video and documented that process for you. And that'll be coming out fairly soon indeed. I've done a video about Kane's unmaskings in WWE. Mm. And that'll be coming out. Nothing to do with a real life guy. This is the devil's favorite demon I'm mm. talking about in this mm. video. Mm. <laughs> um, and I just twitch on a Wednesday and there's other stuff that I'm working on that will be out in the not too distant future. Wonderful. There's a rise and fall went live last weekend as well about FM dub. Mm. FM dub. FM dub. Do you prefer it to all Japan? Now I'm all Japan. Oh, you're more of an all Japan guy. There's too much seenness uh, in that FMW for me. Mm. That's that's why you watch. It's like, <laughs> the seenness keeps us going. <laughs> Brett that would be would, great. Brett Hart would fit in well there. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Cool. Hollywood would have been amazing during the time like we're doing FMW. The podcast <laughs> of 96. Whoa. <laughs> you never bless what Anita's up to again. You never guess who died this week. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> yeah I was going to plug that because we watch oh, it on the stream you. and we, we had a good time watching it um, 
Well, you watched watch it on the stream. Yeah, we had a good time watching <laughs> it. I'm glad I didn't see that. And going, uh, why? Well, did that pronunciation better than me? Did that pronunciation better than me? <laughs> sure. Is Bruno in this video? Because if not, I think Ross is winning with yeah. this. That took one hour and 28 minutes of my life to record that that video did. Really? Just because of the pronunciation. Yeah. Well, my mouth doesn't work on the best of days, so getting through that was a... Oh, stop it, you. Oof. No, it's Have true. you just had to spend the last few hours talking wonderfully to the people I've at home? I've for three hours. No one's understood a word I said. <laughs> What are you doing, Matthew? I'm just chilling. <laughs> no, I'm a cultaholic Smackdown classic review. Me and Tom talking almost swore. Uh, silly things. Mm. The Jimmy almost swore. That would have been a horrible end to a lovely podcast. <laughs> um, Daniel Botchmania was up. It's down now. Be back up oh. by the time I come home. It's all right. It happens. To be expected. That's but I'm really happy with the video. That, yeah. I'm really happy. The rest of the video is like, whatever. But really happy by putting the Northern Boys over Vince McMahon. Isn't that the first one for a while, though? It feels like you haven't yeah. seen it for a while. Yeah, yeah, and it wasn't a video that it was an ending someone sent to me that I didn't properly check, so it's my own fault. But oh. it's that six second rule. Break that, and that's it. So it was like, oh, so I have mastered it. Well, obviously I haven't, but mastered it for bothered. Yeah. Anyway, I'm I'm rambling incoherently. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Hope you have a lovely, lovely week until next week. Obviously, patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. Yes. Become executive producer there there and vote in the prestigious Hall of Fame Cocaine Bear for the win and also if you have any thoughts queries Reese's Pieces send them to mailbag at cultaholic.com now we're going to point at the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast the new one and we're going to say thank you Stephen Skodas for your lovely gift okay on the count of three one two three thank, thank you Stephen Skodas for your lovely gifts